Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Ringo TV Reactions. I'm your host, Ringo. I am simultaneously streaming this particular broadcast on two of my channels. <clears throat> Ringo TV Raw, Ringo TV Reactions. We have some important news, some important information that we have to talk about. Very, very serious topic. Um, it's with heavy hearts that I got to do this particular video. Um, seems to be some issues going on. And I have to address this because I would be a hypocrite if I didn't. As a man of truth over the years, I've talked about pretty much every pastor known to man. When I see issues, I address it because I'm a watchman. I'm a watchman in these spaces and I see things. I'm hearing things, I'm seeing things, and I don't like what I'm seeing. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Um, it's embarrassing. I cannot sit back and watch this. There's an issue going on between Pastor Dow and Pastor Rufus. And I don't like what I'm seeing. And I'm here to deal with this case head on. And I have no respect of persons. When I deal with topics, I deal with them based on truth. Do you understand? No emotions. No, uh, you know, I got to make sure everybody like me. No. I got to deal with this. And the reason why I got to deal with this is because I tell all my viewers all the time, I speak very highly of Pastor Dow. Never said anything negative about this man. I always tell brothers and sisters, hey, go over there, support. You know, he has the blueprint. So it's with, it's with heavy hearts, <clears throat> heavy hearts that I got to do this live stream. My hope is that Pastor Dow and Pastor Rufus can somehow <clears throat> come to the round table and reconcile because the body has been divided. The people have been divided. The congregations has been divided. A lot of people are talking. People taking sides. This is bad. This is really, really bad. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. I'm, in, I'm disappointed with some things I've seen Pastor Dial do, which I got to address. Let me tell you something. If I don't address this, the Most High will take me out. If I don't address this, the most high taking me out. Because I gotta. I don't want to, but I gotta. I gotta address this one, man. Now, y'all know how I do my videos. I gather nothing but receipts. Nothing but receipts to build a case to talk about these issues. Now, what's the purpose of this particular live show? The purpose of this live show is to bring about truth so that these men can reconcile. Some things were done. I don't have the full details because there's like a one-sided situation here. I'm going to try my best to share my commentary. and speak on this manner from a place that is non-bias. Do you understand me? Because a lot of times you got people, and see, this is why, listen, let me explain something to y'all. This is why I left the Christian church. Because of stuff like this. This is why I left the church. Because I didn't see no unity. 
There have been various videos where you would see Pastor Dow and brother, excuse me, Pastor Rufus talking about Geno Jennings. You know how embarrassing it is right now? You know how embarrassing this is right now? That we have two leaders divided over a situation that should have been handled privately. A situation that should have been resolved with the utmost care and respect. And instead, it became a public show. It became a place where people are divided now. I'm, I'm literally seeing people taking sides. People are ha turning blind eyes to different things. I looked at Pastor Rufus' videos, heard part of his side, and it sounds very, very telling. And this needs to be addressed. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed because I tell my viewers so many great things about Pastor Dow. And I got much respect for Pastor Dow. Much respect. But I don't like how this is being handled. I don't like the things that I'm seeing. I don't like especially two videos that I've seen Pastor Dow drop. I don't like what I'm seeing. I'm disappointed. And this is why I got to do this stream. And again, I didn't want to do this stream. I didn't want to do this. The Most High compelled me to do this stream. My hope is that believers, as believers, that we don't rush to judgment on either side. I want you to look at this and have an open mind to what we're going to discuss. Let's not be quick to pick up the stones or quick to click the unsubscribe button. We're not here to do that. What we're trying to do is address this situation like godly people. Because what I'm seeing, it's not godly. I'm not going to be one of those people that say, I'll be praying for you. I don't got no time for that. We can talk about this thing. So there's going to be rebukes. There's going to be correction. And I am going to show video footage. And the video footage that I'm going to show is going to show not only Pastor Dow and Pastor Rufus how, how sensitive this situation is. This is not right. This is not right. Now, Pastor Rufus, I've seen him many times in my live shows, many times in the chat. He supported my shows. I saluted him many times. I've watched a couple of his videos. I watch Pastor Dow all the time. I recommend everybody always go over there, subscribe, support, subscribe, support. And when I see this, I'm disappointed. One of the things that, that is very disappointing about this is that people are taking sides. These are supposed to be two men of the most high, men of truth, men that, that build community in disagreement. Now, as men, we're going to have disagreements. You may not like what I said. You may not like my tone. But as men, we should be able to come into the round circle in a closed environment and hash this out as men without the public knowing all this mess because it gets really messy. And I've seen this in the Christian church. And so to see it amongst Israelite brothers, men, 
after the video footage that I'm going to show you, it's embarrassing. And the Most High is not pleased. There is no way that any of you can go to sleep and be happy about yourselves. When you got people in this truth dying, trying to find their way to the Most High and to see the vision, it discourages people. It'll make people literally, I'm done. I'm done with the Most High. I'm done with the Bible. I'm going, I'm going to another religion. I'm going to another faith. It turns hearts. Because people are expecting this and they're looking up to you. And I ain't saying nobody's perfect. But for crying out loud, it's like, there got to come a time, man, where it's like, look, if we got a disagreement about something, we got to look at the greater issue here. The people. So I got to put aside all of my emotions, my ego, who my name is, what I feel about me. I got to put that to the side and say, look, we need to take care of this issue and nip this in the bud right away. Because the flock will end up scattering. Now, over the years, right, I've seen a lot of people make videos about Pastor Dow. They said a lot of negative things, a lot of negative things. I mean, negative things. I would disregard all those videos. Give them the benefit of the doubt because you have haters. When I look at this situation here that's going on here, I'm extremely disappointed. Because based on what I'm seeing, with the little bit of information. We're going to get into the tapes. We're going to play the tapes. We're going to hear Pastor Rufus' videos. We're going to go through his videos. I'm not going to interrupt unless it's necessary, but I want him to get his story out there. Because if this man is guilty of something, he deserves a fair share. He deserved to have his day in court because based on what I'm hearing and seeing, and again, I didn't want to make this video, but I got to do this. I got to do this because you can have a man that could be innocent. You can have a man that's innocent, didn't do no wrong now. Maybe he did something and people didn't like it, but you can have a man that's innocent and he's being judged unjustly. Because of ego, because of a misunderstanding, because we're not sitting down at the round table to talk about this issue. So I want to address this situation because since nobody ain't going to address it around the round table, we got to address it out in the open now. And I am not partial in judgment. I'm not partial in judgment. Proverbs chapter 24, 23. These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Which simply means you're not to be partial in judgment. There should be no partiality when you judge. If we're going to hold trial... If we're going to have court, it needs to be done the right way. Or else we can have a man's blood on our hands. And I don't want that. So again, with heavy hearts, I got to do what I got to do in order to address this issue. So moving forward, I'm going to say this publicly. Because if I don't deal with this issue, it's going to run rampant and... People are going to be looking at me and saying, but Ringo, uh, I thought you said go over here and go over there and do this and do that. I got people coming to me now asking me questions. I'm like, look, I don't got nothing to do with this and this. And I don't know what's going on. I don't even know what's going on. But people coming to me. Ringo, should I stop supporting this person? Should I go to that person? Ringo, what do you think about this person? What do you think about that person? I'm like.
It's crazy. You know? But this is what's going on, man. And if you're going to come in here posting a thousand comments to troll, right? We're just going to have to pack you up. Because I don't have time for um, people that just come in here. You, you come in here with a demon spirit on your back. I mean, how many comments are you going to post to troll? I don't have time for that. This is a very serious issue. I mean, you come in with the wrong spirit. I mean, come on. Have some decency and some respect. Right? I mean, did you not hear anything I just said? These things also belong to the wise. Certainly you're not wise. Because wise men understand that it is not good to have a respect of persons in judgment. It's not good. When you sit in a place of judgment, you have to judge righteous judgment, which means you got to weigh all the evidence. You got to look at everything for what it is, and you got to make sure that you execute judgment the proper way so that you're not slandering anybody and so that you're not turning people against one another. I'm not here for that. I'm not one of those people that came here to pick up a stone and say, okay, let's stone past the Dow. Let's stone Pastor Rufus. It's his fault. I'm not here for all of that. What I'm here for is to address the issues. So, we're going to begin by breaking down this entire thing righteously. Not based on ego, not based on, well, you like this particular pastor, so you, you hold them up high. And because you hold them up high, you're going to hold your tongue. No, we're not doing that. We're not, we're not holding no tongues here. We're going to address the issue because the most high is not pleased. He's not pleased with what's going on. Now, earlier, I noticed Pastor Dow was live. I think they had service. And I'm saying to myself, I'm shaking my head because I'm like, there's an unresolved issue between you and a brother in whom you ordain as a pastor. You ordain this man as a pastor. So to see this going on, I am disappointed. Because the Bible says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. There's so many scriptures, so many things. And again, I listened to Pastor Rufus' videos. I went to his channel. I had to do my investigation. And shout out to Neftali. You know what I'm saying? I had many issues with Neftali back in the day. We had our little wars and whatnot. I was actually shocked to see you in uh Pastor Rufus comics comment section. I was literally shocked. I was like, wow, you're over there too? That just proved that the spirit is moving. Now, again, my goal and my hope is that these men can come together and do this the right way and reconcile and put aside their differences, whatever, whatever took place, trial need to be taking place because look, again, we're going to go through the tapes. We're going to go through the, the evidence. We're going to listen to the tapes. Y'all know how I do with my videos. I go through the tapes and I know the most high want me to do this because everybody's talking about P. Diddy. I put that on the back burner. I don't really care about that. My issue is the body of Christ has been divided in Israel because of this situation. I'm affected by it. I feel some type of way. I said I feel some type of way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the tape. And I want you, because the way it's supposed to be, and again, Pastor Rufus brought this out. This is why I'm telling you. The Most High is not pleased. And again, 
to both of you men. The people need to see unity amongst men. Imagine how Geno Jennings must be laughing right now. Geno Jennings is laughing right now. He's literally sitting in a corner laughing, saying, look at these guys. Just the other day, they were together talking about debates. Now they got strife. You know? And again, to everybody that's viewing in the audience, hold your judgment. Hold your picking sides because that's the devil. This is why I'm disappointed. Because elders, men of truth, supposed to have better judgment. This is a very dangerous, dangerous thing to be doing. Because it causes people to take sides. It causes people to say, you know what? I'm leaving this and I'm leaving that. Come on, man. I seen you guys build together. Teach together. And now this? I'm disappointed. I seen people in the comments. I read the I read everybody's comments. I went to past the dials platform. I looked at the videos comment section. I read all the comments. The people are not happy. I went to past the Rufus channel. I looked at the comments. I see people showing him support. The people know what's going on now. It's the people that are supposed to judge. The people, the congregation, they're supposed to listen to both sides. Not one. No man is above reproach or criticism. No man. Do you understand? No man is above reproach or criticism. We're men and we need to act like men. The most high is not pleased. You got too many people on the line right now watching what's going on. Their faith has been shattered. Their faith has been shaken. I've seen Pastor Rufus speak very highly, very, very highly of Pastor Dow. I also seen a video of Pastor Dow speaking extremely highly of Pastor Rufus. So what's going on? Was all of that a lie? Was it like a, a joke? Because we're going to go to the tapes. So I'm, I'm literally challenging you to examine your heart. Put aside all ego, all pride, and let's examine the information at hand. Because moving forward, respectfully now, I got to make this announcement now. Until this matter get resolved between Pastor Dow and Pastor Rufus, I cannot tell my subscribers, hey, go over there and support Pastor Dow. Can't tell them to do that. Respectfully. I can't tell them to do that. I feel some type of way telling people to go support this, subscribe, do that. And there's strife that's unresolved. I, I feel some type of way. It's like it's like recommending go buy a pair of Jordans at this store. But the store has an issue with one of the people that I sent over there and they did them dirty or there's some sort of unresolved issue. And yet I'm going to recommend other people. I can't do that. 
This is what I mean by division. There's no peace. We become hypocrites. People are going to be asking, you know how many people sending me message in my DMs? You think I want to see these messages? Ringo, what should I do? Hey, Ringo, um, did you hear about such and such and such? I subscribed and he said that I should unsubscribe from this person and that. Per we got a lot to address, man. Like I said, this is bad, man. This is bad. And it's happening on my watch. So I got to address it. And oh, this is the last thing I would want to do. I'm always shouting out the brothers in the truth. Always. The last thing I want is for my viewers to be looking at any of you men in any sort of way. Because I got high regard and high respect for Pastor Dow. I got enough respect for Pastor Rufus. He appeared to be a stand-up guy, a stand-up man. I listened to his videos. I listened to what he had to say. And based on what I'm seeing, he, he's trying to do things based on the book. He's trying to do things in a, in a way where it's like, let's do it by the book. If I'm guilty, hey, I'm guilty. But let's do it by the book. Let's have trial the right way and have my I guess day in court the right way but it seems as if though that's not being done it seems as if though you know when a man goes to court in the world he got to deal with corrupt attorneys corrupt police officers that falsify information and it's like the trial it's not a fair trial you got innocent men in prison right now doing hard time because somebody screwed up the paperwork screwed up the the evidence and a man is serving time in prison is that what we trying to do with pastor rufus put him in a prison turn everyone against him because that's what i'm seeing i'm, I'm speaking my mind what I'm seeing is let's make people turn against him without a trial, without what happened. One of the most dangerous things that I've seen, and I'm going to play the tape so you can see it, is Pastor Dow telling people to unsubscribe from Pastor Rufus Page. Why would you do that? Why would you tell the people, unsubscribe? Why you put me in a position like this where I gotta do this video? Sometimes I do these videos, man, and I'm like, man, oh man, but I gotta. Because if you look in the scriptures, there have been times the most high told men of the Lord, go do this. And the, the prophet or the man of the, the, the most high, he didn't want to do it. <laughs> He's like, is there any other way we could do this? He's like, do exactly what I told you. All right. I'll do it. That's the position I'm in right now. I got no choice. Do what I got to do. In terms of this video, fam. You know? Look, I got people in the chat literally saying, I sub to Pastor Dow due to Brother Ringo. I've never heard of Pastor Rufus just wondering what's going on. Well, we're going to get into that. But see what I mean? People that follow my platform subscribed to Pastor Dow because... I promoted, endorsed Pastor Dow. What if I was to be the same? What if I was to be petty? What if I, Ringo TV, said, you know what, hey, everybody, hey, go unsubscribe from Pastor Dow. Do you know how many people would actually unsubscribe if I said that? I ain't saying go do that. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm trying to show you, what if I did that? 
because I'm pretty sure I sent a lot of subscribers over there. Not only that, I promoted the Patreon. I told a lot of you, go support Pastor Dial's Patreon. What if I was to say, you know what, guys? By the measure he judged, you know what, let's do the same thing. You see how that works? You should never do that. You should never tell people to unsubscribe from another man because of a disagreement. Because what you've done is you're telling people, think like me, be like me, be against this person because I'm against this person. That's wrong. That's wrong, man. I'm very disappointed with that. And hey, again, no pastor is above reproach. All of us need to repent. All of us can humble ourselves and take heed to information. We do understand that, right? Did I disrespect anyone? No. I'm just calling it what it is. That man has a family. That man have responsibilities. Why would you tell the congregation, hey, unsubscribe from him, you know, That's bad. Let's get into the tapes. The tapes don't lie. Let's get into the tapes. We're going to see some images, some footage, some information that is going to disappoint you. But at the same time, it is necessary. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, I did not want to make this particular stream because I, I see these two men as men of truth in this, this dying world. The last thing I want to see is division. The last thing I want to see with these men is division. Last thing. This entire situation is like a divorce. It's hurtful. It, it, it's, it's not good to look at. I literally had to stop everything I'm doing to prepare this show. And I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Because there's a lot of young people in the faith that have lost their faith because of this situation. I'm looking at the comments. People are disappointed. They're like, what's going on? What happened? Come on, you know better than this. Why you let this thing go this far? Is it pride? Is it ego? Is it something, does it have something to do with finances? What's the issue? Hash that out behind the scenes like men. Go into a secluded area where you have the elders, the key players, the key men of the Lord in one room, and you hash this thing out like men. In other words, hey, I'm going to speak my mind. So if I got to fuss, if I got to cuss a little bit, I'm going to do that. But we're going to do that in the confines of this room. And what we say and do in this room, it ain't going outside this room because we're going to hash this thing like men. And we got the elders and we got the other leaders in this room to make sure everything is dealt with. And that's how we're going to handle this. Because the last thing the people need to see is division. People don't want to see that mess. And you know what's so sad about this? While I'm talking, I'm telling people we're going to get to the tapes and look at this. But because a lot of you love bochinche, gossip, and drama, that's the only reason why you're here. Because you want to hear some, some drama. Just like the P. Diddy thing. Everybody's streaming. Imagine that. P. Diddy home get raided. You got uh, 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 academics, 30-something thousand people in the live chat. This, this, this nation is, is done. 30,000 people in a live chat to hear what? The same nonsense? Everybody's streaming. The same thing. Ooh, P. Diddy. Oh, his house got raided. People love garbage. 
People love drama. And none of y'all care about P. Diddy. You just want to get a YouTube check. That's your big break, your big opportunity. Oh, let me go live. P. Diddy. Oh, my numbers are going to go up. Following these trends, eventually your numbers are going to go down because you don't really stand for anything. Most high going to never really bless you because you're not really about nothing. But see, rather than me doing that, I decided to do this. So let's get to these tapes. Let's play these tapes. Let's find out what's going on. This is over two hours worth of footage, y'all. Two hours worth of footage. I'm going to let it play because I want you to hear what's going on. I may stop here and there, but I'm not going to stop when uh, Elder, not Elder, Pastor Rufus begin to speak on his side of what's going on and so on and so forth. I'm going to let that pretty much play because I want his story to get out there and I want these men to reconcile. The goal is to reconcile because this should not be in the public. It gets messy. This should not be in the public. That's like me and New Breed beefing in the public. You watch me, you watch him, but we beefing in the public. Y'all going to be looking at that like, like, what are you doing? Yo, Ringo, what's good with you and New Breed, fam? Like, why y'all y'all tripping? What, what's, what's going on? Y'all going to look at us like, bro, y'all can't handle that behind the scenes? Now people unsubscribing from this, unsubscribing. Come on, man. We looking, we looking crazy out here, man. You're supposed to be leaders, man. Y'all supposed to be leading the people. All these disagreements. This is why, listen, this is why I left the Christian church. This is why I don't want to be a part of no church. This is why I don't even join no congregation, fam. I'm just keeping it a thousand with you. It's to avoid all of this type of stuff. I'm just keeping it a buck. You know what I mean? This is why. I don't want to be a part of nobody's congregation. Because I don't want nobody feeling like I can't speak. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you got some people, man. It's like they will side with whatever a pastor say, and a pastor could be wrong, and they'll still side with him. I don't do that. I came from that. So as being a man in this truth, I expect high standards that when you know you wrong, own up to when you wrong. Because sometimes people could be wrong. They don't think they wrong. Sometimes people be like, nobody can tell me I'm wrong. And that got to stop, fam. If you wrong, recognize you wrong. I, if I'm wrong, I'm going to say I'm wrong. And I'm going to apologize and try to make it right. Because I know the audience, the audience, they watching. They watching. They looking at what's going on. And they're going to take sides. And all it's going to do is divide us all. And we're going to be a laughing stock. So let's get to these tapes. Find out what's going on here, man. Now, again, listen to these tapes. Listen to what's going on here. And see if it resonates right with you. I'm not happy with what I'm seeing. I'm disappointed. This needs to be resolved as soon as possible. You know? This needs to be resolved as soon as possible. And... Uh, until further notice, um, I cannot, um, recommend, uh, anyone in the future to subscribe or support, uh, pass the dial at this point. This needs to be resolved. This needs to be resolved. And if pass the dial is listening, hey, much respect. I support you, got much love for you. This issue need to be resolved. You, Pastor Rufus, need to sit down like men and hash this out. This cannot continue to just go and it's like, oh, well, we're separated. I didn't like what I seen. I'm like, is that Pastor Dow? That didn't sound like him. Nah, 
I got to say something about this. It's not cool. You know? And it doesn't matter if the public hear this and that. What makes a man strong, remember your words to Pastor Rufus? Remember when you asked him how many times you rebuked him, how many times you scolded him with, with correction and this and that? He said, many times. I can't even keep count. Well, you said it makes him a better man, right? So, as a leader, to hear this truth coming from Ringo TV, think about that. Something is wrong. This got my attention. I feel that a man was unjustly judged. Where is the the trial? Where is the hearing his side of an argument? Do he have an opportunity? What's really going on? All I heard was, hey, go unsubscribe from him. I'm listening to the video. I'm like, unsubscribe from who? Pastor Rufus? Why? What, what do you do? So, so you want me to unsubscribe from Pastor Rufus? No, I'm not doing that. Not me. I'm not doing that. And I don't suggest anybody do that because that's wrong. Because if I was to come into public now and say, hey, everybody that subscribed to Pastor Dow, unsubscribe. It'll be a problem. If I tell everybody that may have subscribed to the Patreon, unsub from the Patreon. That will affect you. Why would I do that? That's evil. Why would I tell people to unsubscribe from you? That's evil. Why would I tell everybody in a time where your platform got demonetized, hey, go over there to his Patreon and unsubscribe because I'm upset. Why would I do that? That's evil. I'm not going to do that. Doesn't matter what you do. I'm not going to do that. That would be wrong. Because you need the support. Telling an audience to unsubscribe from a man is wicked. It's not cool. Let's play the tapes, man. I'm just doing my part to address whatever I got to address. I don't care how anybody feel. It is what it is. Iron sharpen iron. I'm doing the work of the most high. And nobody controls me. Nobody. But the most high. But I'm going to address this issue. Do you understand? Doesn't matter who like me. Because what I'm doing is out of love. Not hate. Not jealousy, not ego. I don't have nothing to gain. Nothing. My thing is the people. The people is what's important. Not my ego. Let's go. I need this. Hey, anyone that has ever been subscribed to uh, Pastor Rupert's Carswell, I need y'all to go ahead and unsubscribe so you don't put and continue to keep putting all that junk and that mess in your hearts, all right? Uh, we got a new year. The Most High God has been good to us. Give us a very anointed service the other night. Um, it was just beautiful, wonderful. So um, just, just um, you know, all this negativity and all this other stuff, he, hey, he's gone. Uh, go ahead and um, unsubscribe from it and just keep the, the junk out of your spirit and keep on and stay encouraged, okay? And pretty soon he'll be out of my house and stop making videos on my front porch down there in Georgia as well. Glory to the King. All right. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Thanks to the Most High Yah. This is Pastor Rufus here from Straightway, Georgia. Look, looks like damn YouTube and went on here and demonetized our pastor's ch channel, man, Pastor Dow. So, 
what I'm going to need all of you guys to do, because I know there's a lot of people over here that has come into the way of the truth. And y'all actually watch Pastor Dial. I can see it on y'all thing, and I see y'all in the comment sections. So what I need for a lot of y'all to do is to go to Pastor Dial's channel and click on the link for Patreon. I need y'all to go sign up for his Patreon account, because I don't know how much longer Pastor Dial is going to be doing videos on YouTube. Um, y'all already know how this world is wicked and they do not want to hear any levels of truth and for them to demonetize him and, uh, try to hit him in his pocket that way, you know, which again, that ain't going to affect the ministry one way, shape, fashion, or form one bit that I guarantee you. But, um, you're going to get a much better content anyway, because it's uncensored over there on Patreon. Um, you can literally say what you need to say all levels of truth and you don't have to be censored you know as long as you're not threatening and doing stuff like that which of course we're never doing hey anyone that has ever been subscribed to uh pastor rufus carswell i need y'all to go ahead and unsubscribe so you don't put and continue to keep putting all that junk and that mess in your hearts all right but at the end of the day uh you're showing your level of support i think you can give as low as a dollar and as high as a hundred if you want to per month but i'm suggesting that everybody go over there and sign up for pastor dial's patron channel get on pastor dial's patron channel because i don't know how much longer he's gonna be uh doing videos on youtube hey anyone that has ever been subscribed to uh pastor rufus carswell i need y'all to go ahead and unsubscribe so you don't put and continue to keep putting all that junk and that mess in your hearts all right um if you're wise and you got the capabilities i would start downloading as many videos off of uh pastor dial's channel as i can get because you know how these people are. They're not satisfied till they can can silence your voice. That's what they want to do. They want to silence your voice so this truth don't get out here. So people don't have an opportunity to make a righteous decision. But um, we know how, how these how these boogers work. It, it wouldn't be surprising that they start doing it to everybody that's connected to the straightway truth ministry. You know, so uh, any videos of value that you see anywhere connected to straightway, straightway, uh, Pastor Dow, uh, straight weight live, straight weight um, uh, help meets. What's the other one we got? Um, uh, I can't think of the studio one, but because uh, I know we put a lot of uh, preaching and stuff videos on that channel um, that Jermaine started. But any anything that's connected to straight weight, any other communities, all that stuff, you better get it while you can get it. Because the way the powers that be is going, ain't no telling how long this information going to be out there. You know what I'm saying? So all y'all right now, go over and become a patron supporter of Pastor Dow. Go to Patron, uh, I think it's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. -E That's how you spell it, yeah, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And uh, click on Pastor Dow on there, uh, type in there Pastor Dow, and that'll take you to his Patreon channel. You have to pay to get on Patreon, but I tell you this, it's well worth it. Hey, anyone that has ever been subscribed to uh, Pastor Rufus Carswell, I need y'all to go ahead and unsubscribe so you don't put and continue to keep putting all that junk and that mess in your hearts, all right? Uh, we got a new year. The Most High God has been good to us. Give us a very anointed service the other night. Um, it was just beautiful, wonderful. So um, just, just um, you know, all this negativity and all this other stuff, he, hey, he's gone. Uh, go ahead and um, unsubscribe from it and just keep the, the junk out of your spirit and keep on and stay encouraged. Um, he puts stuff at different levels. So it just depends on how much you desire the truth because the higher the levels, the more you can definitely talk about. Hallelujah. And why not be a support? All that he has done to bless you in your lifestyle. I mean, there's so many people. I listened to Pastor on a video today about how these people will come over. They'll be on Pastor Dow's channel. They'll be subscribers, right? Then they get offended. They'll unsubscribe, but they go back and watch his channel every single day. They still go over and click on his channel to see what he's talking about every day. Why? Because they're not getting wisdom nowhere else. They're not getting truth and knowledge nowhere else. They can't get it on their own. But it's sad that they're so puffed up in themselves and they're so vain uh, and they're so envious of it. Instead of getting behind the man and supporting the man, they'll rather hate from afar, be envious from afar, uh, try to throw shade from afar. Doesn't matter, man. You can't stop what y'all doing. Hallelujah. Hey, anyone that has ever been subscribed to uh, Pastor Rufus Carswell, I need y'all to go ahead and unsubscribe so you don't put and continue to keep putting all that junk and that mess in your hearts, all right? So I'm telling everybody on my channel, go over right now to patron.com. Get on Pastor Dial's 
Patreon channel and be a supporter there because you're going to get some serious content. He's been on Patreon for a minute now, putting out some real content. I know we're on the highest level, but we don't want to miss nothing. I ain't trying to miss no videos. Hallelujah. All right, bless y'all. Appreciate the support for the ministry and for Pastor Dow. Shalom, shalom. Are y'all paying attention to this, man? As you can see or hear, because on uh, the Ringo TV Raw channel, they can only hear the audio. They can't see the actual video. But to those that are on the Ringo TV Raw channel, we're also streaming on the Ringo TV Reaction channel where you can see the video, right? So <clears throat> based on what you just seen and heard right there, when Pastor Dow's channel got demonetized, Pastor Rufus made a video letting everybody know, go support the patron. He spoke highly of him. He encouraged people to do this. So to hear Pastor Dow saying to the saints, hey, go unsubscribe from him. I am highly disappointed with that. That is extremely wrong. That is wrong. That man helped in a time of, I mean, I know what it's like to be demonetized. I already know what that's like. But he helped. He don't have a large following like Pastor Dow, but it's still something. Because ain't no telling how many people from his platform went over there and subscribed to the patron. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, come on now. Why would you tell your followers, hey, unsubscribe from him? That's wrong. Because whatever issue you have with him, that's between you and him. It's not between us and him. You're not supposed to turn, in other words, because you got an issue with Pastor Rufus, now we all supposed to have an issue with him too. That's wrong. That's wrong. The Bible don't say to do that. The Bible don't tell us, hey, you know what? If I have an issue with him, if any of y'all friends with him, y'all my enemies. What? Hold up. Whoa, wait a minute. If you got issues with this man, that's not has nothing to do with me. How many of y'all experienced that in life where you were friends with somebody, come to find out the friend that you're friends with, they have an issue with somebody else. And then when that person see you hanging with them, all of a sudden they go telling you, uh, hey, you friends with them? Yeah, 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 I'm cool with them. Yo, bro, man, that person, you know what I mean? Me and him, they ain't cool, man. If you're going to hang out with him, man, you can't hang with me. What do you mean, bro? I'm friends with them, too. Nah, if you're going to be friends with them, you can't be my friend. Well, you know what? I ain't your friend no more. That's how I used to deal with it. It's petty. You should never do that. You should never turn people against someone. Especially when we don't even know what's going on. That's wrong. Why tell people unsubscribe when that man made people subscribe to your patron? You don't think the most high see that? You think he's happy with that? That's why I'm bringing out the tapes. Because the tapes reminds you. All right, so everybody knows that Pastor Rufus is no longer uh, part of the ministry, right? But I want y'all to see the same pattern still going on here. Now, again... This particular video, Pastor Dow put on unlisted. But you know me. I get everything. This should not be done in the public. Because the way it's presented is as if though he left the ministry. That's how it's being presented. Like he just walked away and, you know, whatever the case is. This should not be in the public. 
these type of issues are supposed to be handled behind the scenes amongst men of truth that honor privacy, that honor and respect one another so it don't leak and turn into a mess because if it don't involve us, it should only be about the people that were there, people that are a part of whatever happened, that know what happened. Only they have the ability to really weigh in on the situation. But when it's thrown into the public, now everybody got an opinion now. That's why I got to make this video because I don't like what I'm seeing. It's bad. It's really, it's, just, it's heartbreaking to see this type of stuff. Let's go. Now, he's got a lot of land down there that is in his name uh, with money and donations that was given to him off the backs of the saints, uh, whoever it may be. And what he's going to end up doing is he's going to end up selling that land and keeping pretty much all the proceeds for himself. Now, if he was honorable, whatever proceeds that he gets from that land, um, the honorable thing would do is is for him if he wants to hey, you keep half and then the other half goes to the saints see this thing is getting really messy because now it comes in as if though this has something to do with money some sort of issue with land who name got who name see this is what i mean this is a mess let's go but we'll see what takes place we'll see because a lot of people purport in being just and being fair and being honest and all that or other stuff, but we'll see. Just because the land is in your name, um, I mean, think about it. Uh, he was the pastor over the assembly, but he hasn't got out there and did any physical labor to bring in any funds uh, for, to purchase those lands, none whatsoever at all. So that's why I keep telling people it's unfair for people to go out there when we have foundations to buy land in your name and then something like this takes place and then all the sweat equity that the brothers put in going out there working and bringing money into the ministry stuff then whenever something takes place then just like with Eld Austin you know the land was in his mother's name uh, his mother-in-law name and guess what now we're out the saints are out of all this hard-earned labor um, I mean shoot and I got all kinds of things I can think about that I need to do um, but this is just crazy for stuff to happen like that. It really truly is. I'm gonna actually do some research here because we know we gotta stop this bloodletting like this, but we'll see. We'll see exactly what takes place and happen. But I'm not holding my breath, not at all. See, again, this is like, if this type of division is going on in Israel, then the world have no hope. Because if we can't come together and resolve our differences and issues, then the people in the world have no hope. If the men of truth can't come together and resolve their differences, we're finished, you know? And hey, I welcome everybody to speak their mind. You know what I mean? I just don't want no trolling, but you're welcome to speak your mind. Like I see on uh, the Ringo TV Raw channel, um, somebody, Sean said, no offense, but that's a female's move, right? Everybody's entitled to their opinions. Um, let me see what's going on on the Ringo TV Reactions channel. Betrayal is increasing. Toxic. Uh, so what if it's for the kingdom? This is about to reach critical mass. The Most High Yah will set everything in order. Well, in order for him to set everything in order, somebody got to get off their ASS and begin to do something about it. Because a lot of times we... we we, we try to be religious in terms of speaking things like the most high is going to do this. The most high, the most high ain't doing nothing until we go out there and begin to do something. It's so like how I'm doing something about it. I'm speaking. That's how the most high is able to do something. You know why? Because when I begin to speak, guess what? Those two men will begin to hear my voice. And it's supposed to do something within them to say, you know what? We got to really deal with this issue. Because now it's brewing on social media. Ringo TV is addressing the issue now. So now it's going to start to be addressed by other people too. And then the people that don't like Pastor Dow, the haters, right? They're going to start to make videos. 
And then you're going to have people that left the ministry. They're going to start to make videos. It's going to be one big mess. I've seen this happen many times, man. This is why this issue needs to be resolved. Because you got people that have ill will and, and, and they don't like uh, Pastor Dow. They may not like Pastor Rufus, but they're going to start to talk about this now. Now you're going to have negative press out there. And you don't want that. Right? And again, I'm no respect of persons when it comes to this truth. Proverbs 24, 23. These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Just because I think highly of Pastor Dow does not mean I'm not going to do this video. I'm going to do this video and I'm going to say what needs to be said. Egos are in the way. Egos need to be removed. People's lives are at stake. Egos are in the way. That needs to be moved out of the way so that people can judge righteously. Being partial in judgment in any way is wicked. Let's get to the tapes. But, you know, straightway as a whole, since then, let me see, we've we've done increase by three communities. Listen. Yes. We probably have, I don't know, I'm just going off my cuff right now. I'm probably not, I'm not going to get these numbers right. Mm -hmm. But I know we have somewhere, have purchased somewhere between 80 and 160 acres of land. That's yeah, a lot. Between these three communities. Mm -hmm. And I know that we've refurbished and rebuilt two homes. Mm -hmm. We built... A, a big old gigantic steel garage up here. Mm -hmm. We built an extension to it. That's just here. Yeah, we built a boat house and we mm -hmm. also built a gas station, mm -hmm. and a little small gas station up there. And mm -hmm. and um, that's just that alone. Yeah. That's not including um, down there your your area. I mean, two Georgia spots. Mm -hmm. Setting up the Alabama community. But yeah, but purchased two more pieces of land down there. Mm -hmm. um, the. Um, all-purpose building. Absolutely, multi-purpose building, yep. Multi-purpose mm -hmm. building. Um, as a matter of fact, y'all finished that, that home mm -hmm. that's next to it. That, yep. This, the, yep. 2021 that as well. That. that was is all that in correct? That. Yep. All that was in there. Um, mm -hmm. Then we go up to Straightway, Indiana. Oh, boy. Man, we they've done redone, and you done sent crews up there. Yep. And they done redone the He sent what up there? Crews. He sent who? Crews. So... As men, y'all worked together, y'all built together, created and built communities together. And now what? All of that went in vain? And the Most High is pleased? <laughs> Most High not pleased with this mess? The people are not pleased with this mess. This is, a dis this is an embarrassment. Very disappointing. All that good talk right there and now division? Nah, that's a, that's a bad look not looking good this need to be resolved as men this need to be resolved behind the scenes chop it up you know what i mean have whatever words i gotta say you know well you offended me i didn't like what you say let that off you know what i mean speak whatever you want to speak let out a couple of explicits here and there and there do that in the combined have civil discourse you know like how you always say civil discourse that's it clear the air you know reconcile break bread you know do this before the witnesses shake hug you know what i mean and get back to this ministry get back to the work because too many times ego get in the way and all of a sudden now men change and I'm telling you, that is the quickest way for people to leave a church. I've seen it happen too many times. Too many times. Where you have men that have grown and, and I don't know. I, it could be a situation. Listen, this is just me speaking out loud. This is just me speaking out loud. Based on what I'm seeing. Right? I watched the tape where after... Uh, Rufus was ordained pastor, right? 
there was a sit down where Pastor Dow was speaking very highly, very highly. We're going to play the tapes because I got to refresh his memory and keep him in remembrance of his words. Very important when it comes to doing this kind of content. I'm not here to uh, put nobody down. My goal is for these men to reconcile. Not to be on this, well, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. No. Reconcile. Because as long as that strife is there, all the things y'all trying to do godly, nobody ain't hearing it. Most high not hearing it. Because there's a bunch of wickedness going on. That's like I'm beefing with a brother, and yet I want to go have a prayer service. You know how crazy that look? Most high not listening to none of that. Most high is like, whoa, 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 hold on now. What are you doing? Did you resolve that issue? Nah, I ain't resolve it because, you know, um, it's not my fault. He want you to go resolve that issue. He don't want to hear nothing else till you resolve that issue. Even the Bible talks about that. How can we say we love God in whom we have not seen but hate our brother? How could we do that? If we don't have love for the brethren, how can we have a pure heart towards God? So I can't be in, I can't have this, this deep disagreement and continue in this ministry and haven't resolved my issues with my brother. I seen Pastor Dow and, and uh, 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 Pastor Rufus on camera together. And you can see the presence of the most high on these men. That's why I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. I've watched the videos. I seen Pastor Dow say, I love this man. And it's almost like you wanted to cry because you know that he's a he's an upstanding brother. You know it. And I got the tapes to prove it. So to see this right now, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed with this. Think I'm gonna be wasting my damn time talking about P. Diddy? Three hour, four hour live stream. I ain't worried about that story. Everybody's talking about it. It ain't nothing new. I could do that next week. But right now, I'm dealing with what is righteous. And I'm using my platform to address this issue. Because the two of you have a vision and a mission from the Most High. And the devil got involved. The devil came in. Somebody let him in. Someone let him in. And he's dividing the men of truth. And it's causing people to take sides. And it's sad, man. It's very sad. It's disappointing. Let's get back to the tapes. Let's find out what's going on. Oh, entire. I mean, they have a, a, a fellowship hall. They have a, a dining hall. Mm -hmm. They have an eating place all yep. in one building. Yep. And they've purchased more lands. They've added homes. And they had homes. Septic tanks, all this stuff. Oh. I've, sent, I've sent personally from Georgia multiple crews multiple up there multiple crews. times. And then. We've been up there multiple times. There you go. And then on top of that, then you got straightway Kentucky East mm -hmm. with Elder Mitchell. Mitchell. Mm -hmm. we, we've been up there. Oh Elder them is already they're already working on the home. A home yep. has been built. Do we place. went up there mm -hmm. and and um, um, laid blocks. Did a uh, laid blocks to a um, dining down. hall, right yep. facility. Yep. Um, and we, I mean, dining hall, duplex. There you go. The, the uh, battery house for the. Uh, Notice how both of you are talking about the accomplishments, the works, the things that you have done. This is greatness. That's what the people want to see. They don't want to see the vision. It's like, what's the point of following the most high when we're watching 
two men of truth divided. What's the point? It's time to go back into the world now. It's time to go party. Because obviously this must be fake, right? It's got to be fake. If two men of knowledge cannot reconcile, then surely this must be fake, right? I got to go back into the world. I mean, why, why read the Bible? Why should I read the Bible? For what? Y'all can't even reconcile. So why should anybody want to follow the Most High? Why? When two men can't even reconcile. So where's forgiveness? Where's forgiveness? Where is it? Why there's no forgiveness? So we got this much in our heart. There's so much strife. We can't forgive. What was done that is so horrible? What was done? Well, I didn't like what you said. Well, you know, I'm the elder. Nobody could tell me nothing. I'm above reproach. I hope it's not that. And if I could get back to my point, it's just me thinking out loud. Based on the tapes and the things that I'm seeing, and I don't know how these men communicate behind the scenes, but this is just my thoughts and my opinion. Based off of the tape that I've seen where um, Pastor Dow asked Rufus, no, he didn't ask Rufus, he was talking about, he said, how many times have I, I guess, rebuked you or corrected you and scolded you with the truth or whatever the case is? And Rufus said, I, I, I lost count. I lost count. And what I'm seeing, and I don't know, again, I don't know how these men communicate behind the scenes, but the way I see this thing is this. As men, you got to see one another as if you talking to the Messiah. Ain't no, I'm better than you. You can't tell me nothing. Cause I'm smarter than you. Nah, not when you're men. Men of truth respect one another. Men of truth honor one another. And see, when I saw that video where Pastor Dow said, haven't I rebuked you many times? And it was all behind the scenes, like nobody really, really knew. That's how it's supposed to be, behind the scenes. Nobody don't know. But see, there comes a time when You can't really keep rebuking this man as if though he's so on the bottom. He's a man. He's a pastor now. And that needs to be something that men understand. See, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So I can't talk to this man as if though he's beneath me. I got to respect this man. So if this man says something, I may not like what he say or how he said it, but he's still a man. And maybe what he's saying is truthful. I just didn't like how he said it. So for all we know, maybe I'm just saying, I don't know. I'm just speculating. It could be a situation where maybe Pastor Rufus may have said some things that he felt needed to be said. And he ain't hold his tongue. And it could have went out. Pastor Dow probably looked at it like, now you can't be talking to me like that or telling me this or you, you, you got to know your place. Now, again, I'm just speculating. But my point is, when it comes to ministry, finances, uh, business, sometimes the truth can hurt because a lot of men are not really stand-up men. Sometimes you can have a ministry 
And a lot of the elders and men that are within the ministry don't really have that backbone to say what needs to be said. If that makes sense. Meaning they're yes men. They just say whatever's going to make the leader feel good because they don't want to offend nobody. Whereas you can have another man who he's like, look, most high said this. I'm going to say what needs to be said. Even if it causes a rift, I'm going to say it. And this is all written of in the Bible. Many men been through this. Where he had to say something to another man. He didn't want to, but he had to. Most high commanded him, say this, say it. And the other man got offended. Why? Because the truth, the truth hurts. I'm not no pastor. I'm a man of truth. I'm a watchman. And I speak when the most high tell me to speak. And when I speak, I can guarantee you, he'll use me to reach the pastors. Just as I've done by rebuking all of them Christian pastors in all them churches for years. Nobody's above reproach. Too many lives are at stake. Too many souls. Too many people. For men of the Lord to be going through this type of stuff. I'm qualified to speak on these issues. Nobody on social media can do this particular live stream but me. Nobody else is equipped to speak boldly like me. Nobody will do this fair and balanced. I have nothing to gain because I'm not a part of a congregation. I don't attend churches. No. And it's because of these type of issues. Because when you're a part of something and then something go down, now you got to pick and choose which side you're going to be on. I decided long time ago, I'm not going to do that. Now imagine, imagine if I'm cool with Pastor Rufus, but I'm, I'm a part of the congregation at Straightway and I go there every day. I'm in Tennessee. I'm living there. I'm a part of the community. And something like this goes down. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Pick a side, right? So now if I say, hey, what's going on with, what do you mean? Do you see what, you see where I'm at now? Now I gotta, now I'm looking crazy now. Now I gotta pick who, who I'm following. Because if I'm cool with Pastor uh, uh, Rufus, if I'm cool with him, but I'm a part of Straightway and I'm at the, the, I'm in the congregation, I'm a part of the community. If I'm still subscribed to Pastor Rufus, am I going to get kicked out of the church? That's not a good thing because that brings into question are members of the church held to some sort of standard where it's like if you're subscribed to Pastor Rufus still, you're going to get kicked out of the church? Is it one of those type of things? Because if that's the case, that's evil. That's wicked. Should never, nobody, whatever issues one have with someone, that's between you and that person. That has nothing to do with the congregation. Nobody should be coerced into making decisions on avoiding any sort of fellowship with that person because I got a personal issue. 
If anything, let's have trial. Let's bring this man, Pastor Rufus, to the congregation of the church and let the church weigh out the evidence and let them decide. Not through no coercion, not through no brainwashing. Use your discernment and judge righteously. You know the scriptures. And you'll be the judge because based on all of the evidence I have, based on what I'm hearing, the men of the Lord couldn't come to an agreement on executing judgment on Pastor Rufus. For whatever he did, whatever he said, I don't know. But based on what I heard, they had meetings and couldn't come to an agreement because some people wanted this, the other people didn't want it. So that shows if we can't come into an agreement on judgment, then that's a sign that we need to let the, the church know, let them know what's going on so that they can hear what's happening here. Both sides, not one side. Because once it gets to a point where we only hear what the pastor got to say, and I'm talking about Pastor Dow, and that's it, and we don't hear nobody else's side, that's wrong. Because it reminds me of when I was in the Christian church and nobody wanted to hear anything. Because whatever the pastor said goes and whatever the church members want to say or what they want to know or if they ask questions, they get shunned, they get banished, they get kicked out of the church. Nobody want to hold the pastor accountable. And that's why I left the Christian church. And that is why I held every pastor accountable to the fire because nobody can control me. No one. I'm a man. Do you understand? And if we're going to follow this book called the Bible, let's follow it to the T. No half-stepping. No being partial in judgment. Let's get back to the tapes. Uh, yes, solar, solar panel. panel. Man, it, it ain't like we just sitting around. Shit. Right. And plus, Elder Mitch has come down here a few times and got the trucks and went and purchased tractors and yep. I mean when we tell y'all that we are busy <laughs> and we just right now we're just shooting off the top of our heads yeah that's not including brother Sean them moving from Arizona on that land out here and yep. down here in Tennessee Chris had to do all over there yep. exactly brother Chris brother out here doing those work brother Will and them mother yeah. purchasing that land we can go on and on and on and on and on so if I tell you Sorry that we're not like many of you out there that have a lot of time on your hand where you can just drop what you're doing. Mm -hmm. We have obligations. Yep. You have obligations. That's right. And being that you have obligations, let's read what DR posts. First Peter chapter 5, verse 2 to 3. Feed the flock of Yah, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. That is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to feed the flock. That's what you're supposed to do. Have a ready mind to feed the flock. But when ego get involved, it don't look good, man. Let's go. Hey, anyone that has ever been subscribed to uh, Pastor Rufus Carswell, I need y'all to go ahead and unsubscribe so you don't put and continue to keep putting all that junk and that mess in your hearts, all right? Well, Elder Rufus, even when he was Brother Rufus, has always been a man that's y'all fearing. Um, He's, 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 his character has been impeccable. Um, he really loves Yah and he really loves Israel. You listening? Uh, to me, he's been a great, a uh, great help. Uh, Y'all know how much he travels the roads. Uh, a lot of those things, he's just taking weight, taking the burden off of me. So I can be free to do other things. So I can prioritize um, things that I need to do. Um, it's always been extremely reliable. Mm. Um, 
thing what I love about him is the, what we talked about before we went live here. He's been a, an example of, of the way that a household should run, uh, the way a man should run in his house and his household. Because uh, you can tell a lot about a man by what his issues look like. Whatever his issues look like, you can tell a lot about him as a man. And so he has um, been a pillar of strength here in Israel. He's un tirelessly counseled with many of you and helped you along the way as he himself has advanced. Um, I have no reservations about him whatsoever at all in any way, shape, fashion, or form. Um, he's just a, a really good Israelite. Just a really good Israelite. Oh, oh, yeah. He just said he's a really good Israelite. You spoke of him very highly. Very highly you spoke of him. Now, it's hard to believe that with all of those great words that all of a sudden now, there's division. It's not good. It's not good at all. Also, we need this. Hey, anyone that has ever been subscribed to uh, Pastor Rufus Carswell, I need y'all to go ahead and unsubscribe so you don't put and continue to keep putting all that junk and that mess in your hearts, all right? Uh, we got a new year. The Most High God has been good to us. Give us a very anointed service the other night. Um, it was just beautiful, wonderful. So um, just, just um, you know, all this negativity and all this other stuff, he, hey, he's gone. Uh, go ahead and um, unsubscribe from it and just keep the, the junk out of your spirit and keep on and stay encouraged, okay? And pretty soon he'll be out of my house and stop making videos on my front porch down in Georgia as well. Glory to the king. You said glory to the king after saying he'll be out of my house in Georgia and doing videos. This is bad. That's not, that shouldn't be said. That shouldn't be said in public like that. The people are looking at that. That looks bad. That looked very bad. That don't sound right. I would feel some type of way if I'm hearing that. Anybody that's in this truth would feel some type of way. They'll be like, yo, wait a minute. It sounds like it's over property. It sounds like it's over money. And then it got some ego mixed in. It's like, it's just bad all around, man. I just don't like what I'm seeing because like I said, you got a lot of people in this truth that we send over there to subscribe and support. And to see this type of stuff going on, man, is disappointing. This is very, very disappointing right now. And my hope is that they're able to resolve these issues behind the scenes and um, get this thing sorted. Because if, if, if they're divided, then what this proves is that Israelites are fake. That's all that proves. It's going to give me something to talk about now. That this is not just, oh, the Christian church. No, the Israelite church too. Again, I'm no respecter of persons when it comes to judgment. So... That mean I would now have to start um, exposing Israelites now and holding them to the fire because they're doing the same thing the Christian church do. When they have issues, they just divide, separate, go their own way. This can't be happening if we rep in the most high. If we're supposed to be an example to these people, this is not supposed to be happening. You know? It's like you could be disappointed right now but somebody got to clear the air and get this thing back together. Somebody got to clean the air up, do what they got to do. Because it ain't cool. Let's go. It wasn't me. Uh, like I said before, most people don't know how Listen. coordinations come about here at Straightway. I don't know how they do it everywhere else, but here at Straightway, we have to get witnesses. Uh, we have to get witnesses from the Most High Yah to be able to confirm it in the hearts of, of at least two elders. 
Did you hear what he just said? So how come that's not being done when it comes to the trial of Pastor Rufus or whatever he's being accused of or whatever he did? Because I don't know what he did. So if, if you know that there got to be two or three witnesses according to the scriptures, then why that's not being done? Again, all I'm doing is using words of these men to hold them accountable so that they can reflect and look at this and say, well, wow, man, this is crazy, man. How, how in the world are you able to edit that video so well and got all those video clips? Because I'm, I'm, this is what I do. This is what I do. And not only what I do, what the most high leads me to. I didn't go search for none of those videos. Did you know that? All I did is clicked with a search, like one search. I just typed past the dial and I just got a list of videos and each video I clicked on was just what I needed. That's the most high leading me because what he's wanting me to do is show the video evidence so that not only past the dial can hear himself, but past the Rufus can hear him say these things too. And it's like, wow, this is the most high trying to get us to reconcile. He's using Ringo TV. Yo, this is crazy. But, hey, it's their decision. Let's go. Um, and then even at that we have a time or evaluation, I had it in my heart over a year and a half, two years ago. But I didn't move on it. Can't move on it. And he's talking about ordaining him as a pastor. Let's go. I mean, I, don't, I mean, if the... The law itself establishes out of the mouth of two or more witnesses, let every word be established. That's what we got to live by. That's how you know it, y'all. So without us communicating with each other, we get a witness and then we speak about it. That's how it comes about. So when Jeremiah 3.15, it says, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart. See, the, every good and perfect gift comes from above. It is Yah that is the one that is given the shepherd, given shepherds. Um, so I will give you shepherds according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And we definitely can see that he, he has those qualities about him. Um, he's a wise man, um, extremely loving man. Um, you heard him when he was an elder. I ain't leaving the 99 to go after one. I ain't no pastor. So... <laughs> Hey, that's the end of that. <laughs> hey, anyone that has ever been subscribed to uh, Pastor Rufus Carswell, I need y'all to go ahead and unsubscribe so you don't put and continue to keep putting all that junk and that mess in your hearts, all right? He says words like that. I'm sure he's, he's meant that in part at times and stuff like that, but when you watch his footprint and his action, the, the words betray him. The words really, truly betray him. Um, so the most high y'all, uh, people call it an elevation. It is a, a, a calling, but it's a calling showing that you're more submissive than anybody in Israel. You're more obedient than anybody in Israel. And of course, uh, he doesn't feel it right now because he's at the feast. It'll slowly start coming upon him, um, the weight of it. Because every time that you get ordained, the, the responsibility increases. Um, the weight of the ministry increases even more so. And y'all just continues to keep piling you up because he knows that your shoulders is equipped to be able to carry the load. Hallelujah. So I bless, I bless my pastor, my brother, my friend. Love him. Bless my pastor, my brother, my friend. Love him. Bless my pastor, my brother, my friend. Love him. Hey, anyone that has ever been subscribed to uh, Pastor Rufus Carswell, I need y'all to go ahead and unsubscribe so you don't put and continue to keep putting all that junk and that mess in your hearts, all right? Nah, I don't think you, I don't think you believe what you're saying. From one mouth, you said you love him. That's what you said. The receipts don't lie in the court of public opinion. You said you love this man. So you cannot tell the people to go unsubscribe from a man in whom you said you love. That's a contradiction. That's a problem. You spoke highly of this man. 
So why would you tell the congregation to unsubscribe from a man that you spoke so highly of? Obviously, some emotions, some ego got in the way, and it may take this particular stream that I'm doing right now to really bring these men together where they can reconcile because I'm taking time out of my situation to do this video. And I didn't even want to do this video, but I have to. I would be a hypocrite if I didn't. I would be a hypocrite to talk about all these other pastors, but oh, when it comes to Pastor Dow, uh oh, no, you can't say nothing now. No, I'm no respecter of persons. I'm going to say what needs to be said. Let's get back to the tapes. Well, here's one more thing. <clears throat> Pastor, how many times I've rebuked you? I cannot count them. Scolded you. Cannot count them. Made you feel like that. Cannot count. Everybody go, we, we don't never see it. You wasn't around. Um, to the moderator, block Vern. Block that person because they're saying that spoke highly, now dragon. I'm not dragging past the Dow. I'm speaking truth. That's what I'm doing. I'm speaking truth to power. You're here because that's what you want. What you want is to hear someone drag him. That's not what I'm doing. I never disrespected nobody. And nobody's above reproach. Doesn't matter if you're a pastor. Doesn't matter who you are. None of that stuff means anything when it comes to truth. If you're a pastor, you can hear somebody speak the truth. You can be rebuked even if you're a pastor. Who told you that if you're a pastor, you're above everything, nobody could talk to you? So if you're wrong, nobody could say you're wrong? This is why I'm not a part of nobody's church. Because when I was and I tried to correct the pastors and the people in whom I was following before, there was no opportunity for me to correct or say anything. They looked down on me like I'm not even supposed to speak. Who, who is he to tell me nothing? That's how it was. I said, OK, cool. I'm leaving. Because if I, if, as a man, if I cannot tell you nothing, then that means you believe you're above reproach. You're above criticism. Nobody could tell you nothing. That's a dangerous place to be in. You know? Let's go. When a man can receive correction, it Listen. makes him a greater man. He said, when a man can receive correction, it makes him a greater man. This is what my video is. My video is correction. My video is to show Pastor Dow his words so that he can look at this situation and think and say, wow, you know what? I got to really reconsider how I handle the situation. I could have did this a better way. Um, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm wrong. I, I should have never did that. I should have never said that. I was, I was, you know, a little angry. I was in my feelings, whatever the case is. My ego got in the way. I, I, I yeah, I should have handled this a better way. You're right. You're right. That's what this is for. You know? Let's get back to the tapes. Find out what's going on. Let's go. He's at the point now, I don't even have to rebuke him. Ain't that the way we should all be striving? Yeah. To get to the point where we're unrebukable? We should be living life in such a manner that we're unrebukable. Is that correct? Because corrections and reproofs are the way of life. The way of life. So he became the man that he is today. Not because he came in perfect, none of us did. Because he was able to receive correction and instruction and then implement it and grow from it. That's the part we don't never hear, but it needed to be said. 
Hey, anyone that has ever been subscribed to uh, Pastor Rupert's Carswell, I need y'all to go ahead and unsubscribe so you don't put and continue to keep putting all that junk and that mess in your hearts, all right? The reason we're doing this live. Hold on a second. Let me see what y'all saying. Um... Hold on. Bro, I think they were talking about Pastor Dow and Pastor Rufus. Ringo, I think he talking about Pastor Dow dragging Pastor Rufus. That's two witnesses, right? You have two men that just corrected me. So to the moderator... Unblock Vern. I have to humble myself. That means that I was wrong. That mean I was quick to judgment. And I blocked Vern because his comment came off like he was accusing me of dragging past the dial. But notice, men... In the chat said, hold on, Ringo. Whoa. Reconsider this. But notice, I didn't stay in my ego. I didn't stay in my pride. What did I do? So to the moderators, make sure you unblock Vern. And Vern, if you're watching, I apologize. My bad. It looked like you were talking to me. Now, I don't know if you were or not. So I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt because some people called me out in the chat, held me accountable, and told me to reconsider. That's all. So, hey, if you're still there, come back into the chat so that we can see if you're still there. Because I, I scrolled up to look at some of your previous comments, and I saw you were speaking with the moderators. And that's what made me notice something. You spoke with Shoshow, you spoke with Tracy. So, nonetheless, whether you come back or not, I did what was right. That's all that matters. My hands are clean. Right? Okay, so he came back. He said, thank you, sir. And to the person who spoke up for me, I'm still here. Okay, so I'm glad you're still here. My bad. Again, I apologize. Um, I was too quick to judge. You see how that... Do you see how this works? Do you, are you seeing how this thing is... Ha are you seeing how this is playing out in real time? I didn't make nothing, none of this stuff up. What I'm showing you is I listened to what... I read what he wrote, and I took it as if though he was saying it to me. Do you see how that misunderstanding can make you make a decision. But if it wasn't for the other guys in the chat to say, Ringo, I think that, see, they, remember, I'm streaming, so I'm talking about a topic. They're not streaming. They're listening. They reading too. So they're like, whoa, Ringo, wait a minute. You made a mistake. So now if I don't correct that, guess what the people in the chat going to say? Ringo think he's above everybody. Ringo's a bully. Ringo's a diss. No, I'm none of those things. I can listen and I can apologize. And if I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong and I'll try my best to correct it. So if anything, that was a clean example from the most high bringing a situation right on the chat just so that y'all can see how I can make a bad judgment call repent in front of everybody and restore order. Can that happen between Pastor Dow and Pastor Rufus? Could that happen? To justice reign, your question is going to make me block you. Because now you're being an a-hole. 
because you're asking a dumb question about what was the reason for blocking me though what do you mean what was the reason for blocking you though so you're telling me that you're Vern like what's the matter with this person are, are y'all not seeing this madness <laughs> this is crazy man Why is this Justice Rain, whoever said he was blocked for the past seven minutes? And he's accusing me of doing that. So you're accusing me of blocking you. You got multiple moderators in here and you're accusing me of blocking you. You wanted me to show you what it looks like when you're blocked? Let me show you what it looks like when you're blocked. This is what it looks like. Now you are blocked. Permanently. Now you're blocked. Now it's blocked. Now you're blocked. Now let me do this now. This is what it looks like when you're blocked. Because I don't got no time for this foolishness. Here I am showing you examples, and you got somebody here crying for attention. What about me? I was blocked for seven minutes. Fam, if you were blocked, you wouldn't be here commenting. Right? You wouldn't be here. If you were blocked by me, you would not be here. Check this out, y'all. What that says right there. Messages deleted by Ringo TV reactions. I'm the one who just blocked him now. You see that? I'm the one who just got rid of him now. And you're going to remain blocked. Because I never blocked you. Now I did. Whatever issues you were having previously had nothing to do with me. But because you accused me falsely, now you got judged. Let's get back to the tapes. Right now. Uh, it's because a lot of you. Oh, this particular video here is uh, Pastor Rufus. Um, pretty much, I didn't. I actually saw this video last, right? Um, I kind of sped it up a little bit. So if you notice that he's speaking a little faster, it's because I sped it up due, due to time constraints and whatnot. So um, he's literally talking about the situation. Um, the other gentleman on his right, um, I can't recall the name. You're going to get the name as he go. But uh, he has more knowledge about whatever transpired. And um, he made a judgment call as well due to some things that he didn't like that didn't sit well with him based on the truth. In other words, he didn't want to have no blood on his hands, if, if that makes sense. Right. So by me seeing these witnesses, it, it speaks volumes. You cannot. Listen, when it comes to witnesses and testimonies, you take all of this stuff serious. Everything is serious. When you do court. And you have court, it got to be done according to the word. Simple as that. Right? So let's listen to what they got to say. I've seen the name change on my thing. Uh, it's no longer saying straightway. People are already sending messages and asking what's going on. He changed his name because I remember his, his name had straightway in his name. And because of this division, it caused um, him to have to change his name, which is sad. You know, that's sad. So I don't know how they're going to work this situation out, man. But I want to make sure that the people is able to hear his testimony. Um, 
All I've heard from Pastor Dow's side is him telling everybody to unsubscribe from the man. You know what I mean? And a, a couple of other things about property and who name is on what. That's all we got. I haven't heard what this man have done. What was his crime? What did he do? I haven't heard that. What was his crime? And where is the trial of what took place? And shout out to New Breed. I see you in the building. Let's get back to the tapes. Let's go. Um, I want the record to be clear. It's been said that I left straightway. That's not true. Um, I'm sure Pastor Dial or whatever leadership um, responds or whatever will say that my actions caused me to leave, but I did not leave straightway. Um, I was told about some meetings and I gave straightway options. I didn't avoid the meeting. I gave them options. Um, I'm trying to be kind of brief because I don't want to go too deep into details. Um, I'm going to say this. Did I do everything in this process right? Probably not. Um, I do know this, though. My intent was pure. The love in my heart was pure. I still love Pastor Dow. I still love Straightway and all the saints there. I did not leave Straightway. I didn't. I believe we were put out. And I actually got a notice. Well, not a notice, but a call from Pastor Dow telling me I need to leave. Now, the way this is set up is a portion of this land is still in Pastor Dow's name. He says it's in the foundation, but it's not. I checked. It's still in his personal name. There are other pieces of our land. Y'all know we bought different plots around here in Georgia. They're in my name or our foundation. So we're hearing a lot of about property and land and whose name is in what. That type of stuff. Listen, if, if this have anything to do with land and, and whose name is in what, then, man, this is just sad, man. This is sad. But let's hear, let's hear him explain the story. Let's go. I don't want to interrupt. So I'm going to have to get off of technically his property, even though we built this up for 13 years. We moved here, or 11 years. We moved here in 2013. Everything here, the Saints did. Straightway helped us immensely get started. They put a home here. Now, the land was $5,500. We had that in savings with Straightway. So I consider Straightway Georgia paying for the land. Pastor Dowden provided a trailer and the materials to build that trailer up, right? Big trailer. And we're very grateful for what Straightway did for us back then. Um, they initially had to me about a $50,000 investment in this place. Maybe a little less than that in my opinion, but that's what the number I got. So when all this went down, I made an offer to him to give him that back so we can keep it and he declined it. He's gonna say a lot of stuff about me, a lot of accusations. They are what they are. I think my fruit will speak for me. I got Elder Crago here because there's gonna be a narrative spent that I'm a viper and I bit this man and he uh, is a victim of what I've done. So I want him to tell you why he did what he did so that you can hear it from the horse's mouth. Um, I know everything I did in this situation was out of love. The word I had in my heart was restoration, okay? Restoration. That's all I wanted for my brother, which is Pastor Dow, for his family, Derek Straightway, for Israel as a whole, because we're all I saw us all hurting. I did. That's another thing that that I feel too. Again, this is what happens when the people don't know what really is going on. And I don't want to be falsely accused of, well, you know, you speaking on an issue and you don't know what's going on. That's not my responsibility. That's the responsibility of leadership to make the public know what is going on. Because if the people don't know what's going on, but yet they're being told unsubscribe from this one and unsubscribe from that one. The people need to know what's going on, you know, and no one could assume that we all know what's going on. You know, some people are saying people talking about it on Patreon. I don't follow all of that type of stuff. I don't do that. I'm I'm busy. So I'm not hunting on Patreon to see. Let me see if Pastor Dow is talking about him on Patreon. I don't do that. You get what I'm saying? I'm looking at what's going on in the public. Whatever these men got going on behind the scenes, that's their business. But if there's an issue and the people need to know about it, it's up to the pastors to put the info out there in the public so that the people can decide what they want to believe. You know what I mean? It's up to the people to decide what they want to believe. 
It's like if somebody on YouTube is talking a bunch of garbage about me and you just listen to a one side, listening to some bochinche, some gossip and hearsay, and you believe it, then you're a fool. Because if you didn't hear my side, if you didn't hear my testimony and you already judged me and you didn't hear nothing I had to say, you didn't know what's going on, then that's wrong. You can't judge and condemn me and you didn't even hear my testimony. But now if you hear my testimony and they come to find out that I'm not even wrong, it's going to put you in a position that way you're going to have to apologize to me. Or because you might be so proud and arrogant, you don't want to apologize. And there's a lot of people like that. You know? Let's get back to the tape. I had no ill will. I still don't have it. I had no offense. I still don't have it. I had no malice. I still don't have it. Um, if you'd have been here today, guess what? I had Pastor Dow playing in the multi-purpose building like we do every week. And there were saints here to enjoy the service. I don't want to go into the deep details on my end. That'll come out later if need be. What I want in this is Elder to tell y'all why. And this is why I want Elder to tell it. I actually was only involved in two meetings, y'all. One up in Wisconsin on a Thursday and one last Sunday at Straightway. That's it. Elder, on the other hand, like I got about 10 hours in. Elder got about 80 and I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> He's been through the gauntlet with this. He's seen the behind the scenes stuff that I didn't get to see that was planned and plotted against me. So I want him to tell y'all why he made the decision that he made. I'm going to let him tell you what his decision is, why he did it, and what he experienced. Elder Craig, So I'm the head of uh, was Straightway Cleveland, and I removed myself of straight, our property being Straightway Cleveland yesterday because we was having an ecclesiastical council has been going on this week, and I'm not going to get the timeline right. It's been a very long week. Uh, yeah, but it was this week. We had a meeting last first day at Straightway, and Pastor Rufus was there. Then afterwards, we kind of... We are going to leave, right? Yeah, we was going to leave. We was actually moving the car around on trailer and stuff, and then we all got a text. Hey, we didn't come up with the punishment. And uh, so we all went back in the elders and the pastors that was there. Pastor Dow was not there. He was down at the, I'm assuming his house. And we was talking, and then there was new evidence come out about a... Uh, brothers meeting that Pastor Rufus had had and so they shared it with us and we never let him say his part of it and we went forward with the Zoom meeting and there was a lot of accusations there was a lot of they were saying sins I'm sorry to cut you off no, you got to fill in the gap because everybody's not going to understand that he said that they never let me hear it. So they introduced new information, yes. never told it to me. That's correct. And the Zoom meeting was a few days later. That's correct. It was not on the same day. But they went forward with new information that I never was privy to, right? Or I could respond to. And then they had a Zoom meeting, assumably about what punishment is going to be for me. That's correct. All right. So based on what we're hearing, there was a meeting. Um, he didn't get that, that memo of the meeting on what was said. They were supposed to have like, a judgment on, I guess, due to whatever he did, say, okay, this is the punishment for whatever the case is. And based on what I'm hearing from the video, they couldn't come to an agreement. You know, like how when you're on real trial, what they call that? Is that called like, uh, what is that called? A hung jury? Or I'm not sure exactly what that's called. Maybe y'all can fill in the blanks, but. If, if y'all can't come into an agreement, then we can't even continue trial. You know? Well, let's go. And so we was talking about that, and then we never gave him a chance to respond. So we kept we, could, we couldn't come to an agreement. He We did come up with, I agreed he was presumptuous. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Mm -hmm. For what happened. He, he seen a spirit on his brother and assumed he had, or presumed, he had the right to try to help him and uh, at the leadership meeting in Green Bay. So that didn't work out as like we thought. So it, we came up with, a, uh, he got charged with supposedly sins when I, I didn't see any sins. Now they was some of the men that did, but we did not all agree by no means. And so they asked what the punishment should be. We all gave our ideals and this was not took very this was not took lightly at all and then pastor dow come up with what he thought should happen 
we still did not agree, agree on that and we was going to move a next zoom meeting to sixth day elder mitchell called pastor rufus to inform him that we was going to come to straightway georgia to give the judgment but now we have not agreed on one at that time and because of the pastor rufus calling two of the pastors wicked by their actions he refused to let them come on the property the property that is in his name and not straightway truth ministries names or charles dow's name he refused to let them but that the reason it was not in the foundation's name is because it was bought before the foundation was started and this hadn't changed over uh so i had called pastor rufus after pastor i'm sorry elder mitchell had talked to him and he told him and he said the same thing as elder mitchell told me he said and uh so then a video came out and they disbanded straightway georgia i'm sorry they didn't pastor dow did pastor dow overrode the ecclesiastical system and did it on his own i was muted um he just said that pastor dow overrid or like bypassed some principles that should have been followed that's a serious charge and what the gentleman is basically saying is look being that he and this is alleged because they're given their side so he felt that look i'm not gonna go on with this because something wasn't done that should have been done so i'm gonna step back until this thing gets sorted that's what it looks like to me so that was on fifth day mm -hmm. we had the zoom meeting on sixth day and when it started i i just couldn't do it they started talking and i said i can't and, and i interrupted them and stopped it and i said i am no longer going to be considered and i'm not going to remember it word for word they've got the they've got the audio the recording so i'm not going to remember it word for word but i said uh i'm not going to be straightway cleveland anymore i can't follow unrighteousness we overrode the ecclesiastical system and did not treat this man fairly wow now these listen this is why i got to do this particular live stream because based on the testimony the witness the elder said we did not treat this man fairly now, those are serious serious things right there man because if if the if if pastor rufus was not treated fairly it would be wrong for this man to be judged in the manner that he's being judged publicly because it can mess up one's reputation um it can make people look at him like like he's a horrible person all of a sudden people start turning against him i don't do stuff like that man i want to hear both sides i want to know because based on the testimony of the tapes he even said, and I'm referring to uh, Pastor Rufus, he even said, if I'm guilty of something, then, hey, it is what it is. You know, like, I guess I'll accept my my uh, my judgment. You know, he seemed to be very transparent. He seems to be, you know, he, he ain't afraid to step into the light and, and expose his deeds. You know how the Bible says, um... People who hate the light, they don't want to step into it because their deeds will be made manifest. That they're they're wicked. So they avoid accountability. He don't seem to be the kind of guy that wanna avoid accountability. He's like he's willing to step into the into the the light and and be judged and and you know for public scrutiny. He don't he don't have a problem with it. So it's almost based on what I'm hearing now. Based on what I'm hearing, it's almost as if though it comes in as if though Pastor Dow avoided proper procedure and went straight to guilty. That's how it's looking in the court of public opinion. Again, all of this stuff, 
supposed to be handled behind the scenes. It's in my domain now. This is my world. Now it's in the world of YouTube. And I'm going to do what I do best when it comes to content like this. Because the people are going to want to know what's going on. Some of y'all watching the stream, y'all still don't know what's going on because y'all not paying attention. You would have had to been here from the beginning so we could run through everything the way we did. Those who've been following the stream thus far, you're in the now. You know what's going on. Let's go. And that is my belief. And I removed myself from straightway. I've been getting texts and phone calls about and and then the saints that are with me, they have a choice. They can do whatever they choose to do. I'm fine with that. But I know I don't want blood of anybody on my hands for something that was done unrighteously. And I, have I learned a lot and grown since coming straightway? Most definitely. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Do I have the utmost respect for Pastor Dow and the teachings he does? Most definitely. Do I love him? Most definitely. I have no ill will at any of straightway or the saints. I'm not part of straightway ministries, and I'm still sending a, a sister up her needs a vehicle, and I'm sending it up there to her because I still have love for the saints. Now, this I share the same sentiments. I got a lot of respect for Pastor Dow. You know? You never hear me speak negative of this man. Never. At the same time, in this situation here, it needs to be addressed. This cannot go under the rug. This is in the public. Everybody's seeing this. People are asking questions. And there's a lot of people that follow Pastor Rufus. And they're like, hold on, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute now. We know who this guy is. He ain't, he ain't somebody that's new. I mean, wasn't it just in October he was ordained pastor? What happened to that? How could a man be ordained pastor and y'all all agreed and said, this is what y'all wanted? The Most High wanted this. How how it goes from ordaining a man as pastor to now you need to unsubscribe. He ain't no good. Nah. Because what this says is, are you telling me that the Most High made a mistake? I don't think the Most High made a mistake. Sounds like there's a personal issue. Things probably got carried away. Okay. People make mistakes. People make bad judgment calls. What one has to do is humble oneself and say, you know what? Even if I'm a pastor, even if I do this and that, I can still recognize if I'm in error. Because when the people can see that the man of the Most High is able to look at himself and make the proper judgment calls, it's going to only make the church or the ministry stronger because it's like, wow, he took accountability. You get what I'm saying? And again, I'm not trying to make it seem as if though we just saying uh, Pastor Dow need to take accountability because I don't know all the intricate details of what Pastor Rufus did. I don't know all of it. You understand? We get bits and pieces, but we don't know the severity of what was done because it seemed like it was something serious, very serious. They could they they having meetings about this? They having trial court. So it must be something serious. Right? But we know this man didn't murder nobody. So is it about money? Is it about pride? Is it about ego? Um is it about land being in somebody's name? Is it about jealousy, envy, a power struggle? Uh, you know, it got to be about one of those things. Let's get back to the tapes. But I cannot follow unrighteousness. And when I look at it, them overriding the ecclesiastical system was unrighteous. So he said he override the ecclesiastical system. This is a witness and they're in agreement of understanding that some steps weren't followed. That needs to be addressed. <laughs> that needs to be addressed. You cannot ignore that. 
because you're going to have a bunch of people speaking negative of Pastor Rufus unjustly. And I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Elder, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Elder. Um, vouch for this. The way straightway has been since I've been there in 2011, uh, the Ecclesiastical Council, first thing is only people that have knowledge of the situation are the people that are involved in the council. If they bring in someone else, it's because they feel like they have wisdom or knowledge or expertise in that area and they can contribute. That's what's been the standard of straightway. And then the next thing has been when we in that, it has to be unanimous. It cannot be majority rule. It has to be unanimous that everybody's in that council has to agree or there's no judgment levy. Is that true or not? Elder? That's the way I understand it. Yes, sir. All right. Wow. So in this proceedings, were there people added to this ecclesiastical council that had no teeth in the game? And if it was, who were they added by? Uh, yes, there was. And they was added by Pastor Dow. Can you tell, tell people that are listening how many people were added? that didn't have any teeth in this game. Three. Are you listening to that? They're, they're, he's breaking it down. <clears throat> in other words, if they didn't have no teeth in the game, meaning they're not even a part of this thing, they're not even a part of what happened. They don't even know. They don't even have knowledge. Why are they even there? You get what I'm saying? Because if, if they're saying Pastor Dow brought in those three, then that's not good because... They could have already done been coerced. You get what I mean? Into siding with him automatically. That's bad. It can't be. Like you, it goes back to what Proverbs 24, 23 says. You know, you cannot have respect of persons in judgment. I cannot bring three people in that don't even know what's going on, but they're going to rock with me either way because I'm Ringo TV. So they're going to rock with me regardless so that we could judge you that's wrong and that happens every day in court in the real courtrooms oh they definitely listen a lot of y'all think when they have the jury that the jury is not biased the jury is already bought and paid for the jury is bought and paid for their job is to crucify you and there's a lot of men that are in prison serving hard time because it was an unjust trial. And if we are supposed to be men of the Lord, righteous people, we need to have a better understanding of having trial. If if uh, uh, if Pastor Rufus was guilty of something and he's owning up to whatever it was and he's looking for a fair trial, then have fair trial. That's it. He seems to be a stand-up guy that's willing to take whatever you know, the judgment is, but to banish him from the congregation? That's, that's, that's very harsh, man. To banish him from the congregation? Like, what did you do? I would hate to know I'm a part of the ministry and it's like I'm banished from the, from the fellowship. That would hurt me. That's crazy. I, I just don't like it because it's like we all claim we rep the most high, but we're divided. So it's like, why are we even following the Bible for? Let's just go sin. <laughs> Makes no sense. It's going to discourage people from following the most high. Let's get back to the tape. See what's happening. All added by Pastor Dow. I requested for all leadership, pastors, elders, deacons and teachers to be allowed to come now if they decide to come because of distance or not and all that great if they don't i mean great if they come come but at least give them the option to come i have proof text messages where i sent pastor dow saying to him look let's let them decide pastor dow you tell your side i'll tell my side let them decide and guess what i'll submit myself if they all agree then i'm this man that you are painting to be this devil this wolf this wolf in sheep's clothing this 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 vagabond this uh what do you call me you call me everything brother I listen with the way pastor rufus is explaining himself here i am 100 certain that the majority of people that are viewing this live stream you can see that his spirit is in the right place i can see it 
His spirit appears to be in the right place as if though he's transparent, he's willing to be an open book, and he's ready to face whatever he got to face. That's that's clear as day. I am worse than worse. There's no salvation for me. You've used Esau. You've used uh, 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 King Saul, Cordatham and Abiram, Diopatris, Absalom. I'm all of these. All these men in and death. There's no restoration for me through your words, Pastor Dow. So I said, if all these men will agree to that, I'll leave straightway. Because I'm not going to be responsible for straightway splitting. I'll leave. No videos. No fanfare. No nothing. Well, I'm doing a video. Why? Because it didn't happen like that. It was a crap show from the beginning of it. Tell, tell, tell the people what you told me. What did it feel like to you? Why you went through it. Now, mind you, he got four or five times more hours with them than I do. Because I only went to two meetings. The first meeting was, what, 45 minutes? The one that Pastor Dow walked out of in Wisconsin? And then the other one was four hours. That's all I got. See, we don't. We don't know nothing about these meetings, but he just said a one where Pastor Dow walked out of the meeting. You know, normally when people walked out of walk out of a meeting, they're upset. So, again, all of these different things, it shouldn't even be in public. But being that the circumstances is the way it is, it got to go into the public now. It got to go into the public so for, for, for us to know what's happening so that we could decide what we want to believe. You know, and again, I, I didn't catch the uh, the gentleman's name. I know he's an elder. Um, he seems to be uh, a guy that stands on principle. Just his demeanor sitting down, I can tell that he's a principled man where he's like, he know something ain't right. He looked like one of them type of guys that he's not going to just go with the flow. He's going to stand firm on what he believes to be true because he don't want no blood on his hands when it comes to another man getting judged. And we're doing all of this in front of the most high. It's crazy, man. Let's get back to the tape. That's it. Well, what did it feel like to you? Going through a divorce. It, it was that hard. No sleep. I'm trying to make sense of all of it. I'm trying to, you know, because there's charges coming against. And I'm really, I'm searching my soul. And hey, y'all, show me. Show me the wickedness. Show me the sin. And he didn't give me anything besides just being presumptuous. Wow. So where's the sin? And, and oh, go ahead. And I will. I, I I've repented to Pastor Dow the day after I did my presumptuous thing in Green Bay. Now, what they'll say is, is I dishonored and disrespected him. And some men in that room felt like I did. Some men in that room didn't, though. Some didn't. It is, it's an opinion thing. See, here's the thing. <clears throat> I'm going to say what I got to say. Listen, <clears throat> as I said, in that video clip where we saw Pastor Dow say, I I've rebuked you many times and scolded you and many times, I get correcting a man and whatnot, but this is a grown man. This ain't no child here. This is a grown, listen, Pastor Rufus is a grown man, and he is a pastor now. So this is sounding like a power struggle of who's more important. Like one of them things where it's like, well, you shouldn't be talking to me like that because I'm, I was here before you. That can't be going down. Pastor, listen, Pastor Rufus... And, and again, let me make sure you can see me. These men understand they have to respect one another. But iron sharpens iron. Sometimes you got to talk to a man real talk. Sometimes you got to talk real talk. We could do that behind the scenes. I wouldn't want to do that in front of the public, in front of everybody, because it creates a lot of nonsense. But behind the scenes, we should be able to be able to break bread and and, and sharpen iron behind the scenes as men and walk away from that respecting one another. You understand? You're grown men. There is nothing about, oh, you can't, you disrespecting me because of the way you said what you said. No. I cannot do that. We can't think like that. Like I said, and I, I, I even, 
you know, shout it out to uh, Brother Newbreed behind the scenes, you know, letting him know a couple of things. You know what I mean? That as men, we supposed to look at each other, number one, as, as men of truth, as bosses. And I got to respect these men, no matter what position I am in, in terms of this truth. I can't look at, oh, I'm up here. You're down there. You got to respect me at all times because I'm Ringo TV. Don't work like that. They don't work like that. These are men. You got to respect these men. So to me, just based on what we're seeing here, it sounds like a power struggle. It sounds like some ego is involved. Uh, you know, money. <sighs> All the things that's just not right, man. And think about this. We trying to get the people to come together. And this is what we're seeing. I, listen, like I said, I speak very highly, extremely highly of Pastor Dow. Extremely highly, man. I hate the fact that I have to do this video. I don't like it. It's the last thing I want to do. But I got to do it. I got to obey the most high. He said, do the video. Same way you talk about everybody else, Pastor, everybody. Do the video. Because it needs to be resolved. These men have built communities together, blood, sweat, and tears. The last thing you guys need to be doing is dividing. And I don't think the division is coming from the side of Pastor Rufus. I don't think it's coming from his side. I don't think it's him that just saying that I don't want to be a part of nothing. Sounds to me something personal happened. Feelings got in the way. Judgments were made. And now it's like, it's just bad. It needs to be resolved because you got men like me that are looking into this situation and it's discouraging. I don't like seeing this. Again, brother new breed, uh, some of the other elders, they, they, they getting land together. They building. And we get inspiration from looking at Pastor Dow. We get inspiration. The last thing we want to hear about is division. It's discouraging, man. Look, to all the brothers in the truth, y'all ever got a problem with me? Hey, holler at me behind the scenes. Let's chop this, let's chop this up and talk like men. Let's talk like men. You have an issue? Let's talk like men behind the scenes. Call, let's talk. Don't ever let this thing get like this, man. Because people watching, it's a bad look. Because they're going to be saying, wow, they can't even get along. They don't know how to resolve issue. I thought the Bible says this. How come they're not following the Bible? And it makes us all look bad. It makes us all look bad, man. Like I said, uh, Pastor Rufus is a good guy. I don't care what nobody say. See, nobody could persuade me and say, well, He's this, he's that. You cannot tell me that man is not a man of the most high. You can't tell me. You ordained him. Pastor Dowell, you ordained this man in front of the elders, in front of the congregation, in the church. This is what you did. Let me refresh your memory. This is what you did. Glory to the king. Yah always gives gifts, right? And every good and perfect gift come from above. Is that right? Is that right? Hallelujah, we have an elevation. Pastor Elder Rufus. <laughs> Pastor Rufus Coswell.
Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, what you're seeing is a clip, a clip from when he was ordained pastor in the church. So everybody there is greeting him and celebrating and whatnot. He didn't even know this was going to happen. See what I mean? So what happened to this? Did this go out the window? So Yah ordained this man a pastor, but now we need to unsubscribe from him because Pastor Dow has a disagreement. No. Mm -mm. There's an issue that's personal and it needs to be resolved ASAP. I'm not buying that. All day, all this. Everybody giving this man hugs. Everybody giving this man hugs, but y'all going to turn against him now? I don't want to hear nothing from nobody. If y'all going to turn against this man after this, then everybody's fake. And the public going to know. Because I'm going to make the public know. I told you, when I bring out receipts, I bring out the receipts. There's no way y'all can all come together hugging this man and, and, and giving glory and honor to the Most High Yah. And now all of a sudden, now he's a bad guy. He's a bad fruit. He's a horrible person now. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Teachers, y'all come on up to the stage. Now, the way that this happens is, is that the Most High Yah, he'll put a witness in my spirit, and then I'll uh, wait to see if he confirms it through another elder without us communicating. So if Now, he just said that Yah is confirming this. So if the Most High confirmed this through the elders and everybody else, how is it that this man has just become shunned from the congregation? Why would the Most High waste his time ordaining this man a pastor only to, to reject him? That would make no sense. So there obviously is some issues here. And it's not coming from the side of Pastor Rufus. It's not. Based on these tapes. Based on these tapes. There is no way that the issue is coming from Pastor Rufus' side, meaning he's the monster. Now, he may have admitted that he may have done some things or whatever. Again, I don't know what he did. But based on what the other elder said, who's in the video clip, oh, snap, I, I, went, I messed up the video, but it doesn't matter. Um, the other elder, he said that he did something presumptuously or something along those ways. He admits to that part. But where's the sin? Where, what, what sin did he commit? Where, where's the sin? Where is that? That's all I'm asking for. Where is that? Glory to the king. Look at this part. Let me show you. Firm, you're following. They anointing his head with oil, praying. All right, all the elders, hands laid upon. Heavenly Father, Elia, Sha, Elia, Yahweh Elohim, we bless your magnificent name for all things. And by the leading and the prompting and the power of the Ruach HaKadosh, right now, confirmed before witnesses here, we lay hands upon this shepherd that you have called and chosen. Yes, Jesus. 
We certify you right now in the name of Yahshua, the Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Lead, God coming in and going out right now in the name of Jesus. We certify and charge you about all the apostles, the prophets, and everybody that's gone before us in the house of Israel that you will walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you have been called right now in Jesus' name. Right now, we release into you a double portion of the anointing of Yah that is placed upon myself and the shepherds and the pastors and the elders that are here. Right now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 So be it. Hallelujah, Yahweh, Elohim, in Yahshua's magnificent name. Glory to the King. Thank you, Jesus. Now, again, he was ordained pastor. And those of you that are on the Ringo TV Raw channel that are viewing, we're also streaming on the Ringo TV Reactions channel where you can actually see a um, horizontal version of the stream. In other words, wide angle and you can also see the footage. So if you are on the Ringo TV uh, Raw channel, we're also on the Ringo TV Reactions channel, which is the main channel. This speaks volumes of what's going on because what it says is that he was ordained pastor. Um, all of the men that probably are sitting in a seat of judgment against him were greeting him and hugging him right here. So my thing is, how does it go from being ordained a pastor to now you're just, you're, you're just a, a bad person now? I'm trying to figure that out. How does, how does it go from that? I would hate to know that I was ordained a pastor and the next minute I'm, I'm kicked out of the church. You know, makes no sense. Let's get back to the tapes. And to the moderators, just block all the trolls when they come in here. Because I don't got no time. There's a lot of crazy demons just walking around going crazy. These people crazy. But I still repented to him the next day. Because when I was talking harsh to him, I didn't, you know, use vulgar words and all that. But it got loud like men talk. You know what I'm saying? Oh, here we go. There it go. Now, notice what he just said now. That's, I'm glad I just heard that part. We were talking men talk. Remember I said earlier that you have to have times where you talk real talk, men talk. He just said that he raised his voice. And there's nothing wrong with that. At times, sometimes you got to raise your voice. You're men, right? We're in a confined area. Ain't nobody around. What's the issue? We're men. But something must have been said. Somebody didn't like it. You, I felt like you disrespected me. You can't do that. I'm, I'm, I, got, so I got issues with you now. That's what it sounds like. Listen, when I was on the nine to five grind, I had issues with coworkers and we had that man to man talk and it got real loud to the point where you would think we fighting, but we not fighting, but we had to speak loud because I had to make my point clear so you can hear me. Cause I was, I was disappointed about a lot of things. That's what it sounds like that Pastor Dow got offended. And after getting offended, he felt some type of way. And this is all alleged because we're still speculating based off the testimony. But that's what it sounds like. He got offended. Because Rufus is basically saying, look, I spoke, got loud. You know, men talk. And I'm glad that he said men talk because that happens at times. Sometimes as men, we get loud. And people will be like, yo, calm down, calm down. It's, it's not that we fighting. I'm passionate about what I believe, and I need for you to hear me. It could be a situation where 
Pastor Rufus is, is making valid points and he's not being heard. And it's so important, he have to raise his voice. Like, look, listen to me. And by him doing that, it could be a situation where a pastor dog got offended when he shouldn't have been offended. Sometimes people need to be heard and not looked down on as if though their words don't matter. It could be one of them situations, man. It, 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 yeah, it sounds like a power struggle. That's what I'm saying. And, and this is why I don't want that to ever be with me and the brothers. I don't want, I don't want none of that mess, man. I don't like that. Shouldn't be about none of that stuff. We men, there's a goal. We're trying to accomplish a goal. So it's not about who's in power. It's about, are we following the most high? Let's focus on that. Let's focus on the most high so we could get this work done. You know, I was watching a video today where you saw um, Pastor Rufus uh, with the brethren. They building a house. They working manly work. I'm so proud of these guys, man. And this is the thing. If you guys don't know, I'm proud of you guys, man. Y'all don't know. See, while y'all having this division thing going, you got men out here looking at the blessings. We're looking at them from the slums, from the clouds, from the ghettos, and we're watching, being inspired. And then when we see this, it's discouraging. Because I'm watching the video. You see, you had, you had, uh, Rufus, he had the camera, and I think you had another brother that I guess he's new, new at the construction work. And I guess you had one senior guy, I, I guess he's showing the other two how to do the job. And they were working on something with the floors, and then they were framing some walls or something like that. And I'm watching this type of stuff, and I'm like, man, this is a blessing. So to see these guys having this type of division, man, when all this work needs to be done. Like, this is a bad thing, man. This is just bad, bad, bad. This is not good. This is not good, man. You got so many men that are watching and they're trying to follow these blueprints that you guys are laying out. This is crazy. This is wild, man. Let's get back to the tape, man. Let's get back to the tape. Like men talk. When I did that, I wasn't talking to Pastor Dow in my mind. I was talking to that spirit controlling him in my mind. Pastor Dow did this for me in 2014, where he saw a spirit on me, and he told me, I'm going to get that spirit. And guess what, y'all? He did. And I was so grateful. So grateful. But guess what I did? When he came to me about it and he exposed it, I instantly repented. That's not what happened here. And again, it's being projected now that I guess I'm, I'm a pastor. I'm his brother. I've been beside him for... 13, 14 straight years, I don't have the authority to tell him that I believe there's something going on with him. He said I should have entreated him. When I called him in December, I thought I was entreating him because I said, Pastor, I can hear it in your voice in the videos. There's something going on between us, man. What's up? Let's get this worked out. There was never one time that I ever felt like Pastor Dow wanted to get me deliverance, uh, help assist me with this spirit that he claims is on me, um, uh, any level of restoration, any level of repentance, I felt death, I felt closure, I felt separation. That's all I felt through this whole time. And I'm like, how did this get here? You just ordained me as a pastor in October. That's deep, fam. You just ordained me as a pastor. Well, Elder Rufus, even when he was brother Rufus, there's always been a man that's y'all fearing. Um, he's, 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 his character has been impeccable. Um, he really loves y'all and he really loves Israel. Uh, to me, he's been a great, a uh, great help. Uh, Y'all know how much he travels the roads. Uh, a lot of those things, he's just taking weight and taking the burden off of me. So I can be free to do other things. So I can prioritize. Okay, Pastor Dow, you hear your words. These are your words now. 
These are your words. These words came from your heart. These words came from your heart. Because you know that Pastor Rufus been very instrumental in the the ministry. He been he been loyal. And uh nobody's perfect. At the same time, something happened. So the real question is, can you look at this thing from the lens of the people and look at your own self and see, did you do everything correct? And judge your own self, not based on that you're past the dial, but judge yourself and say, well, let me see. Did I get offended? Can I admit that I was offended by something said? Or um, did Pastor Rufus not acknowledge everything that he did? Did he omit certain things that he did but he didn't confess what those things were like what exactly is really at the core of what's going on because the people are watching the people are looking at this video and when they watch this video when they watch the replay they're going to have judgments for you they're going to have judgments because they're going to look at everything and they're going to say, wow. And they're going to pick a side. The same way when you said unsubscribe from Pastor Rufus Page. By the same measure ye judge, it's going to be judged back at you. Because they're going to look at this man and they're going to say, this man don't look like he committed no crime. But to cast him out as a doe. He don't no longer belong there. And then, you know, and, and think about this. You made one of your videos unlisted. You made it unlisted for a reason because you didn't want it to be out there, the things that you said. But it's out there because you said it. And by your words, you'll be justified. And you know your words. You know the word of the most high. This is a very serious issue. That's why the Most High is making me make this video. Not to condemn, not to uh, put people on blast, because like I said, I got a lot of respect for you. Very encouraging videos, speak a lot of truth. You got brothers like me, New Breed, and other, other brothers talking about land building and all this other stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that the reason why it's happening is because we see you guys building. And it's inspiring. But when we see stuff like this, first thing we're thinking about is Dag. So maybe me and New Breed, we're going to fall out next year. Maybe that's going to happen. We're going to be fighting on YouTube now. We're going to be making videos about each other. You know, maybe maybe Rollo going to get mad at me. You know? Rollo going to end up blocking me and, and him and New Breed going to go live. And they're going to be making video reactions about me now. <laughs> See how that worked? See how I could joke about it? We're supposed to be men. Men of the Lord. Men of the Most High. The legacy that straightway have established cannot be tainted by this. You understand? Think about this, Pastor Dow. Think about this. Now, before I say what I have to say, I wish you abundant life, abundant blessings. 
I'm talking about you living all the way into the hundreds, 120 years. You know what I mean? But I want you to think about this. Who's going to be your successor? Who will be your successor if something were to happen to you? Most high forbid. Who will be your successor? Who is someone in whom you know is going to carry the torch? Come on now. Because the way you spoke of this man, I can tell that you know that you see yourself in him. You see yourself in him. And we already know you you great in your own right. We already know that already. You don't got to prove nothing to nobody. <laughs> you don't got to prove nothing to nobody. But at the same time, you said that you love this man. And when you said that, I felt that. I felt that you spoke the truth. And you knew you were making the right decision. If you got offended, clear the air. Call up a meeting between you, Pastor Rufus, the elders, even the other elder that's in the, uh, the video clip that we were looking at earlier. Have him there too because I think he said he can no longer be straightway. I forgot which state he's in, but all of y'all need to, to reconcile. Everybody need to reconcile because this is not healthy. This is not good. This is bad. How you have? How could y'all have a service when there's when there's blood on everybody's hands? I would, I would feel bad. I would feel bad lifting my hands to the most high, praising and worshiping, and I got issues with a brother. I, I can't even make content if I have an issue. I'll feel like an idiot. This is one, this, listen, this is the best video I have ever made in my life. This video stream here, this is the best stream I have ever made in my life. I know it is. All I'm trying to say is this. The people are falling and the people are being discouraged and they're leaving. I'm, I literally seen people in the comments saying, who do I have to follow? Do I follow Pastor Rufus or do I follow Pastor Dow? Because he said to unsubscribe. So who do I go? That's crazy. Nobody should be put in a position where they got to pick and choose who they going to follow. Let's get back to the tape. Um things that I need to do. Um, it's always been extremely reliable. Mm. Uh, I think what I love about him is the, what we talked about before we went live here. He's been a, an example uh, of the way that a household should run. Uh, the way a man should run in his house and his household. Because uh, you can tell a lot about a man by what his issues look like. Whatever his issues look like, you can tell a lot about him as a man. And so he has um, been a pillar of strength here in Israel. He's un tirelessly counseled with many of you and helped you along the way as he himself has advanced. Um, I have no reservations about him whatsoever at all in any way, shape, fashion, or form. Um, he's just a, a really good Israelite. Just a really good Israelite. Now, I've been a, a charlatan for years. I've been policing the flock. I'm fat. I'm lazy. Um, I'm making the brothers do all the work. I'm, I'm doing all these accusations. So I say, if that's the case, 
Why did you anoint me a pastor? You said you and Elder Becker heard from the father that I was a pastor and all you men bowed all on my head and anointed me as a pastor. How did I go from being a brother to an elder? How did I go from being an elder to a chief elder? How did I go from being a chief elder to a pastor? If I've been wicked all this time and you just gave me a pass, I heard you said that you've covered sin for me or you covered for me. Maybe not sin, but you covered for me. I, I give you permission to release that, Pastor Dow. Because I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. And guess what? Tell the people. Tell the people. I'm giving you permission. Don't worry about the releasing secrets and all that stuff you're saying. Tell the people because I don't know what you're talking about. What you have covered for me. What I don't understand is why this can't be restored. Why this can't be reconciled. I don't want your position. I don't want your title. I don't want your authority. I don't want your power. I love you, brother. Listen, based off of this alone, it is very clear that Rufus is really sincerely trying to reconcile. And in the court of public opinion, we can see this. He said, I don't want your position. I don't want your power. So this, this is... This is this is really, really something that needs to be uh, hashed out behind the scenes. And he it's like you it's like R Pastor Rufus is trying to reconcile, trying, but he's being met with opposition of possibly, possibly a hardened heart on Pastor Dow's side. That's how it's looking. I'm just calling it what it is. Meaning one man is trying to reconcile, trying to get things back, but the other is like, no, uh-uh, that's how it's looking. That's bad because if a man is trying to be repentant or trying to restore and he's not being allowed that opportunity, that's bad. I would hate to know that I'm trying to repent and restore and reconcile with a brother and the brother is like, no, we're done. I don't want to hear nothing from you. That, yo, that's the worst kind of feeling you can get, man. That's bad. And again, the people are watching this. This ain't no game. Let's go. I love you. And at the end of the day, that was my intent when I came to you. Restoration was in my heart. Did I hear accusations about things going on? I did. I did. They came from reputable, reputable people. Reputable people. And I wanted to support them because, again, I want us restored. That's it. I'm not starting. Hey, for the record, y'all, I ain't starting my own ministry. I could have done. I could have done that before I came to Straightway. Because I was in the faith before I came to Straightway. I don't know why that's so offensive that I'll walk with Yah in his commandments and keeping his feasts before Straightway. I don't know why that's so offensive. But we're not starting no ministry. I'm not. I'm not looking to build off another man's work. These are the, the uh, um, accusations that's going on. I'm not. At the end of the day, I saw this. And so then I went to my brothers, Right. The day before I went to Wisconsin for the leadership meeting, I went to the brothers here on the land and them alone. And guess what I did it, y'all? I felt obligated by the Father to get them prepared. I told them every step of the way. Pastor Dow's got the recording. Tell them to play it for you. I told them every step that was going to happen from this point moving forward. And guess what? It all happened. Every single bit of it did. And I told you, um, I told them brothers, I'm obligated to y'all because y'all got wives, y'all got families, y'all got mothers that are going to want answers. And you got to be able to give them these answers. Flat out. I don't care what Pastor Dow, the spirit in him, Pastor Corey, Pastor Mir, uh, uh, Pastor uh, Elder McGill, or Elder Rob says. Now, I'm naming the people that were there, y'all, or even Elder Mitchell. I don't. Now, I know Elder Mitchell wasn't 100 in agreement. Maybe he's changed his mind now. I don't know because he ain't talked to me. He ain't talked to me. I know at one point, and you can vouch for this, he wasn't in agreement. He wasn't. I don't know if it's there now. There were other elders involved. Elder Beck was involved. He wasn't in agreement. It wasn't one person or two. It was three people that wasn't in agreement. They had been deliberating on this thing for over a week. Countless hours of Zoom calls and stuff. No, nothing had been done. Matter of fact, Elder Mitchell called me last Thursday or Thursday. I'm going to use this, you know, so y'all can understand. Fifth day. And told me. We're supposed to be having a meeting tomorrow. I said, what's that meeting about? Uh, we got to come up with a judgment. We ain't got nowhere with that. 
We ain't even coming close to, to that. We ain't got no agreement, no nothing. I said, okay. He said, but we also want to meet on first day. I said, for what? With the people. Now, you and the people. And I said, for what? He said, uh, for a judgment. I said, hold on a second, Elder Mitchell. Do you not hear this play? How are we going to meet for a judgment when y'all ain't even came up with a judgment? I said, Elder Mitchell, I'm not going to play these games with y'all, man. This has been wicked from the beginning. And nothing has been done the way y'all tells us to do it in that book. Nothing. You're trying to, pastor's trying to silence my voice. He ain't trying to have people hear me, right? I ain't really trying to get it out there like that because I'm trying to handle it in-house. I said, but Pastor Dow don't care what you, Elder Brent, and Elder Becker say. Now, he said he tried to handle it in-house, in which is a great thing. And he said that he's being silenced and Pastor Dow don't want nobody to hear his voice. Again, this is not looking good. This needs to be resolved because you have a lot of eyes on this situation now. And you have a lot of people with platforms. <laughs> that's why I'm saying that's why I made my video. Because like I said, men in this truth, we have to do the right thing. We have to do the right thing. And if you look at the other elders on the side, you could tell that this is a serious matter. The way his posture is there, I can see that this ain't no game, man. This ain't no game, y'all. Let's get back to the tape. They already have it in their heart. Now, they is Pastor Dow, Pastor Mir, Pastor Corey, uh, Elder Rob, and uh, Elder McGill. Them, them, who I'm talking about. They already had it in their heart. What was an adequate punishment for me? Now, mind y'all, they just so anointed me a pastor, right? This punishment that they had for me was give all these lands up and turn them over the straightway. That's the first thing he wanted. Give me them lands. The second thing was you can never be the leader of straightway Georgia again. These were indefinite things, y'all. Close the foundation down. Move to another community and submit yourself to someone else. Then they did some ministry things. But here's the one that really got me. Not, not able to preach indefinitely now mind you y'all know i'm not rushing to get up in the pulpit and preach and all that i've done one sermon as a pastor and one video as a pastor but if y'all gives me a position and a title how is man gonna tell me you can't do it ever again and nobody pastor Corey, pastor mir uh elder rob elder uh what's his name mcgill pastor Dow. nobody saw a problem with that listen nobody could tell me listen Nobody can tell me I can't preach. That's wrong. The man was ordained a pastor. You can't preach no more. What? I thought Yah ordained me as a pastor. Now I can't preach no more because you have a problem? No. This ain't the most high. This is you. This is crazy, man. This issue need to be resolved. This issue need to be resolved. Who are you saying needs to be careful at Wealth Shield before we pack you up? Answer my question. Because I don't know what you're talking about. We need to be careful. You need to be careful. This is my platform. Nobody can tell me what to do. Do you understand me? And nobody could ever tell me I'm not preaching no more. Nobody. I don't care who you are. How can you tell a man he can't preach no more because you have an issue with him? That's crazy. That's... <sighs> this is why I left the Christian church, y'all. This is why I left the Christian church.
No man should be telling a man he cannot preach no more. What kind of punishment is that? That's crazy. If, listen, if that was said to Pastor Rufus, that's evil. And it didn't come from the Most High. Because if the Most High ordained him as a pastor and he was had oil put on him and ordained in straightway, how are you going to take that back? That's not the Most High's doing. It's not the Most High's doing. At Sean, just pack up, um, just pack up the the wealth shield person. Just pack that person up because they they're not responding. So just 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 pack them up. We don't got time to play, you know, because they came in here talking about we got to be careful. Careful of what? Careful of what? What do you mean we? You accusing me of doing something wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. I'm just speaking my mind. You know, I don't think Sean is up to speed. He's probably like two minutes behind the live stream or something. Okay, now he just packed up that other person now. Okay, let's get back to the tapes. Do what we got to do. I thought Yah anointed me. Right. Did Pastor Dowell anoint me a pastor or did Yah anoint me a pastor? Let him tell it. He going to say he did. But that ain't what the book say. Y'all say, I give the gifts to the body. And the pastor is a gift to the body. It's a gift to the body. But it has many administrations, it says, to it has different administrations. And the one thing I know for sure, it tells us to lead by example, be an example for the people, but don't lord over them. Don't lord over them. We don't have the right to supersede these people's free will. Now, they're going to act like I'm rogue. I try to take over. I'm starting my own ministry. I've been plotting this for years. Now, here's the thing. If you knew that, Pastor Dowd, I've been plotting this for years. Why'd you let it happen? Why did you keep hearing from y'all and anointing me spiritually to go to different levels? Elder, chief elder, pastor. Make sense of that. Then they just falsely accuse me. Did, how old are you? 50 what? 57. 57 year old man. He's lived a long time, y'all. Again, he had 10 times the amount of hours with them that I did. But I've influenced him and he's in his emotions and feelings because we're friends. Well, I'm friends with them too. I thought I was. Elder, you can vouch for this. Did not Pastor Mir and Pastor Corey start bringing up in some of y'all meetings old stuff that had nothing to do with what we were dealing with? Yes. They got stuff in their heart towards me and ain't never said a word to me. But they justified it saying, yeah, that let me know you were jealous of me. You sit in this seat, so you jealous of me. You asked about my vehicle, my new vehicle. You jealous of me. You said these negative words about me. I'm going to tell you this right now. A lot of them words I said, they didn't come from me. I'm going to let y'all figure it out. They didn't really come for me. I was repeating what somebody told me. Now, I ain't going to get into the semantics of this. This video was really made so people would know the truth. I did not leave straightway. I was put out of straightway by Pastor Dow. Now, I believe Pastor Beer, Pastor Corey, Elder McGill, and Elder Rob supported him in that decision. I don't believe Elder Brent. I don't believe Elder Becker. And I don't believe Elder Mitchell 100% supported them in that. I don't believe it. Don't know where he's at with that now. Don't know. But I don't believe he 100% supported. Because guess why? When he called me that day, he told me, man, we ain't no, no, that's not that. And when I broke down for him to play, I said, bro, they already got this made up. Pastor going to do what he want to do. And if y'all don't agree tomorrow with him, he going to do what he going to do anyways. That's why you already got a meeting scheduled for a judgment. Mind you, we ain't followed nothing that the Bible said about an ecclesiastical council. He literally took the authority and did it himself. Now, I've been accused of calling Pastor Dow King of Straightway. That's a fair accusation, because I have, in different videos and stuff. Now, why would I do that? I'm putting it in people's mind, what's going on? When we're talking about making decisions with no levels of accountability, when of this level, because this level is separation, y'all. He took the fellowship away. Uh, uh, now he's, he's disbanding the thing. Th th this is trying to put someone out the faith. Listen to what he talked about last night. Let him tell it. Brown can open up. We going to hell. Me and my family, everybody associated with me going to hell. We're going to see. We're going to see.
Because I don't believe that. Because again, I don't fit Dial Patrice. I don't fit Core Datham and Abiram. That's the problem you have. You can stack it up and it sounds really, really good, Shepard. You, you can. But I don't fit those. My mindset wasn't what their mindset was. I never wanted your position. I never envied anything that you ever had. Ever. I didn't try to build no ministry off of yours. I actually duplicated what you did. That's what I did. If you look closely, I duplicated. I followed you as you followed Christ. That's what. It, listen, man. What Rufus is basically saying here is that he he duplicated because he learned and was inspired by Pastor Dow as well. This is why this is so sad because we're all looking at this. So now what we get is like a power struggle, jealousy, envy. Like this should not be. From the same mouth we bless the Most High Yah and curse men. This is crazy. Now I'm going to get back to eating my, my food. You know what I mean? Let's get back to the tape. I did. But at the end of the day, you had it in your heart with this spirit towards me to destroy me. And that's what you're trying to do now. I've heard what you said in them meetings, Pastor. You want me to feel it. You want the pain. And I know you. I've been with you 14 years. I studied you well, Pastor Dow. Why? Because I love you. 14 you years. You, to serve you. Like I did faithfully for 14 years, Pastor Dow. And this is your brother. And this is what we get. Denzel McGee gets more honor than Pastor Rufus doing your life. A damn charlatan. You gave him the whole platform at Straightway to speak to the whole congregation because he had a grievance with you. I come to you as a brother, like the book say, go to your brother if you have an all. I didn't have an all. I knew he did, but I still went to him out of respect. Go to him and him alone. I didn't call nobody else. Did you not beg me after finding out that I went to him to go back to him? I told you what? You done had. I can't do that because the book don't tell me to do that. The book say bring more. I need witnesses. I told him and Elder Mitchell, I'm not going back. I already been to him. He rejected me. I need witnesses the next time I go. And then what's the next step? We go before the assembly. That didn't happen here, y'all. Pastor Dow made these decisions because he had it in my heart, in his heart. And when I went to him on several occasions, I asked him, and I that bitter root? Nope. It's a brother in Indiana. It's a brother up here in Ohio. That story changed so many times. Never fit a timeline. It was just a flat out lie. But he actually told us in the video, he wasn't going to tell me. He said in the video in December, you got this spirit, I ain't going to tell you what it is. Now, again, he believes he's protecting the flock. He does. He really believes that, y'all. The problem is my character don't match what you're saying. And you've convinced these wicked leaders because that's what they are. Now, let me tell y'all why I say they're wicked. And I'm going to let Elder speak if he got something else to say. The reason I say they're wicked is because they know what y'all requires of us in these ecclesiastical councils. We don't add people. Pastor Mill asked me, why don't we get Pastor Corey involved? I said, he don't got no teeth in the game. He don't know nothing about this. We don't add him just because he's a pastor. If that's the case, why don't I get Elder Chris or Elder Ezekiel or, 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 or anybody that's in leadership? They don't have no teeth in the game. Just because he's a pastor, he don't get added. Guess what? Next time I talk to him, guess who was added, y'all? Pastor Corey. And he had heard from Pastor Dow and Pastor Mir. He didn't talk to me. Then these wicked pastors, because that's what they are, knew that when we was coming to this meeting last first day, we were told, elders right here to vouch, that it was going to be the same people that was in the Wisconsin meeting, which was Pastor Dow, myself, Elder Becker, Elder Brent, uh, 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 Pastor Mir, and uh, 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 who am I missing? Elder Mitchell. It was going to be those people plus Pastor Corey since they already added him. Even though he should have never been a part of this, I said, whatever, let's do it. Guess what, y'all? When I got to that meeting, guess who was there? Elder McGill and Elder Rob. Elder Rob lives with Pastor Mir. Elder McGill is part of Kansas City with Pastor Corey. You don't think they got in their ear first? You tell me what spirit you thought you saw on Elder McGill when he was talking to me. He definitely had an accusing spirit. Because <laughs> he was coming pretty hard. Yeah. Now, mind you, no real accusations against an elder. They, they spout that when I do it. But what about me? I'm actually over 50 and I'm an elder. What about me? What about me? The people are hurting, man. The people are hurting. You want to blame that on me. Guess what? This place is still open to the people. Now, we're not straightway Georgia because that's what Pastor has. That's his name. That's why I changed my name. Now, I saw the thread. But he got on there, look, look, look. The man did a video saying there's no more straightway Georgia. Am I supposed to leave my name on YouTube as straightway Georgia? I'm going to honor him. It's his name. I can't take his name from him. Him and Teacher Shane came up with that name. So I changed it to Servants of Georgia. I'm still a servant no matter what. 
he'll tell you, and they ain't in the way, they ain't serving y'all. Guess what I was doing before I met you, Pastor Dow? I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. Do we believe for reconciliation? We hope. But that spirit's on Pastor Dow. He don't care about no reconciliation with me. I am the worst thing that ever walked this earth in his eyes. And all I've done is for least the people, stole from them, made them work for me, sit around and get fat, drink coffee all day. That's what he thinks of me. Now, when we came here, we had one acre of land and one building. Now we got almost seven acres of land and 15 buildings. Y'all tell me, is that someone with zero talent? Is that someone with two talents? Or is that somebody with five talents? You make the decision. I guarantee this, none of y'all will say that's zero talent because we didn't bury it. We follow straightway. We may not be on the path or the pace that he thinks we should be on, but to sit here and say we have zero fruit, that's a lie and the truth just not in it. And that's just a natural fruit. We don't want to go to the spiritual fruit that I've added to him and his immediate family that I've added to this entire ministry. I did this in love, y'all. Now I'm getting a little amped now because it's like, man, I did this in love. I love Pastor Dow. I love the people of Straightway. He can spin it any way he want. I want you to hear the truth. He going to spin it like I, I, I made this man do what he's doing, all this stuff. We got plans to do this. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. This man did what he did because he saw the wickedness and the ungodliness of these men coming after me. I did not get a fair counsel. Now, guess what? I'm still available. Call me the straight way and have me go before the whole congregation. Have those wicked pastors up there and then have the righteous ones up there as well. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. You gave it to Denzel McGee. How come I don't get that? How, how come I don't get that? The feast coming up. All the saints will be there. I'll make myself available. Because I have nothing to hide. They're going to play videos. I mean, they're going to play videos and audio recordings. Guess what, y'all? A private meetings I was having with the brothers here, warning them of what was to come. Guess what I told my brothers, though? If you feel in your heart that Pastor Dow needs to hear what we talked about, you can send it to him. I told him that. You can send it to him. And guess what? One of them did. Every meeting we had, he has. Tell him to play it for you. Now, some of you may listen and say, man, that's too much information. I guarantee this, you won't say it was a lie, though. You won't say it was a lie because I didn't lie and I never hid anything. I've been 100 percent transparent through this whole entire thing. Why? I want restoration. I don't want separation. I don't want division in Israel. I want us to be restored. I'm not fooled. I got full spiritual discernment. This thing going on with me and Pastor Dow, it's a smoke screen. It's a smoke screen. It ain't the real deal, y'all. It ain't the real issues in straightway. And I think the most I'm going to speak because he's going to deal with us. He's going to deal with Israel and the wickedness going on in Israel. That's the real reset, Pastor Dow, I've been talking about. I didn't ask 20 brothers. What's the reset? I get 18 different answers. How come it's not? And Pastor said, I speak concrete. How is it I can ask 18 different brothers, What? Yeah, 20 different brothers, what's the reset? And none of them really know. It ain't concrete. It's BS. You would say the reset is getting rid of me. That's what you'll tell them. I'm the wicked one in the interpretation. Let y'all let y'all judge that. Because guess what? All that stuff you read off on the uh, video the other day, y'all was doing that, not man. Opening up the ground, living judgments for Moses and them. Y'all did that, not a man. Let y'all do it. Let y'all do it. Bring me before the people and let's see if the ground opens up for me. Let's see if y'all kills me. Because guess what? I'm with that. Do you know why? Because if I am that wicked man and I'm fooled and I have no idea that's me, I'd rather go to hell. I'd rather go to hell right now. What good am I? Why am I here? I don't want that. If I'm not a real true servant of the most high, y'all send me to hell right now. And you said, let's go. All right, let's go, Pastor Dow. Let's go. Call me the straight way. Put me before all the people. No, you're going to protect the saints. You're not protecting them. You're protecting you and that spirit, brother. Now, I'll say it again with passion. I love you, Pastor Dow. I love you as straight way. And I ain't stopping loving y'all. I've been a real brother to you, a real friend to you. Oh, you're telling my secrets. Quit being a liar. Quit deceiving. Quit misleading. Quit being malicious with your thoughts. Then I don't have to reveal what you call secrets because I pass it out. You know as well as I do. I have not revealed your secrets, brother. Stop it. I have not revealed your secrets, Pastor Dow. I haven't. You're not going to paint me to be this devil and not face me. Now, you don't have to. Keep doing what you're doing. Guess what? These people here that decide to be with you, they can. And guess what I told them? I ain't closing my bowels of compassion. Whatever you need from me, you're going to get. You gave me a 30-day notice. Now, mind you, this is a house. This is a land that we built up. Chicken coops on it. Greenhouses on it. We just redid the whole uh, garden with, with wider beds and all that. I got trailers on here. People living in. All this kind of stuff. You don't care. You don't care. 
I want that land. I want it now. Get out. He gave me 30 days, y'all. 30 days. That's righteous. That's righteous for your brother that served you 14 years. That's righteous. I called those men wicked because they did wicked things. Allowing these other people to come in and influence. Did he just say that? Did he just say that Pastor Dow give him 30 days to get off the land after he put in 14 years? If that be true, then the public need to know all these facts so they can make their decision on what they want to do. Because this is bad. It's bad enough we getting oppressed in the world. It's bad enough we going through all of this judgment and madness. But to serve for 14 years and then someone say, hey, you got 30 days to get your tail off of the, the land. How, how, do they, how do they even go about doing that in 30 days? This is crazy, man. And the reason why I have to do this video is because, again, I didn't want to do it. At the same time, I have to because the public need to see this and hear this. And however y'all feel about whatever side y'all want to feel whatever about, hey, it is what it is, man. Because I cannot, I cannot stop the judgment of the most high. The most high is going to do what he's going to do through this live stream and ruffle up the feathers and make people feel a type of way. I don't really care because at the end of the day, this is bad because that man has a family. I don't know his situation. I don't know how large his family is and all his responsibility, but at the end of the day, if it was told to him, you got 30 days to get off the land Cause remember in the video that we played, Pastor Dow said something along the lines of he's in Georgia, meaning Rufus is in Georgia making videos on his uh, something. I don't know that he's going to end that. So I'm like, that's crazy, man. And we supposed to be followers of the most high. Stuff like this going to end up backfiring. Stuff like this end up turning the people against you. It ruins your name. I mean, I can expect Geno Jennings to make a video about this. He's going to make a video about this. I can guarantee you he's going to make a video about this. And it's going to make people laugh. And that's the sad thing about this type of stuff. Because I'm disappointed. You know? Me and the brothers, we speak behind the scenes. And it's just like, it's just a bad look on everybody, man. It's like, it's like, dag, man. Just when you think we building and we got this. You know how many, you know how many people I, I keep telling support Pastor Dow? He got the blueprint. You know how many people I told this to? You know how many, how many people I tell? Go support him. Do this. Do that. Do that. I can't tell nobody to do that right now. And I got so much respect for Pastor Dow, but I cannot tell my audience, you know, hey, go over there. Not when this is going on. I can't. Can't. Re I'm disappointed because it's like there's a lot of things being said in these videos. And it's like. This type of stuff got to have a response like. It need to be resolved, man. This is just bad on all fronts, man. This is why I left the Christian church, because of stuff like this. And that's why I never joined any other church. And everybody always kept telling me, yo, Ringo, why you ain't a part of a congregation? Because I'm never going to be a part of a congregation. I'm never doing that. I'm never doing that again. You know why? Because of stuff like this. I've seen this happen so many times. And every time it happened and somebody fall out, everybody separate. I said, I'm never going back into that. So even if it's an Israelite community or, or church or whatever, I'm still not joining, like meaning I'm there because sometimes when you're there, 
it's almost as if though you're under whatever structure it is and if you do anything that's outside of what somebody want now they're looking at you funny i'm not going through that i'm not going through that i'll salute you from the outside salute much respect but i don't i wouldn't be a part because then if i'm a part then now i fall under that jurisdiction of whatever you got going and next minute you know oh i don't like the way you do videos or well, I don't like this, or you got to promote that. And that no, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, we're not. No, we're not doing that. I, you know what? I'm leaving. I'm leaving. That's why I don't join nothing. That's why I don't be a part of nobody's church. I'll watch from afar, learn, talk, salute. But being a part, I can't do that because of these type of situations. It's very discouraging. Some of you that are watching this stream you watched it from the beginning. You've been here since the beginning of the stream. We've been streaming now three hours and 24 minutes on two different channels. We're on the Ringo TV Raw channel, Ringo TV Reactions channel. Two separate cameras, two channels. And I had to address this issue. And I don't care who's upset. You know? So we have a lot of people that are watching. A lot of eyeballs are seeing this. <laughs> And they're going to talk about it all tomorrow. While everybody's talking about P. Diddy, I decided, you know what? I'm going to focus on what matters. Because P. Diddy's story can always be talked about. Everybody just talking about it because they're trying to get paid. They can't care less what happened to P. Diddy. You know, matter of fact, most people want P. Diddy to get in trouble just so they can make a video. You know, let's go. Wednesday minds, that is wicked. I didn't call him. I didn't do nothing outside of nothing. That is wickedness. They had no teeth in the game. They shouldn't even been talked to. They should have not been there at those meetings. Pastor Corey never should have been a part of this. Pastor, uh, 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 I mean, uh, Elder McGill and Elder Rob never should have been a part of this. So for y'all adding them, that makes you wicked and you agreed to it. Why? Because they agree with Pastor Dow. They were under that influence. They got ill will in their heart towards me because they say, you jealous of me. Where, look where you sit. You trying to block people from getting to Pastor Dow. What was I doing when I came to the ministry? Sitting next to Pastor Dow the whole damn time? I was his uh, 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 armor bearer. I was his security first before anybody got here. I have always sat next to Pastor Dow from the day I got in this ministry. I ain't blocking nobody from him. I'm bringing people to him. You've been interviewing all my brothers. Guess what? They're telling you the same thing. Talking about I sold Discord. Didn't happen. I only spoke to the brothers that live here on the land. Guess why? They needed to be prepared. They got wives and children, y'all. They got mothers to take care of. I only spoke to them because they needed to be prepared. I didn't speak to nobody else in Israel. And I want the person out there in Israel to say I'm lying. Come up. Show your face. Say, nope, you talked to me about it, Pastor Rufus. Come on up. Come on up. I kept it to the people that needed to know. These men need to know because look what it is now. Can y'all imagine last Thursday? Was it Thursday? Can you imagine me not saying nothing? You living here on this land with me for a decade. Me ain't saying a word. And then all of a sudden Thursday, a video pops up saying straightway Georgia's disbanded. It's no longer. How would you feel about me as a leader? You wouldn't be mad at me? No, those brothers deserve to know and they deserve to lead their families. I don't regret that decision one bit. They're going through that video, those audios with a fine tooth comb trying to find sin against me. And they're gonna stick though, that's the problem. Because my intent was pure. I love you, Pastor Dow. I love Straightway. And believe it or not, them wicked pastors, I still love them. They just operating in wickedness. That's why I said they're not welcome here. They didn't do this righteously. They didn't do this fair. I offered, and many, many times, get all the leaders up here. Let them hear the matter since you're bringing other people in. No, that came from Pastor Dow. But when he added people, it was because of Pastor Dow. He admitted it. Am I lying? No, he did. In the meeting, Elder Becker said what? Why are these two men here? I was told they are not going to be in here. They're supposed to be sitting in their cars. What did Pastor Dow say, Elder? Uh, I'm not going to disrespect them. Have them sitting out in the cars. I um, brought them in. Come on, man. Was we born yesterday? Them men came knowing they was going to be in that meeting. No, nope, no, nope, there's another assumption by you. Again, at the end of the day, if I'm that, guess what? I don't even want to sit in that meeting. I'm telling you, hey, I got no teeth in this. I don't want to be involved. I'd rather sit in the car. I don't want this on my hands. See, a righteous man would be like, why y'all bringing me in now? Y'all at a judgment stage and you trying to add me? No, we weren't at a judgment stage because guess what? I'll let you tell it. Were y'all able to find sin? No, they, uh, at the very first meeting, whenever you left and then they brought us back in, we couldn't find any. Then they brought the videos, and then they was so new evidence. New evidence, yeah. That never got. I never got the answer to. I, I never spoke on this new evidence, have I? No, no, you have not. 
That's fair, y'all. That's righteous. Now y'all see why I call these brothers wicked? Now y'all see why I call them wicked? Now guess what, y'all? I love the saints so much. Pastor Dow could have came to me and said, look, you're a wicked brother. I don't really want you around my people no more. Guess what I would have done? Okay. You want to break down and show me? Since you full of the scriptures, show me, Pastor, why I'm being wicked. And guess what? If he could have convinced me, I'd have left. I love y'all that much. I told them two times I would submit myself if you do this righteously. Elder Brent, did I not repent to Pastor Dow? I did. I came at Pastor Dow disrespectful or dishonorably. That's what they say in Green Bay on, on a Thursday night. We had leadership meeting on Friday. After that meeting, did I not hug Pastor Dow and repent to him? You did. Then, go fast forward up to last Sunday, last first day. I repented in front of all the leaders there to Pastor Dow again for that. Because again, that, I agree that was presumptuous now. Pastor Court, thank you, Pastor Court. Because he brought out a scripture in Sirach and it hit me hard. Like, yep, you know what? I just, I'm thinking I'm doing good. I didn't. And I received it instantly. Guess what? I even shared it with all my family. I did. But the intent of my heart, it ain't what you saying it is, Pastor Don. It ain't what you saying it is, Pastor Mir. It's not what you saying it is, Pastor Court. It's not. It's not. But I repented. Pastor said, I want to hear everybody's take on what just took place. Elder, uh, Elder Brent, did not every single leader there, besides Pastor Dow, say they thought my words that day, I had sincerity and intent. I mean, I was sincere in what I was saying. Yes. Pastor Dow had a full list, y'all, printed out. He said, bull crap. I don't believe him. He still got it in his heart. Look at him, blah, blah, blah. And he started reading this list. He had it pre-printed out, y'all. So his mind was already made up. His mind been made up since I, uh, uh, y'all, his mind been made up since I came to him in love about the videos he been making. His mind been made up. Just say you don't want to fellowship with me no more, brother. Just say that. You can have your name by all that. Just say that. The people going to decide. There, there's some that's already told me they're going back with you, Pastor Dow. I don't have no problem with that. There's some that's saying they're staying. I don't, Pastor, I ain't tripping. I don't get to dictate to people. That book tells me I don't have the right to lord over them. They belong to Yah. I just got to be an example. Don't look to me if you need an example on how to lose weight. That ain't my specialty. Okay? Not anymore. Not for 31 years it was, but not anymore. But if you want to know how to love, you want to know how to cast out spirits, uh, you want to know how to discern, you want to know how to walk in love with your brother, you want to know how to be a support to your brother, you can look to me. You can look to me. You want to know how to be loyal? Because I've been loyal to Pastor Dow, regardless of what he say. I've been loyal to him. You can look to me. I got examples of fruit in this man. Hey, you know what, y'all? Do me a big favor. It's in my videos. Go back and look at what Pastor Dow and Pastor Mir said about me in October when I got ordained a minister. It's in my page. I'll put their testimony up there. I promise you all this. I am that man that they testified about in October, not this man they tes testifying about me now. And if I am, I want them to say, tell everybody, how did it happen so fast? Because in November, I was good, Pastor Dow, when you came and got my daughter, remember? Because you married my daughter in November. We was good that whole month. December, once we left Alabama, oh boy, and Alabama was at the last week of November, because it was around what, Thanksgiving time, I think, after that. So it was the last week of November. I think I did a video December 1st, so it was ending on December 1st. That's when it went really, really haywire. That's when it went really, really haywire. Now, did Pastor Dow ever come to me and say, I got an issue with what you got going on, uh, Pastor Lucas? Nope. There's, I'll let you tell it. I'm not even going to say it. Elder Brent, have you seen in this whole process love for me, restoration for me, repentance at my door, rest, uh, any, anything that would bring us together and keep us together? Have you seen that? From Pastor Dow at any time in this in this process. No, I actually asked, "Where's the, where is the?" I don't hear restore at all. I don't hear restoration at all. I hear a hurt man, and he said, "You damn right, I'm hurt." And I never heard love, and I never, you know, I didn't hear restore at all. The building the doctrine, telling people that because of rank, you cannot do certain things. And again, I got no problem. Pastor Dow is above me, but I don't view him as a king. Even though I see different situations and decisions he's making that only kings make in the Bible, y'all. Only kings make these type of decisions. I've never seen Apostle Paul make this type of decision or Peter make this type of decision. And that's why I use that verbiage. Now, he, he going to respond to this, I'm sure. Let's see if I get the straight way and get to go before the people, though. Let's see. Because y'all have seen it. Go back and look up the video with Denzel McGee. It's still on there somewhere. He gave that man the whole floor, said, let him speak. Let him speak. Let him speak in front of the whole congregation. Now, he had some BS, but he had more honor for Denzel McGee than he does for me. And I've served him 14 years faithfully. 
I don't care what he say, faithfully. Now, a lot of y'all may think, man, he mad at Pastor Dow. No, I'm not. Y'all got to understand spiritual things. I'm not even speaking to Pastor Dow. I'm really speaking to that spirit. Same thing I was trying to do in Wisconsin. I guess it was a failed attempt. Because huh? we're here. But the same thing I was trying to do there. I actually learned that from Pastor Dow because he did it for me. And I, I'm not Pastor Dow. I don't have the authority. I don't have the power or anything. I said through this whole process. Then I tell you, I don't have the authority to judge Pastor Dow. Yep. I don't have the authority to judge straightway. But that's my brother. I love him. And if I see this, I'm not supposed to go to him. Now, if he rejects me, what am I supposed to do? Bring more. That's what I tried to do. Now, he said <clears throat> he don't have the authority to judge Pastor Dow. No man is above reproach. No man. Do you understand? No man is so. Then who judges? If you can't, then who do? Because once you start, once a man feel that they're so up, none of y'all could judge him. That's a problem. That's when it falls into dangerous territory. This is why I was exposing all the false teachers back in the day. Because a lot of them felt nobody could judge them. The Creflo Dollars, the TD Snakes, the Benny Sins. These partic those particular pastors believe that no one can question them. You question them, you're, you're, you're touching the anointing. You're touching the man of God. You better be fearful to even utter my name. I don't fear nobody. Do you understand? If the most high tell me to judge something, I'm judging. Because that's what the Bible says. It says to judge righteous judgment. It didn't say if somebody's a pastor, they're off limits. Can't say nothing to them. Because if you do, God is going to strike you down. Mm -mm. That's what the Christian church does. They try to put fear in you so that you don't speak. That don't work on me. May work on you folks out there that, you know what I mean? Y'all scared of this one. Scared. I, that don't move me. I don't care about none of that. Everybody bleeds. Everybody got to use the toilet. Ain't nothing special about everybody. Anytime a man feel that nobody could judge him, that is when it's a red flag. That is when you have to question, is that man leading the people or is he? do he want to be worshipped? Because if I'm a pastor and I'm wrong about something and the people are clearly pointing it out, I got to humble myself and recognize something wrong with me. Because sometimes you could get above yourself sometimes, start feeling yourself, and you forget that you're a servant of Yah. You're not Yah. You're a servant. We're all servants. It's just like sometimes you can have a supervisor and your supervisor think they're the boss. <laughs> you're not the boss. You're just a supervisor. You don't own the company. You don't write my checks. You got to answer to somebody too. Every pastor has to answer to somebody. Everybody must answer to somebody. When you feel you don't need to answer to nobody, that's pride. And we know what the Bible says about pride. You know? I've been rebuking, correcting, and exposing pastors, preachers for years. You understand? <sighs> Nobody could tell me that I'm wrong when I do a video about a pastor. Because when I do a video, it's the most high who's pushing me to make these videos. Because you know nobody else is able to do it. You pick anybody on social media, nobody's able to break these videos down like me. Nobody. 
because it's not me that's breaking them down. It's the most high who gives me the ability to go and do this work with special precision and care to the point that the listener will know that the most high is speaking through me. Any person that's godly and they're listening to this stream and you don't feel no conviction, you don't follow the most high. You don't. He's not in you. Because the things that I'm saying all throughout this live show is coming from the heart. So if you ain't feeling no conviction about nothing, you have no soul. This is why my work back in the day was so effective. This is why a lot of pastors, they couldn't handle this, man. Because they're like, who do you think you are? How can you say these things? All I'm doing is speaking the truth. I'm listening to the testimony. I'm weighing the evidence. And it is very clear. Like I said, I looked at this man's video. I see that this man is trying to prove his case. He want to be, he want his day in court. He want a fair trial. And that's what he deserves. A fair trial. Of, uh, uh, and, and there shouldn't be no other uh, folks in Pastor Dial's ear. That's another thing, man. If we're going to follow the Bible, let's follow it to the T. If you got somebody in your ear telling you something about another man, that person need to be rebuked sharply and told to sit down because that can influence you the wrong way. You have tail bearers, you have gossipers, they'll come, hey, you know, so-and-so, you know, he really jealous of you, you know that, right? Where you get that from? No, I'm just saying, because, you know, I'll be watching. Nah, you got you can't trust that person. By the pure fact they came to you talking like that reckless, you can't trust that person. And if he rejects them, then what? Go before the assembly. Never could get to that point. You're out of here, Pastor Rufus. You're wicked. You're the worst man ever came to this ministry. You're a charlatan. You've been stealing land from the people. You're doing all this. Guess what, y'all? That land across the street over there, it is in my name still because we bought that property before we did foundations. The land down the street where they built my new house, that's in my name. It is. Guess why? Because we bought that before we started doing foundations. But I got properties all over there too, y'all. I got several after. properties. Huh? After. At, yeah, I got several properties over there that I bought after we started foundations. And go look. They're all in the foundation. But guess what? This land I'm on right now is the original land that Pastor Dow put in his name. Go look it up. It's still in the 375 Cemetery Lane, Lyerly, Georgia. L-Y-E-R-L-Y. -E 375. I'm giving you my address. It's public record anyways. You just Google straight away, Georgia's going to come up. Go look and see who they say tax-wise owns this land. It's in Pastor Dow's name. He said everything he got is in the foundations. I can't see that. There's two plots here. Both of them are still in Pastor Dow and Mother Carol's name. There's a plot around the corner for Mama Jaja that, that he bought, right? That's still in his name, too. I thought everything was in the foundation. But I'm trying to steal from the saints? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not trying to steal from the saints. I'm glad I didn't have this in your name. Because you know why? The vindictiveness, the viciousness this spirit has towards me, y'all. Well, I'll let you say it. What did, what did he say? You you say it. He wanted, whenever he gave the demand or, or what he wanted for a judgment, he said, I don't care if he's a vagabond. I'm his brother for 14 years, serving him faithfully. What did I do that was so bad? Have a, a, a have a loud conversation with him that spurred this telling the brothers here on the land to be prepared because I see this in this spirit. Now, mind you, what I told them, everything happened. I warned them. I prepared them. This man left straightway on his own free will. He said, I can't serve this level of wickedness. That's what he said. I cannot submit to unrighteousness. He saw this process again. He got four or five times more hours than I do in this process, y'all. Because he was with these meetings, these Zoom calls, and all this stuff they were doing. And he's a... You got to describe that with the, with the witch thing. What, what, I don't know how you said the witch thing? You felt like a fireman at all? Oh, uh, yeah. The Salem witch trials. Because it was just like, hey, going to have to show it. 
right? And it wasn't. It was just want to hang him, want to burn him. No, I just, I, I, I'm all about if it's righteous, fine. Give him a punishment. Give him a judgment. But when you can't find it, don't make shit up. Again, I love Pastor Dow. I don't care what he says. I love Straightway and everybody at Straightway. I'm still that same brother, elder, chief elder, Pastor Rufus, that all y'all love. And you love me. Why? Because I loved you first. I ain't no slick talker. I'm very direct. Guess what? People ain't going around questioning that I say this, that I say that. Well, I'm speaking clear. No, you're not because nobody understands what the hell going on. You're so used to shotgun and everything, you don't know. I speak very clear, very direct. And guess what? I was transparent through this whole process, y'all. I didn't hide anything from Pastor Dow. Anything I did or said on video, anything, you can send it to him. That's what I told everybody. Send it to him. If you feel led, send it. And guess what? He got a lot of videos from private conversations I had. Never stopped the brothers from doing it. Never chastised the brothers from doing it. Now, somebody's being extremely transparent in this whole process. Somebody's hiding information. You tell me why. Somebody's trying to get us to follow this book, and somebody is avoiding this book. They're taking liberties they don't have. But guess what? It's our fault. It's our fault. Me. I'll start with me. I start calling his son. He said it last night. I'll never call my son a prince. You're right. That was me. And I was wrong for that. Just like I was wrong for saying you batting a thousand. If you notice, I ain't said that in years. Because you've been missing a whole lot lately. A whole lot lately. So you don't hear that statement coming from my mouth. But I honor you enough never to say it. I don't bring it up now because you brought it up last night. I'm a... Why are you so upset? Thought you didn't mind me asking. I don't mind you asking. I'm upset, brother, because this is supposed to be a love thing. And there's there are lives on the line here. You talking about people's livelihood. We, we, we put everything in these communities, brother. And he don't care. It's a lot of families here with, with, with multiple wives and, and multiple children and babies being born and babies on the way and all this. He don't care nothing about that. He don't. He wants me to suffer. Because, again, I'll ask anybody. Y'all can put in the comment section. Y'all can put in the chat room. We moved on this land in 2013. We've been here building this up. We as a Georgia Saints. We got a home. We got other living. We got one, two, three. We built a home for Tim here. We got a, a thing we converted for Brother Herbert here. We got this home. We got two trailers over there. One, two, three, four. We got five livable spaces just on this land for Saints. So we build more on other lands and then we can move them. He don't care about that. He said 30 days, Pastor. I sent him an offer. He got he got 50 grand. I don't even think it's that much, but he got 50 grand in it from his initial investment to help us get started. I said, I'll give you 50 grand. What did he say about this? What did he say? No. He Pardon. said, he said, offer decline is what he said. Yeah, okay. But what did he say about this uh, land when he brought it up on the meeting? When y'all uh, had y'all meeting? I'll put it for sale, uh, put it for sale sign in the front yard, and I don't care if it's worth $150,000, I'll sell it for 50 as a fire sale. I'm wicked though, y'all. He don't care nothing about what the saints here in Georgia did with this land for third for 11 years from 2013 to now. He the don't... thing about this that's sad is that, like, again, I'm hearing both sides. Um, I appreciate the fact that Pastor Rufus is sharing a lot of details for the court of public opinion. That's why I wanted trial to be held on this channel over here where the message can get out there and his voice could be heard. Because a lot of times people are not hearing it. You know, they may see something on his platform, but I want it to be out there. <clears throat> but one thing I keep hearing, I keep hearing all this talk about land. And it's like, is that what all of this is about? Like a fight for land, a fight for, you know, for money, land, um, disagreements because somebody got offended. Like, all of this stuff here could be resolved, man. Like, this is just so bad. And I agree with what you said, Jason. I agree with what you said. Wait, was it Jason that said that? Yeah. Jason says, man, this elder don't need to need no to seek fair trial from nobody. If he didn't do nothing wrong, he should do his own thing and keep it pushing. You don't need to seek validation from another human being. Well, um, he's not looking for validation. And it's not about him going and do his own thing because he answered that in the video. He said he's not trying to start another ministry. He's also said he's not trying to take Pastor Dow's position. So it's not about none of those different things. What, what I agree with with your comment is that, you know, 
if he didn't do anything wrong, you know what I mean, then he he technically don't have to uh I guess try to make people accept him back, if that makes sense. At the same time, just because let's say if 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 he didn't do nothing wrong and everything is good, still this division is bad. If if we live by this thing of well, I'm just going to go do my own thing and it is what it is. You got to also think about the amount of people that is being destroyed in the process. If you have a headache, the pain of that headache is affecting the entire body, not just your head. That headache will prevent you from working. It'll prevent you from driving your car. It'll prevent you from doing a lot of different things because you're in pain. So when we see this issue between Pastor Dow and, and Pastor Rufus, being that as believers, we're a part of the body, we're being affected by the pain, if that makes any sense. You might be the legs, you might be the arm. And you're feeling pain because there's a there's a there's turbulence, you know? So a lot of times as believers, we look at everything as, well, this is an isolated situation, but it's not. This affects everybody. Everybody that's an Israelite, anybody that is a believer that been following either Pastor Rufus or Pastor Dow, you're all, you know, feeling the pain of this separation. That's like having a body part, a limb or something separated from you. That's a problem. Here, you got 30 days, Pastor. And he hung up the phone. I said, yes, sir. I said, he just said that he told him over a phone, you got 30 days. So to, who was that that answered that questions? Dean, Dean, Deandra, wait, De, is that Deandra, Deandra, I believe it is, says, hold up. He's supposed to vacate in 30 days. For land he helped Pastor Dow get? Somebody correct me if I'm well that that's what uh Pastor Rufus said that you know he I guess gave him a phone call and said, Look, you got 30 days. That's crazy because does that mean the people that are on the land have to get out of there? If that's the case, that's wicked. If that's the case, everything that we've been trying to help people to understand about community building, uh, being the chosen people, all of that just went out the window. I would have to uh, undo a lot of the stuff that I may have told the public regarding these. It, like I said, it this type of stuff, it destroys everybody. Because there, there are other families besides um, Pastor uh, Rufus' family. You know, he got a family that he got to take care of too. So when I'm getting here is what about the families that are part of that community do they gotta go to where they gonna go that's like the powers that be coming to evict us it's bad enough we get eviction notices from the world but to get it from israel too come on man this is evil man this is pure evil at the end of the day if that's what it is this is evil there's no other way around this because you mean to tell me the children gotta suffer now the women gotta suffer because of a disagreement between two men is that what we're saying here? That's evil. If that's what it is, that the, the, the families have to go to? I hope that's not what it is, man. Because if that's what it is, I'm talking about this forever. If that's what it is, I'm going to talk about this one for a long time. I don't want to, but I'm going there because this is evil. Because you mean to tell me women and children got to suffer now because of issues? So, so this is not about the most high. This is not about the people of the most high no more. That's what this is about? Please tell me that's not what this is about. I hope that's not what this is about. I don't want to see no updated videos 
<laughs> from Pastor uh, Rufus saying, Ringo, that's what this is about. Meaning the families, we got to go in 30 days. If that's the case, if that's the case, and it is said that Pastor Dow is trying to evict families from the homes that we all been learning and hearing that people are building debt free and they got to they got to go. That's a problem. That's a major problem. That's not going to sit well with me. Because now I got to talk about it. And when I talk about it, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. And I'm going to convince a lot of people when I talk about it, too. So I hope that that's not what it is. If, if, if Pastor Rufus come back with a new video saying that, yes, that's exactly what it is. Um, the people on the land would have to leave in 30 days. So that means that he now is responsible for having to go to these families and tell them because of the issues with me and Pastor Dow, all of y'all are going to have to figure out a way to get somewhere else to live. If that's, if that's what it is, this is pure evil. And there is no way that I would sit back and watch this and not say nothing. That better not be what it is. That better not be what it is. Because it's bad enough we deal with that type of nonsense in the world where people can't pay their rent, can't pay their mortgage, and the law come to evict them. You know what it's like when you get evicted? You know what that's like when you have a family and kids and the law come and the, 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 the marshals and everybody come in and they break down your damn door? Talking about, well, you got 10 minutes to grab whatever you need to grab because we getting rid of all your stuff. Time for you to go. If this is what it is, then Israel is done. This is not going to stand still. It, I'm not going to sit back and watch this. I'm going to talk about this, and it's not going to be good because I'm passionate about stuff like this. This better not be what it is. It better not be what I think it is. That not only do Rufus have to get up out of there in 30 days, but also the families too that occupy the land. If that's what it is, then this is pure evil. And I leave this for you, the people, to judge. Because, like I said, I cannot recommend anyone to support any, any nonsense like that. This is why I said that these men need to reconcile this situation. This situation needs to be reconciled because it's like we jump out of the pot into the frying pan now. Where in Israel, we should have peace and prosperity and abundance. Don't tell me this is like the Christian church now. Because if it is, I'm just I'm gonna start to teach the people don't ever join any congregation ever. Doesn't matter if they're Israelite, Christian, whatever the case is, don't do it. That's what I'm gonna teach. You know? No, based on what's happening, he was removed from um he even said in a video that. People probably thinking that he left. He didn't leave. He was he was removed, meaning like he's not welcome. That's crazy. Served 14 years. Imagine you had a job for 14 years and they just fire you, get rid of you. <laughs> get you your last paycheck. Thanks. That's evil. We get treated like that in the workplace. We get treated like that in the world, man. The last place where we should have oppression is in our own communities that we built. Like, that's crazy, man. Let's get back to the tape, man. This is crazy. Him an offer. He didn't take him long. Declined. But he'll sell it to a heathen for uh, 50. Now, when Elder Austin left, he stole from you. <laughs> man was a charlatan. He stole from you. Knowing he was leaving, borrowed 10000 that he never planned on giving back. Took the land that y'all went there, built, paid for all of that. You actually offered him money for that land, even though it was really y'all's for the saints. I thought that was righteous. He declined you. He never responded. But that's not what's going on here. Why can't these saints keep this land if they decide to stay, Pastor Dow? But I'm the wicked one. I'm the one stealing from the saints. 
That's what you're saying to people publicly. So that's why I got to call this out. I'm the one stealing from the saints. Shouldn't have to come to this, Pastor Devil. You did a video first. You did a whole two and a half hour blog talk. Really talking about me. I'm just doing an hour long video. And I know Elder Tyler, it's been a long day for you. It's been a long two to three weeks. I love Pastor Dow. Still. He my brother. I don't care what he say. I love Straightway. I love the people of Straightway. I never left Straightway. Pastor Dow disbanded Straightway Georgia because he felt like he had the spiritual authority to do it. Now, what I would say is, show me that in the book. Show me that in the book. The Israelites fight all the time, right? The tribes, they were going at it all the time, right? Oh, yeah. I see why they are. This ain't even that, though, y'all. All I did was see something going on with my brother and entreat him and go to him. Even though I didn't have an offense, I still went to him. And we at this stage now. I wanted y'all to hear from the horse's mouth, though. I wanted y'all to hear Elder Brent. Because pastor not going to tell y'all that straightway Cleveland has been dissolved. He ain't going to tell you that. You know why? He's a victim of me. In Pastor Dow's eyes, he don't have discernment. He don't understand what he's under. So I'm going to retrieve him. I'm going to save him and all the people on this land. He did the same thing I did. Look, this is where we at. If you want to be here, you can. If you don't, let me know what you need. That's all you can do. I don't get to control the free will of these people. Well, Pastor Dow do, though. Pastor Dow, I'm telling y'all right now, I tried to get people added to my thing. Elder Kabir will be honest and tell the truth. I tried to get other people. It never worked out. It never worked out. And I'm glad now. Because guess what? With this spirit, he just told them, I don't care if you're a vagabond. I don't care. If I'd have had everything in straightway's name, guess what? Me and my wives and my children will be on the streets. And Pastor Dow wouldn't give a shit. That's how bad that spirit is. That's sad, man. Now, again, I love you, Pastor Dow, and I'll meet you anywhere to tell you. Face to you know face. I he said face to face. One thing that I'm hearing throughout this thing is the amount of times that Pastor Rufus said that he got love for Pastor Dow. I've been hearing that a lot. And... In the videos where Pastor Dow said for everybody to unsubscribe from him, I didn't hear Pastor Dow say that he got love for him. I didn't hear that. It's crazy, man. So... If the land wasn't in Pastor Rufus' name, he would be homeless right now. That's pretty much what he's saying. Now, I want to know if this 30-day notice, does that affect other people on the land? I need to know that. Or was that decree just for uh, Pastor Rufus. Because if this issue is now affecting other families that have nothing to do with this, there is no way that the Most High sanctioned that. That means that this is a personal issue and someone is in a pride. And that's dangerous, man. You know? You said that was only for Pastor Rufus. But here's the thing. <laughs> if we're supposed to be Israelites, why would why would Pastor Dow tell him you got 30 days to get up on out of there? Because now that's disrespectful towards his family. So his family supposed to be punished because you got a disagreement? It's, it's even more wicked now because now if the decree was just for Pastor Rufus, what about his wives and, and his kids? And, you know, I don't, I don't know his situation. I don't know, you know, man, how many wives he got. I don't know. But my point is he most likely is a family man.
So they're all supposed to just go somewhere now? Where in the Bible it says to do that? Like, how, how do you even make a decision like that? And how could, how could other pastors stand around and, and listen to something like that and not say nothing? Where's the heart? Where your heart of compassion? This is the thing that pisses me off, fam. This is why I left the Christian church. When I tell you, man, stuff like this makes my, my blood boil, man, because I'm not, I'm not hearing compassion. And I don't like, I don't like what I'm seeing, man. It's bad. Then I'm thinking of all the people that heard me say a thousand times, you know, pass the dial this, pass the dial that. And now, you, now you're seeing this mess right here. I got all these people DMing me on Instagram. I don't even. I I haven't even read everybody's message. I I don't got no time. Everybody, everybody contacting me. So now I got all of this uh, extra pre pressure on me now. Ringo, what's this? What's going on? But I thought you said such... I'm like, listen, man. This is crazy. And then to add insult to injury, I see another uh, brother, you know what I mean, um, a Christian brother, and, um, you know, named Neftali. I believe it's Neftali 1981, I believe it is. You know what I mean? He was around around in the beginning times of YouTube when I was there before him, but I recall when he came on the scenes and whatnot. We had our battles. I helped the brother out in the beginning, but I can recall when I became an Israelite, we had like a differences in doctrine and whatnot. And, you know, a little tension, whatever. And it's kind of like, we kind of let went our own separate ways and whatnot. But the interesting about this is I seen him in Pastor Rufus' comment section. So I was like, how did you end up over here? Which means he knows about the situation. So it's like, wow, if that got his attention, then I know he knows something is wrong too. And it's interesting how two guys that been on YouTube since like around the beginning. I came in around 2006, I believe. Um, Neftali came on around 2007, I believe. 2007. I think it's around there. 2007, 2008. One of those years. I believe it's 2007. But the thing is, he was there long enough to see my growth in the YouTube streets. So he know, he pretty much, you would say, Neftali 1981 would know a lot about me. He would know a lot about me from way back in the day. So, because back then it was a lot of issues where people thought Israelites just hate white people. You know what I mean? So, that's we had this bad cloud over our head because these guys that be on the streets cursing white people out all day. But, um... This doesn't make sense. <sighs> Let me see. Well, I don't listen, me, I don't know how long they've been having turbulence over there at Straightway. I don't know. But I know a lot of times. If you're a video person or you're, you know, you do content, a lot of times you end up speaking about your situation subliminally. And it's like those that know what's going on, they can hear you and know what you're doing. The congregation won't have a clue that you're actually talking about somebody. But normally that's what happens. Like you could be having problems with your woman and doing videos and you're talking about your situation with your woman <laughs> while making your content. Or you're talking about your girlfriend or you're talking about whatever it is. You're, the people don't have no idea, but you know what you're doing.
Like I said, fam, I'm, I'm very disappointed about this. I'm sure a lot of you out there that might know of Pastor Dow, you might know of Pastor Rufus. Um, you hear my videos, you see me talk highly about these guys. And in no way, shape, or form am I telling any of you folks that are viewing to stop supporting Pastor Dow or any of that. That's not what I'm, I'm not here for that. If you're subscribed to him, stay subscribed. I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. I'm trying to get these guys to, you know, consider what's at stake here. You know, if, if you join Pastor Dow's Patreon or whatever the case is to support, then be a supporter. Be a supporter and stand firm. You know, don't don't be an Indian giver where you support it and then you pull your support and all that. Don't 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 fight that way, because me doing this video, I believe, is the right thing to do. And I'm not petty by telling people go unsubscribe from this because Pastor Dow didn't do nothing to me personally for me to even make a call like that. I'm not one of them people that's going to speak highly of you one minute and then I crap on you. That means that what I said about you before, I didn't even believe it. You know? So, at the end of the day, all we could do is, you know, speak on the issue, hold people accountable. And that's it. I'm not going to be talking all this mess about I'll be praying for you because that would be a lie because I'm not praying for nobody. I'm not praying for nobody. These are grown men. They all know what they need to do. We don't need no prayer to fix that. Just go do what you need to do as men. But based on what I'm seeing, Pastor Rufus appear to be the guy that want to reconcile. There's no doubt about that. He's the one who want to reconcile. So at this point, it is up to Pastor Dow to actually say, you know what? The people have spoken. I got to make this thing happen. Because the people are not happy about this. I'm telling you they're not. Let's get back to the tapes. I will. I will. Time and date, brother. I told y'all I don't duck no smoke. Even that meeting that 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 that, that kangaroo court meeting y'all wanted to do, I still didn't duck it. I told you you could come, Pastor Dow, Elder Becker, Elder Mitchell, and Elder Brent. I didn't need them wicked dudes coming. But I also told you this: I'll come the straight way. I'll bring the whole community up the straight way. Guess what his response was, y'all? That video y'all saw saying George is disbanded. He can call him and ask his opinion if Georgia needs to be disbanded. That's why he made the decision that he made. Not because of me, y'all. I didn't even I didn't even see that video that he's talking about. Cause I like I said, I'm busy doing my own thing. I'm a content creator. And I kind of catch, you know, videos here and there. I don't I don't I I don't even sit around watching videos all day. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm too busy trying to work and do other things. I'm I'm not really a viewer, even though I do view content. From time to time, I more or less do a lot of studying and watching tutorials, learning about different things like, like that. And from time to time, I might watch certain content creators that, to me, that are watchable. You know, I'll watch their videos to kind of let time burn while I'm working. But um, this right here is just, just bad. It's just a bad thing. Let's get back to the tapes. Again, for the record, I don't have no ministry. I ain't finna go start no ministry. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna keep serving y'all the way I've been serving y'all. We got two building projects going on here now. Once we get past the feast and I get done, take care of my business down in Texas, we're gonna get back on finishing up these building projects. I'm still gonna do everything that we had planned to do. Will I have less help? Yep, but y'all will provide. I ain't worried about it. I ain't worried about it. I ain't worried about it. I didn't know what this man was going to do. He didn't tell me. I knew where his heart was going, but he didn't tell me. He didn't tell me. I didn't make my decision because, oh, I got the backing of Elder Brent. No, he can change his heart tomorrow. 
Okay, so his name is Elder Brent. So my apologies to Elder Brent for not pronouncing his name because I didn't I didn't catch the name. So that's Elder Brent. Let's go. I'm still gonna do this. I'm still gonna serve y'all. I served y'all before I met Pastor Dow. I'm gonna serve y'all if Pastor Dow decides we never be uh, fellowship ever again. I'm gonna still serve him. Now, see, I'm gonna tell the folk, let y'all reconcile it. I'll show you how to how to forgive. Because I've been a good example of showing y'all how to serve leaders. I've been a very good example for 14 years. I'm going to show you how to forgive too. Watch. If it be the will of the Father and this thing gets restored, I'm going to show you how to forgive. Watch. And you won't get to see, is he telling the truth or is he lying? You don't get to see. It is. So he want to he want to reconcile. Based on what we're hearing, he want to reconcile and, you know, do what needs to be done. So... <laughs> We're going to have to just see what happens with Pastor Dow at this point, fam. Because like I said, this video is public, and I hear any more stuff going on, I'm making a bunch of videos, fam, because I'm tired of this type of stuff, man. I am tired of this division. This stuff is depressing. It's like, how do you even make videos trying to tell people about the most high, <laughs> and you got stuff like this going on? can't tell nobody about repent of your sins and come to the most high. Nobody ain't hearing that. Why is anybody going to listen to that when you have pastors that can't even come together? <laughs> nobody ain't listening to that, man. People going to be like, look, I'm going, I'm going in sin, man. And that's what happened. That's why people backslide. That's why people go back into the world because it's like, <sighs> just when people starting to get things right, it's always some new drama, man. It's what it is. It is what it is. Again, Israel, I love you. Straightway Truth Ministries, I love you. Ain't gonna stop. Notice how many times he said he loves straightway, though. You have to pay. Listen, when it comes to court, when it comes to testimonies, you have to look at how many times this man showed himself to be honorable. He showed himself to be honorable by saying how many times he loved straight way he loved this he loved that and that means something you know this is crazy man let's go ain't gonna stop pastor dow i love you brother i know you don't want to hear it. now that i was speaking to pastor dow not that wicked spirit i love you Bring down a railing accusation against an elder. Okay, what y'all doing with me? What y'all doing with me? You put it out there. You called me wicked. You did. You called me wicked. It is what it is. Elder, you got anything else? No. I told Pastor Dow I wasn't going to go out and talk wicked about him. I'm not. I love him. I just want to see restoration. I love you. You feel like I talk wicked about him today a little bit? Wicked about him? No. You just We just spoke truth. We just spoke what was going on. Both of them said they want reconciliation so we got two witnesses two men publicly said they want reconciliation so now the ball is in pastor dial's court i don't care what nobody said at this point this is a fair trial public trial that's what we're having right now this is a public hearing right now we have in trial it's in the public uh the court case of pastor dial versus uh, Pastor Rufus, um, we're trying to hear the testimony of Pastor Rufus' side of what's going down. Um, I didn't even know all of the stuff was going on, man. I didn't had I had no clue that none of this was going on. And I went to his channel, and um, I didn't even see this video. I had to kind of scroll back a little bit because I'm like, listen, if this if this is going on now. There must be more videos where maybe they could give us some insight on what happened. So I'm glad that him and um, the other elder was pretty much, I just said his name. Is it, uh, I just said his name, um, Brent, I believe it is. Elder Br Brent. I'm not sure. I'm, I, I, I'm not good with people's names like that. But. I'm glad that he made this particular video with the elder next to him. So it's not like 
he's just speaking by himself. Even though he could speak by himself because he's he grown, he could speak by himself. But hearing another person as a witness, that adds value to the testimony. You know? Um, let me see. All right, let's get back to the tapes. I don't care what nobody say. Y'all love Pastor Dow. He called right now. Guess what? I could be the straight way in three hours and 45 minutes. Three hours and 45 minutes. I'll jump in my truck, my car, and I'll be there in three hours and 45 So he just said if Pastor Dow called him right now and I guess they resolved the issues, he could jump into his truck, his car, and he could get there in three hours. So you heard that. You heard it. So this does not sound like a man that is wicked. This sounds like a man that has a repentant heart that want to do the right thing. And he's just waiting for his, you know. It's crazy, man. Five minutes. Test me. Test my boast. I wanted restoration the whole time, y'all. That's it. That's it. Never wanted to be separate. Never wanted to take his position. Never thought that I was better than anybody in that ministry. Never was jealous of any position or pastor or deacon or whatever. Never. Never. I don't care what they tell you. You can listen to it. It's a good spin. It's a very good spin. The problem is, all them things they accuse me of, all those people they compare me to in the Bible, don't fit me. I ain't Absalom. Don't fit me. I ain't Cord in the mirror. Don't fit me. I ain't Dr. Patrice. Don't fit me. I ain't Esau, don't fit me. None of them do. They don't fit me. It ain't what I did, and it wasn't the intent of my heart when I went to you. He's had this plan for years. That's a lie. And if it was, why'd you do something about it? Why'd you keep hearing from y'all and promoting me spiritually if I was that? Don't make no sense. Y'all ain't that complicated, y'all. He's really not. He's simple. He ain't that complicated. I'm not that man they're trying to present me to be today. Go back and look at the videos I got posted on my channel. It shows you the testimony of Pastor Dow of who I was in October, y'all. I was unrebukable in October. Look at me now. <laughs> this is what I get for becoming a pastor. Wow. And you wonder why we don't want these titles, y'all. You wonder why. Go back. Hey, you know what some of y'all need to do? Go back and look at when I became a pastor. Look at the look on my face. Look at the look on my face. And you wonder why the many of y'all run from these positions and titles. This is BS. This is love. Whether you see it or not, this is love. Did I want to do this video? Nope. But I felt y'all need to hear him and hear me. Because guess what? Our voice has been silenced. We ain't getting a platform to tell y'all our side of the story. Give me a righteous ecclesiastical counsel. They tell me then, yes, Pastor, we see this. Pastor Dow was right the whole time. Guess what? Bye-bye. I'll be gone. No fan, no more video, no nothing. Because I love the saints that much. I'm not here to hinder the saints. I'm not here to use the saints and take advantage of the saints. That's not what I'm here for. Regardless of what people think and say. Because I won't do it the way, because I won't do what they tell me to do. We're not supposed to lord over the people. Yes, we have a rank system. Yes, we listen to Pastor Dow. But he shouldn't be superseding our free will. If I'm going to be a big man, okay, be a big man. I actually enjoyed this more than I did when I was in shape all the time. I did. That's on me. Why such a personal attack? Because you look at it and say, you're doing all that and the people still love you. I'm out here being a perfect example for y'all and y'all giving him the same honor you give me. You told me, Pastor Dow, five or six times his last feast. These people love you. These people love you. You told me if I die, he said, now I forbid I'm not putting death on you. Well, you are now, though. You wasn't then, but you are now. Y'all forbid if you die, Pastor Rufus, it's going to be a weeping howl in Israel. You told me that, Pastor Dow, at this last feast. Wow. Tabernacles. What happened to that? I'm done. Elder, have you got anything? Hey, I love you, Israel. I hope we get rest restoration. So that's what it's all about. Shalom. That's what we want. Bless y'all. Shalom, shalom. Oh, you oh, yeah, also need this. Hey, anyone that has ever been subscribed to uh, Pastor Rupert's Carswell, I need y'all to go ahead and unsubscribe so you don't put and continue to keep putting all that junk and that mess in your hearts, all right? Uh, we got a new year. The Most High God has been good to us. Give us a very anointed service the other night. Um, it was just beautiful, wonderful. So um, just, just um, 
you know, all this negativity and all this other stuff, he, hey, he's gone. Uh, go ahead and um, unsubscribe from it and just keep the, the junk out of your spirit and keep on and stay encouraged, okay? And pretty soon he'll be out of my house and stop making videos on my front porch down in Georgia as well. Lord to the king. See, what he said right there, man, that, that just sound bad. That sounded real bad, man. That sounded so bad, so harsh. You said it's his front porch. So you agree with being wicked. Is that what you're saying? So if you have a disagreement with somebody, you're the kind of person I'll kick them out on the streets. I'm telling you, man, everybody's wicked, man. Everybody got evil spirits, man. This is why this is why people leave faith. This is why people say fuck everything. Because when you see stuff like this, man, it's one of them type of things that just piss you off, man. Like, I'm fucking pissed off right now. Like, I don't like seeing none of this. I don't like seeing this because it's like you're seeing the evil in the world. And then when you looking at your people... And you got the same type of evil, man. It's like, listen, man, all of this stuff right here is just depressing, man. <laughs> it's like, like, man, <sighs> this is crazy, man. And this is why people don't be taking people that read the Bible serious, man. This is... These are those type of things. It just sets you back, man. Like, you could be, you could be building something for 30 years and then do one thing and then undo everything you did for 30 years because of something you said, something you did. All of a sudden now, it causes everybody to go astray. See, the thing is, the people that are smart, that's why, that's why I had to do this particular stream. Because a lot of you that are watching the stream, you know better. You could discern, you can see. You heard Pastor Rufus. Um, you you're putting the puzzle together, and your spirit is telling you what's going on. And what's happening is the most high, he, he always gives people an opportunity to repent, you know. He gives people a space and time to repent. And sometimes people don't do it. Yeah, I said that earlier in the stream that um, the other elder that was with... Um, Pastor Rufus, he he appears to be a straight up stand up guy that he's not on no BS. He's he's like he looked like the type of man that he would judge righteously because he know 
to stand in. First of all, when you stand in a place of judgment, you have to be careful. Especially when you're judging a man for something. And he saw something that was wrong and he decided to pull away. That's that that's an honorable man. That means that he saw something that told his spirit, this ain't right. And he did what he was supposed to do. Because you have a lot of people that are yes men that would go along with injustice or they'll go along with a person's decisions that clearly is out of pocket. This is why iron sharpens iron. It, it's, you, it's like if you have three corrupt police officers and one good officer and he see the corrupt officers doing dirt, he need to say something. Because if he don't say nothing, he's just as corrupt as those officers. And there's a lot of yes men out here, man. I don't like those people either. Because you got people out there that just, they go with the flow. You could be wrong and they'll still hang with you. They support you doing wrong. Let's get back to the tape. All right. Shalom, 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 saints of the Most High Yah. This is Pastor Rufus coming to you as a servant of the Most High Yah. Um, Shabbat shalom, actually, to the remnant of the Most High Yah. Today is still the Shabbat. Um, me and my family have definitely been able to enjoy and partake in this rest. And um, I'm going to break something down real quick for you saints um, that the Most High put on my heart to do. I know I've been saying that I do not want to do this thing that's going on between myself and Straightway uh, through the videos, but... It's the only avenue we have right now because the um, cowardness of the leadership at Straightway has not allowed me to come before the people. Now, if I did, they would hear things like this. That are Let me um, respond to uh, the head ninja says, uh, and this is from the Ringo TV Raw channel says, um, just shows how petty our people are. How can we talk about these other nations when we're being wicked. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, when we see situations like this, it's like, how do you talk about the other nations when we got our own wickedness that's going on in our backyard that stinks, you know? We gotta get things in order. So this particular video clip here is Pastor Rufus' newest video. This is his newest video on his platform. So we're going to play this video, let the court hear the proceedings, because he's going to break down uh, the scriptures. He's going to break down what should should have happened, I guess. And um, let's see what you think about what he had to say. Very, very clear and very, very pointed when it comes to understanding the law of the Most High Yah. Now, one of the things, the number one thing that Pastor Dow, Pastor Muir, and Pastor Corey especially have tried to push to you people to justify the reason for putting me out of the assembly. Mind you, without following the laws of y'all to do it, cutting me off is presumptuousness. I've even heard Pastor Dow himself say that Pastor Rufus and Elder Brent have even admitted that he was presumptuous. So we had no choice but to cut him off. Understand the law. <clears throat> all right. The main one they've been using is Numbers 15. All right. They quote verse 30 is what they quote. Now, if you are a student of the Bible and you've been a straight way any length of time, the number one thing Pastor Dow, Pastor Corey, myself, any man that gets up there and ministers tells you is read a little before, read a little after. So you can have the Bible give you the interpretation of what it's saying. <clears throat> you don't have to have a man read one scripture and then tell you what that scripture is saying. All right. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So once you guys get to see what this law of presumption is, right, and how Yah views this law. And how it should be interpreted, you will see that they don't have a leg to stand on when it comes to putting me out of the assembly for presumptuousness. Now, did I admit that I was presumptuous? Yes, I did. You're going to understand where I'm coming from with my admission, though. Okay? Because first and foremost, y'all know the law of forgiveness is in effect now. Jesus did do, do Yahshua HaMashiach did what he did on the tree. So we didn't even have to be in this situation that we did not have to fall under the law. What you seeing going on right now? is a people willingly taking themselves from grace and putting themselves back under the law, nullifying what the Messiah did on the tree. 
That's what they're trying to do. Okay? Let me break this down for you real quick. We're in numbers. I got my book here. I got the Bible right here. Reading right from the Bible. All right? It's a King James Version. I ain't got nothing funny going on. And I'm in Numbers 15. And they typically quote to you 30, which says what? But the soul that doth awe presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth Yahweh. And that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Now, if you just go to verse 31 and look at the first word in it, the word is because. It's going to explain to you what it's saying in verse 30 and the verses before that. Okay? So what I want to do is read to you what this what it's saying in numbers. So you can get a real good understanding of this law of presumptuousness. All right? Uh, let's see. What do I want to start? Uh, and it shall be, I'll be committed by... Okay, let's go back to verse 22. Let's go back to verse 22 and start there. It says, And if ye have erred and not observed all these commandments, which Yahweh have spoken unto Moses, even all that Yahweh have commanded you by the hand of Moshe, for the day of Yahweh commanded Moses, and henceforth among your generations. Verse 24, Then it shall be, if all be committed by ignorance. Now it's been explained to you having a sin against Yah through ignorance. All right? I'm going to start with 23 again. Even all that Yahweh have commanded you by the hand of Moses from the day that Yahweh commanded Moses and henceforth among your generations. Then it shall be, if all be committed by ignorance without the knowledge of the congregation, that all the congregation shall offer one young bullock for a burnt offering for sweet savor unto Yahweh with the with his meat offering and his drink offering according to the manner of one kid of the goats for a sin offering. So this was what required back then when we were under the law, y'all, for a sin offering done in ignorance. Someone that didn't know they committed a sin, didn't realize it was a sin, what they were doing. This is what was required. Now, we all understand and know this because Jesus came. We ain't required to do this no more. He's that lamb. He's that sacrificial offering. This is why we have grace and mercy. Let's go to verse 25. So it just explained to you if someone does something out of ignorance. Right? Verse 25. And the priest shall make an atonement for all the congregation of the children of Israel, and it shall be forgiven them, for it is ignorance. And they shall bring their offering, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahweh, and their sin offering before Yahweh for their ignorance. It keeps telling you they don't know they committed a sin. They don't know. It's ignorance what they're doing. Verse 26. And it shall be forgiven all of the congregation of the children of Israel and the stranger that sojourneth among them, seeing all the people were in ignorance. All right. So one man <clears throat> committing a sin and all of Israel having to pay for this man's sin. Everybody was in ignorance of it. They won't have to. There's an offering, a sin offering, which you can pay. We know that Yahshua is that sin offering. What he did on the tree covers that. Let's go to verse 27 now. And if any soul sins through ignorance, then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year of a sin offering. Verse 28. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul of that sinneth ignorantly when he sinneth by ignorance before Yahweh and make an atonement for him and it shall be forgiven him. I think it's been amazing through all of this that I did something that's been presented not ignorant and it was. I'm thinking I'm doing something to help my brother to restore him. Not trying to take his position, not take, not trying to take a position of authority over him or even being on a level equal to him. I entreated Pastor Dow on December 9th, 909 a.m. when I called him. He rejected that entreatment the next day during the service. Y'all can go look on December 10th. Watch it closely. You'll hear him say in that service that um, when the spirit of the ruler rise up, you stay in your place. That was him rejecting me, thinking that my spirit was rising up against him. And it wasn't. I said clearly to him on the phone, just me and him, Pastor. I can see there's something there. Let's deal with it. That's what I said. And th th tell you this, y'all. At the end of that conversation, I didn't record it. Maybe he did. I didn't. But I didn't record it. But he told me at the end of that conversation, he thanked me. He said, Pastor, thank you. This is how things are supposed to be done. I, man, I feel good. Thank you so much for making this call today. That's what he said. Now, the next morning, I don't know who spit in his ear or what happened. The next morning, he was rebuking me during the service. And again, he didn't call my name. So you won't know that he was rebuking me. I knew it, though. So that was me going to him in treating him in love, even though I didn't have an offense. Notice what he said. He said that in, I guess, some of the sermons that uh, Pastor Dow was, was 
preaching, I guess, that he knew he was being rebuked through those sermons. You didn't know. Remember earlier I said how sometimes people can have an issue and they'll be preaching or making videos and they're speaking about either a person or someone or whatever the case is, and you and him would know that something's between y'all, but the people have no clue. People do stuff like that. Him rejected it. That's why I told the other two elders, I cannot go back to Pastor Dow. I've already done this. I have to have witnesses this time. And contrary to popular belief, I did have two witnesses. Elder Brent witnessed it and Elder Mitchell. Now, he can get on here and make a video himself, but Elder Mitchell told us clearly that when he did his research finally, he could tell that in that video on Patreon that's called Godly Jealousy Over You, he said to Pastor Dow and all of us that he could tell that there was something in Pastor Dow's heart towards me. Without a doubt, he said nobody can change his mind on that. Now, if Elder Mitchell changes on that, he's just another liar too, y'all. Because he told me that, he told Elder Brent that, he told Elder Becker that. He even told Pastor Dow that, y'all. That he saw from his research, he said, I want to view this from the same lenses that maybe Pastor Rufus is viewing it from. Or maybe Elder Brent. He said, I'm going to do my due diligence. And when he did, he said for sure, I could tell that back there on December 9th, or December whatever that date was that he made that video. It might have been the 19th. Y'all go look at it. It's on Patreon. It's called Godly Jealousy. It's a godly, something about a godly jealousy. He said when he saw that video, he knew clearly that there was something in Pastor Dow towards me. He could see it. That's what Elder Mitchell said. All right, let's keep reading on here with the scriptures. Now let's get to verse 29. It says, ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born amongst the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth amongst them. Now we get to verse 30, what they've been quoting. But the soul that doeth off presumptuously. Now, when it says the words presumptuously, y'all, it's actually translating the meaning willingly. Willingly. Go look it up. This is someone that's not working from ignorance. They're purposely doing this, right? They don't care about the law of Yah. They don't care what's been written, what's been said. They're going to do it anyway. So that's really what it's saying, all right? That's what they're accusing me of doing, and it's just not true. I didn't willingly go to Pastor Dow like this, thinking that I'm above you. This is a law that I'm breaking by doing it. Uh, I, I'm bringing an accusation against an elder that I shouldn't. I didn't do any of that. See, Yah judges the inner reins. He judges the intent of the heart. This is why I know my story ain't changed through all of this. This is why I know I'm pure before Yah, because I didn't go with ill will towards Pastor Dow. I went in a loving spirit trying to preserve and restore my brother. I did. And when I saw him reject me, that's what made me. Now, mind you, this is in December, y'all. I didn't talk to the brothers on this land until February, literally the day, that Wednesday, because I left that Wednesday to head to, uh, 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 um, or Thursday, to head to, uh, no, Wednesday. I left that Wednesday to head to uh, Wisconsin. So that Tuesday night is when I spoke to the brothers. That Tuesday night is when I spoke to the brothers. And I saw this, the, the move the spirit was doing. And I said, look, instead of this being dropped in their lap, I need to at least get them prepared. When trying to sow discord, I never spoke to anyone outside my brothers here on this land. Never. Didn't speak to anyone in any other community, no other leaders, nothing. So that sowing discord, it don't hold water. Back to the scriptures. We're still in Numbers 15, verse 30. It says, but that soul that, that off presumptuously, willingly, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproaches Yahweh. And that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Now, read why. Read why. Don't stop there. Remember, Pastor Dow tells you, read a little bit before. We went back to verse 22. Read a little bit after. We're going to read all the way down to verse 36. Let's see what the book says. Let's see what the law says. It tells you to cut them off in 30. Then it says, because. Now it's going to explain to you why you need to cut this person off that has willingly, presumingly done this sin. All right? Verse 31. Because he hath despised the word of Yahweh. First, we heard up here that this in verse 30. That he reproaches. Now we're hearing in 31 that he despises. But what is it that he despises? The word of Yahweh. Now I'm going to ask y'all. What word did I despise by going to Pastor Dow telling him I think there's something going on in the spirit here? What word did I despise? Let's read the rest of 31 though. Because it gets better. It gets better y'all. Listen. I'll go back to the beginning of 31. Because he hath despised the word of Yah and hath broken his commandment. It's over now y'all. Tell me what commandment that Pastor Rufus break by going to Pastor Dow, telling him that I see this spirit. You're raising some good points here, man. What commandment did he break? What law did he break? What did he break? Because if this is just a personal, emotional, ego thing, 
we shouldn't even be having this discussion. There shouldn't even be no drama. What law did he break? What commandment did he break? That's a valid question. So when you have in this type of public trial, whatever, what did this man do that violated a command? What law, what commandment, what did this man break? What did he do? Let's go. In treating him privately on a phone conversation. Then when I got to Wisconsin, that was me speaking to that spirit, trying to provoke it. Actually, something I learned from Pastor Dow, trying to provoke that spirit into telling the truth because we saw that spirit telling a lot of lies. The elders were there. They can vouch. You can ask Elder Mitchell. You can ask Elder Becker. You can ask Elder Brent. They all vouch for it. Now, I don't know if Pastor Mir will because in that same meeting, Pastor Mir boldface lied to us. All the elders there could vouch for that. He lied to us. So I can't tell you Pastor Mir is going to tell y'all the truth because he lied in that meeting. Back to 31. I'm going to read it in context, y'all. Because he hath despised the word of Yahweh and hath broken his commandment. What word did I despise and what commandment did I break? Then it confirms. After that, it says what? That soul shall be utterly cut off and his iniquity shall be upon him. So somebody that willingly despises and reproaches the word of Yah and breaks his commandment. That soul should be cut off. And that's going to be on that individual. It's going to be on him because he willingly did this. Presumptuously willingly did it. Right? Let's keep reading, though. Verse 32. It's going to give you an example. It's going to give you an example of what it's talking about, y'all. Remember, Pastor Dow tells you, read a little before, a little after. Most of y'all ain't done it. You've listened to what Pastor Dow, Pastor Cor, all these guys have said. Quoting stuff that ain't even scripture from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Trying to justify what they did. But in your heart, you know something wrong. Something ain't right. How come I don't get no closure when I listen to them talk? How come this still hurts inside? And it ain't just because I'm close to Pastor Rufus or I believe he was a man of Yah. It ain't just that. My spirit is grieved and vexed by this. You know why? Because what has happened by your silence is you have agreed with them and you've put yourself back under the law instead of living by grace. Now you got to be judged on the same level. You have to be. Verse 32. It's going to tell you a story. It's going to give you an example of what it's talking about, y'all. Of this verse 30 and 31. 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Now, how many of y'all know that it is against the law to work on the Sabbath day? Go gather sticks and try to start fire, all that kind of stuff. That's 100% against the law. How many of y'all know that? That's against the law. This man knows that. He's a part of Israel. He's come out with the number from uh, uh, Mizraim. He clearly knows that this is against it. He didn't do this ignorantly like, I didn't really know the law. Who taught it to me? No, 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 no. He willingly, presumingly does this and doesn't care. Check this out, though. Check this out. I'm going to read 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron, the leaders. The leaders. Listen to me close. The leaders. They brought him to the leaders. And unto all the congregation. And they put him inward, meaning they put him in jail, y'all. They put him inward because it was not declared what should be done to him. Meaning they, not actual jail because we didn't have jails. You know, they just put him in and locked him in so he couldn't get out. All right. Not even the leaders knew what they should do with this man. Now he broke the commandment, y'all. And everybody knows that everybody in Israel knew when we came out, we couldn't break the Ten Commandments. We couldn't break them. This man did it anyways, didn't care. He was presumptuous. Listen close, though. Now we're going to verse 34 or 35. And Yahweh said unto Moses, who said this to Moses? The Most High. So who made this decision? Did Moses, the men, the leaders make this decision or did Yah? Moses said, I mean, and it says, and Yahweh said unto Moses, the man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without camp. Why would all the congregation do it? Remember what it said back up here. I'm going to go back so y'all can help y'all. Verse 33. And they found him gathering sticks, brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. Y'all hear the thing going on here? They brought him to the leaders because he broke a law and to the congregation. Why did Pastor Dow, Pastor Corn, Pastor Mir not bring me to the congregation? Why not? I ain't break no law. That's why. Again, he's bringing up key points. How come he wasn't brought before the congregation? What law did he break? You know? What exactly is going on?
You be the judge. Just keep listening. Let's go. They want you to believe it. They want you to believe I was presumptuous and, and shunned and reproached the law of Yah and broke his commandment. I didn't do it, though. There is no commandment, thou shalt not offend Pastor Dow, y'all. I'm sorry. There is no commandment that thou shalt not get loud with Pastor Dow. Thou shalt not dishonor or disrespect Pastor Dow. That's not a law. It ain't good. Don't get me wrong. It's not a good thing to do. It's not right. But it ain't a law. Again, <laughs> there's no law that says you can't have, you know, civil discourse or have a little argument or whatever the case is. Like, oh, you know, you violated a law by <laughs> having an argument with me. I'm, I'm above you. There's no law. Like, what did this man break commandment wise? You know? And this is why this stuff needs to be addressed as soon as possible so that the public can know what's going on. Because if the public is confused and they have no idea what's really going on and stuff, then everybody's going to start having their opinions. And, and none of these pastors can get upset when people are speculating and making videos. Y'all can't get upset because of that. That's your fault. Because... If the public don't have a clue what in the world's going on, everybody's going to just make up whatever they think is going on, and it's going to turn into one big mess. You know? Let's go. And it certainly is not something worthy to be put out of the congregation. Again, this man, when they found him breaking this law, they brought him before the leaders and the congregation. Why was I not brought before the congregation? Wow, let's keep reading. Verse 36. No, 35. I'm read it again for context. You can really understand. And Yahweh said, not the men, not the leaders, not the congregation. Yahweh himself said to Moshe, the man shall be surely put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without a camp. Now everybody's involved, y'all. If I got brought before the leaders and I got brought before you as a congregation and y'all all thought I was guilty, it would be on all y'all hands. It would be, but you would be righteous. You would be righteous. To make that judgment. This man broke the law. Y'all said kill him before. And then guess what? Who gonna kill him? All the congregation. Not just the leaders. The entire congregation is gonna kill him. This is putting this presumptuous law they're trying to present to you in context. Like he tells you to do. This is putting it in context. And all, verse 36, all the congregation brought him unto the camp and stoned him with stones. And he died as Yahweh commanded Moses to do. So why not all of y'all bringing me before the congregation? All you leaders. Why not all the congregation hearing my side of this? See, when this presumptuous law is done away with, the way they're presenting it, they don't have justification for putting me out. Those of you that are spiritual, this is simple for you. You've already done your research and know this is BS. Your spirit, even though you don't understand it, your spirit saying, man, something wrong with this. I'm confused. And then Pastor Dow got the audacity today to get up and present this to the people. And guess what? He gone presumptuously, y'all. Listen to me close. I'm doing this to try to save him. He's going to presumptuously take the Passover tonight. Willingly, knowing that he perverted these scriptures to get you people to think that I'm worthy to be put away. Pastor Corey, same situation. Pastor Mir, same situation. Pastor Elder Becker, El all of them. Elder Mitchell, all of y'all. Presumptuously going to take that Passover tonight, y'all. Woo-wee. Just like I warned Pastor Dow. Pastor, Co Pastor Dow was gloating the other day when... He got, him and Pastor Corey got those Georgia saints all stirred up in that meeting, y'all, and put those falsehoods before me. Those are all lies too, y'all. I promise you. Call me and find out. Hear my side. Hear my side. Forget the tears and the emotions and Pastor Corey running around trying to pump people up. Ask me. And see, don't it don't make sense. These brothers know it. But then when there's alts in your heart, what can you do? What can you do? But these people have, these leaders have maliciously misled y'all to believe what they did was justified. And it's not. And now they're going to have you go from being in grace with, with what the Messiah did for you, shed, on, shed his blood on the tree for you, right? To pushing you right back under the law. And you ain't under grace no more. And you're going to be judged. I'm telling you. Your silence. No, y'all ain't listening to that. Because he knows you've been hearing what's going on. You ain't done your due diligence. It says prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. It don't say whatever Pastor Down there, uh, Pastor Corey tell you, don't prove that. It don't tell you that. It says all things. And guess what? I got respect for a small handful of brothers. Guess what they did? They went back. And they tried to prove everything that Pastor Corey was presenting, Pastor Dow was presenting. And guess what they said? God dang it, I can't find it. For all the information they gave me, I can't find it. 
I do feel a lot of emotion here. I feel a lot of hurt feelings. But when you talk about the brass tasks of these accusations, these sins they saying you did, I can't find them. That's what they said. Now, we call ourselves here straight when we were in straightway, a, a, a Bible thumping community, um, people that, that studied the book hard, people that actually did what the scripture, what the, what the book tells us to do, to prove all things. How come people ain't doing that now? How come we're not proving this? How come we're just listening with Pastor Cord, Pastor Mir, all them say? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because you don't want your faith to be destroyed. The majority of you people, and I'm just keeping it above because I love you, and I've always been straightforward. I've always been concrete in my speech. There's nothing evasive about what I'm saying. There's nothing, uh, nobody's confused when you're listening to me. You're not confused at all. You're not. But I love you enough to tell you, your faith is wrapped up in a man and it's wrapped up in a ministry. And I've been telling you for decades, wrap your faith in Jesus. Wrap your faith in Yeshua HaMashiach. At uh, D Nice, right? I want to know, is, is something wrong with your brain? Something wrong with you? Uh, you okay? You just post, you know, something that don't make no sense. You said it's not envy. Rufus is just not fit for the leadership role. He needs more growth. How are you going to say he needs more growth when Pastor Dow anointed him as a pastor, ordained him as a pastor and said that the Most High called him into the ministry to be a pastor? Let me just get rid of you, bro. I, you got to go. I, I can't deal with this type of foolishness, man. It's like, you're going to be here and be a part of the conversation, man. Don't be an a-hole. Because what you're saying is it's is, is dumb. Like Pastor Dow ordained him as a pastor. They had a ceremony. We showed the ceremony. We proved all things to the people in the public. See it here? Check it out. Glory to the king. Yah always gives gifts, right? And every good and perfect gift come from above. Is that right? Is that right? Hallelujah, we have an elevation. Pastor Elder Rufus. You see that? Pastor Rufus Coswell. As you can see in this video clip, they ordained him as pastor, right? They did the ceremony. They did all of that stuff. They videotaped it. So how you going to say that Pastor Rufus don't know how to fulfill leadership role and saying he needs to just, you know, continue to grow? Like, that's disrespectful. Because if the Most High called this man to be a pastor, made Pastor Dow uh, ordain him or anoint him, who are you to say he need more growth? When you're not even teaching nobody nothing. Like, you're not even a leader. You're not even teaching nobody no scripture. You ain't, you're not doing nothing for the community. But got all of that stuff to say. It's crazy how people with no voice, no accountability, no fruit be having the most judgment on other people. What houses have you built? What ministry have you started? 
What people have you led? I'm telling you, man. Some people are just evil, man. Glory to the king. Evil. Y'all always gives gifts, right? Look. And every... coming in and going out notice they prayed for him Shula's magnificent name glory to the king thank you Jesus now why would everybody be there anointing him as a pastor if he wasn't qualified for the position you understand does that make any sense come on now Something else is going on here, and it's just not a good thing, man. This is not good. But anyway, let's take this off and get back to what he was saying here. Because what happens when the man's gone? What happens when the ministry's over? What are you going to do? Now it makes more sense to me. In my 20s, I didn't understand. Now it makes sense to me when I read that when Yahshua comes back, he's going to be looking for faith. Back in my 20s, guess what I said? This don't make sense. You got a remnant. I'm reading in the book, you always got a remnant. Why would you just not go to them for your faith? But even the remnant is going to have to prove that they trust Yah over man. My, my, my. Boy, this is coming to, oof. People think my journey started with straightway. Now you're seeing it didn't. My journey been, I, I've been doing this over 20 years myself, uh, up to 20 years myself. I ain't been with straightway that long. 2011, when I came to straightway, I was in this before then, y'all. So that man that Pastor Dow and Pastor Mir described to y'all back in October, at the uh, Feast of uh, Tabernacles. What was it October 9th, something like that? That's who I am. They were accurate then. How do I fall from such grace in two months? Go from October 9th, December 9th. Now I'm a devil. I've been a plotting devil the whole entire time, y'all. And I've been manipulating, misappropriating funds, and stealing from the saints. Okay, let's go with that. Let's Because that's, that's a lie. That's a bold face. At D-Nice, if you were blocked... Why would you sign up again to come on back? You can't see that you're the devil. If somebody block you, that means you're not welcome. Why would you go sign up to come back to give a voice as if though we care? We don't care. So stop. This is how we know the spirit that is in you. You don't have a spirit that come from the most high. Because a decent human being would recognize, okay, I got blocked. I'm out of pocket. I said something dumb. Let me move on. Do what I need to do. You know, like how you tell Pastor Rufus he need more growth. Okay, you need growth too. You need to, you know, find something else to do with your time. But to be making accounts and to, to come that that's that's sick that's like that's some crazy stuff i would never do that if i'm on somebody's platform and they block me i'm blocked that's it i'm, I'm going about my business i'm not going to sign up to give another word like that's insane that make no sense like why who does that who got that kind of time to get another account made up and like who does all of that it's literally 3 26 a.m new york time and you got that kind of time? That's crazy, man. Grow up. Lie. No proof, no nothing. It's just a man stating it by what he sees with his eyes. Won't get understanding. Never never called and asked me. Pastor Dow never said one time to me that he thought I was manipulating the saints. He thought that I was mis misappropriating funds. Never once, y'all. Guess what? None of the saints here ever said that either until Pastor put in their mind. Do you know I had a brother here? Brother Vernon, the guy that's leading this group now. Do you know he told me when he got back? Because I, I heard that part. I didn't look at the video, but people got to him and told me that now your, your people are oppressed. They were supposed to be going to hear about your sins that got you put out of the ministry. But what they heard was a bunch of emotion saying that you've been mistreating them. You've been misappropriating funds. You got them broke, eat, getting the best, and they getting the worst. I'm like, what? They oppressed? I asked Brother Vernon. I said, Brother Vernon, we oppressed now? That's what you're saying? Guess what Brother Vernon's response to me was, y'all? I didn't know I was oppressed until they presented the information to me, Pastor. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give about 30 seconds for that. I'm going to say it again. He said, I didn't know I was oppressed until they presented the information to me. Y'all hearing this? This is crazy, man. And thing is, 
with with the stuff he's saying, right? I've been there, man. I've been there on that side of of the the playing field where accusations are put out there about you. People are saying this, people are saying that, and it's like your name is being all dragged through the mud. Everybody's judging you. And it's like you try to you hope you would hope people have good discernment to recognize when something ain't right, but it don't be that way. You have to literally fight in order to protect your name and and speak about issues, man. But it sounds as if though people were literally manipulated into believing something that isn't true. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's this is not listen, this is nothing to be celebrating. This is nothing to be playing with here. I take these type of things serious, man. Y'all hearing this witchcraft? This is witchcraft at the highest level, y'all. It is. All because one man has it out for me with a King Saul spirit. And anybody ask, what's his, what's his spirit? King Saul. That'd be the best way to describe it. Go look and see what King Saul had towards David. Now, I'm not David. I'm not saying I'm David. No, 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 no. But look at the intent that King Saul had towards David. That's the same exact thing Pastor Dow has towards me. Now, I'm like Pastor Dow says in some of these videos. I ain't done shit to Pastor Dow, y'all. I've done nothing to Pastor Dow. Not one thing besides love him, serve him, be loyal to him, be a blessing to him and his family. I ain't done none of that. So I don't deserve what he's bringing my way. He claims he's doing this for the people. Be careful. Be careful, people. He's trying to protect you people from me. Now, here's the thing. If Pastor Dow believed for all these years that I've been this bad of a person, that I've been manipulating the saints with smooth words and speeches, that's what he's saying I'm doing. I'm concrete. I'm very direct. I ain't smooth at all, in my opinion. Then he's saying that I'm misappropriating funds and I'm taking stuff and hoarding it up for myself. And the saints got nothing. That's what he's saying. If he knew this for years, please justify to me why the Most High could come to Pastor Dow and Elder Becker and tell them, remember Pastor Dow said this, his own words said, a year and a half to two years ago, y'all told him I was a pastor. Mind you, in that time frame, he made me a chief elder. I went from brother to elder to chief elder to now a pastor. How is a man that's wicked taking advantage of the saints and stealing money from them and misappropriating? I got them eating ramen noodles and I'm eating steak. That's what Brother Vernon said. But his ignorant ass just got played like a puppet, Brother Vernon. So sad, brother. And I've been here loving you for decades, bro. It sounds to me like a lot of people did pass the roof as dirty, man. Because he's making valid points, man. This is the thing that you can't even argue against this because he's like, look, if I'm this horrible person, if, if I'm this monster, right, why would Yah turn around and use straightway to ordain me as a pastor. If I'm this horrible person, why? You know? It doesn't make no sense, man. <laughs> but this is what's going on, man. How is the man that is that wicked? And pastor said he knew it, remember? I've been seeing this, I've been doing it, I've been seeing it. Why would y'all tell you to make this man a pastor then? Somebody get in the book. Somebody get in this. And give me scripture showing where a man was totally wicked and another man of y'all knew, but y'all kept telling that man, promote this man, promote this man, promote this man, promote this man. Somebody show it to me in the book. Please send those scriptures to me. I'm not saying I'm a scholar. I definitely study this book. I've been doing it for decades. I definitely know this law. I understand this law, the sentiments of it, the spirit of it. I do. That's why I... You know, I'm trying to figure out what's the point of having moderators if moderators are not taking care of the trolls. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Whereas I got to keep on stopping what I'm doing to block the trolls because the moderators are not paying attention. How many times did I block D nice and moderators are just right there, just kind of just watching around and nobody's blocking uh, what's going on. And like, this is crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. I got I to gotta do all this extra work. I got to keep stopping what I'm doing in order to keep blocking these trolls. Because what I'm going to eventually do is I'm going to put the entire stream on members only. 
That way it's only members in the chat. That way if, if D Nice wanna come, he could sign up. That way I can block him after he signs up. <laughs> and then he could sign up again and pay another fee. That way I can make some money with this. Cause I mean, the person gotta be crazy to keep coming here under fake accounts. Like you're literally a, a, a demon. There's no other way around this. Like nobody, nobody during this live show is taking you serious. You gotta be insane. Right, let's go. Raymond, and so many of you loved me at one time because y'all saw that love of this law come through me and my family. But with one man's words, y'all quickly get away from the book and the love of law and the love of this law and believe what this man says. Knowing that he ain't following the book, knowing that I should be before the people, even in Numbers 15, it said they found this man committing sin. They brought him before the leaders and before the congregation. Even in the very thing they're saying they're using to put me out, they're not following it. But you blindly follow Pastor Dow. You blindly follow Pastor Corey and Pastor Mir. I called them wicked for a reason, y'all. These men were my friends at one time. I called them wicked for a reason because they're doing this to you people. And don't give a flip. They don't care. They don't care. Because they got alts in their heart. I ain't done nothing to Pastor Dow. I ain't done nothing to Pastor Corey. I ain't done nothing to Pastor Mir. I ain't done nothing to Elder McGill. I ain't done nothing to Elder Rob. I ain't done nothing against none of these leaders. None of them. I don't ask them for nothing for my community. I told y'all one time in 14 years, I asked a man to borrow some money. That was just as past uh, Tabernacles in October, y'all. That was Pastor Mir. Guess why I asked him though? Not because the community needed it, because he was going around and you could tell it was, it was genuine, y'all. I'm not trying to slide him on this. It was genuine, but you could tell he wanted to be a blessing to people. They had got money and he wanted to be a blessing to help Israel out. And I saw that spirit on him and y'all said, test it. Now I said instantly to y'all, oh, he gonna pass because it's the same spirit I got. Only difference with him and me is I'd have gave the money and not required it back. Because you know what? Ask all these leaders around here how much I've given them financially when they needed it, what I've done for them, bought them cars, gave them vehicles, done all this kind of equipment, and never asked for any of the money back. Never required it to come back. That's the only difference. But I knew Pastor Man was going to pass that. And I said, Pastor Man, I need to borrow $7,000. Man, before I could get the, get the words out, he had that cash app to me, y'all. Ask Pastor Man how long it took me to get that money back to him. I literally got back home to Georgia and the first trip I took was Indiana and I just went and handed him $7,000 back. He said it was less than two weeks. So I didn't need the money. We didn't need it here. I did it because y'all told me to test that spirit. So I was obedient. Other than that, in the whole 14 years, ask Pastor Dow, ask Elder Becker, ask Elder Kabir, ask, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Elder Mitchell. Uh, I'm naming the people who's been around for a minute. Ask, uh, 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 before that, ask Elder uh, Pastor, Pastor Mir. Ask any man that's over any community, have I ever asked him for anything? Ask him. I told the saints here, if we don't have it, we don't need it. If we don't have it, we don't need it. If y'all ain't provided, it, we good. So maybe that's why he didn't like the growth that we was having at this pace we was having. But here's, here's the facts, y'all. He says Georgia had no fruit under me. We started with one acre of land and one building. This trailer I'm sitting on right now. And it was a barn, y'all. That trailer we got, this lady was using this big old trailer as a barn for all of her animals. She had like 10, 15 different animals, and they could walk in and out of this trailer anytime they wanted. Mother Carol saw it and started crying. She said, I can see what y'all going to do with this. And guess what? It came true. We stripped that thing down to the bare bones of it. Got rid of the animals and I did everything and built it up. And when people come in and out, I guess what they say, is this a trailer? Is this a house? They think it's a house. That's the blessing of Yah. That's us showing Pastor Dowling straightway. We appreciate what they did for us. But we started with one acre of land and one trailer. Now we got seven acres, right? And we got 15, one, one building. We got 15 buildings now. 10 livable spaces. Some would look at that and say, this ain't shit. This ain't no heritage. Okay, I disagree. I totally disagree. I totally disagree. I'm going to go back to this real quick before I end this message because I want you to hear it. Verse 32. I'm still in Numbers 15. Verse 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, this is the people that came out, y'all. They found a man that gathered sticks upon the Shabbat day. And they found him gathering sticks. Uh, and they found him gathering sticks, brought him unto Moses and Aaron, leaders, and all the congregation. Y'all know how many people was out there? Y'all know how many people was in the wilderness? I know y'all seen the guest nations and all that. You know it was lots of folk. They brought this man not just before leadership, but before all the congregation. In other words, why did they bring him to the congregation so that they, the congregation can hear his, his side of whatever the situation is? Because if the people aren't getting the chance of actually hearing like what he's being accused of or what the whole commotion is about, then that's bad. No judgments should be made until the congregation hear what's really going on especially hearing his side of what 
what this is because if they just hear one side that's bad man that's like it it, it really reminds me of the christian church at this point man where the pastor's always right no one else can speak no one can answer question if you do we'll kick you out the church that's what it's looking like and i would hate to think that that's how it is this is why this needs to be resolved because you know the public are gonna they're gonna talk about this now you know yeah no reproach available like a dictatorship um it's a certain word for this man it's like i don't want to use those typical dumb words that people love using but what this thing seems like is like like when somebody just has control over you and you don't have no say that's how it looked that's why it looks bad because it shouldn't be like that And all we're doing is listening to Pastor Rufus videos to see what what's happening here. You know. Let's go. Wow. Verse 34. And they put him inward because it was not declared what should be done to him. And Yahweh said to Moshe, this man shall be surely put to death. Yah put him to death. Not Pastor Dow, not King Dow. Not his minions, his handlers like uh, Pastor Mir. And his lion hype men like Pastor Corey. It wasn't them. It was Yah that put him to death. That's the level of separation Yah was talking about. That's the putting away that Yah was talking about. Or let me get it right. Let me get it right. I'm going to use the exact word. The cutting off. That's the cutting off that Yah was speaking about. So again, if you just follow Pastor Dow's instructions, read a little bit before, go to verse 22. Read a little bit after, go down to verse 36. It will tell you without Pastor Dow or Pastor Corey or Pastor Mears' explanation of what this means, exactly what Yah was doing. This man willfully, because remember, they got set free from Pharaoh. They all knew the commandments. Moshe gave it to him. He taught it to him. He's the lawgiver. Nobody can say they didn't know what the commandments were. This man knew and didn't care. He willingly did it. That's presumptuous. Me going to Pastor Dow, you think I thought I was breaking one of Yah's laws by calling him, sitting right where I'm sitting right now. I'm sitting in the same spot. When I called him and I put it on speakerphone, why did I do that? Because there were young men out here working in the yard and I wanted them to be able to hear what he would say back to me and them hear what I said to him to make sure my spirit didn't get raised up, y'all. And it didn't. And the reason I know it didn't because Pastor Dow after that meeting said, thank you, Pastor Rufus. Ask him if I'm lying. Ask him if I'm lying. He said, thank you, Pastor Rufus. Thank you. This is how this is how I supposed to be like this. Because guess why he said that? I followed the book, y'all. I followed the book. And guess what Pastor Dow told me? He said in that, he said, the only thing I think, Pastor, is that if you lead from out front with the work more, that the brothers will be more motivated. That's all he left me with. And I said, Pastor, I'll do it. And y'all start seeing all the videos. I'm out there showing brothers how to square up buildings. We doing all this stuff. I start doing those videos. But see, my wife was very wise. Mother Jennifer, she said, let's just see if the video stop now. They never stopped. They never stopped. They never stopped, y'all. I don't have an alt in my heart towards Pastor Dow. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, these leaders, I'm trusting for nothing. This high level of witchcraft and manipulation they're doing on you people, it's really sad. It's really sad. None of it makes sense. If I've been this bad of a leader and Pastor Dow knew this for years, why would y'all keep promoting me spiritually? Man, oh man. <laughs> why would y'all keep promoting a man that's wicked spiritually? For what? He's making valid points, man, in the court. I mean, we're here having trial. Um, we is cross-examining the witness, hearing testimony. Why would the Most High promote a man to pass the position if he's evil and wicked? This is crazy. This is why I'm saying this got to get resolved, man. This needs to be resolved. So, you know, I'm pretty sure this is this video going to get back to Pastor Dow. Trust and believe that. Probably had several people. Ringo made a video. Ringo this, Ringo that. 
this needs to be resolved because there is no way that you could tell me that the Most High made Rufus a pastor under straightway. But now he's being accused of this and put out of the congregation. And it is alleged that he's get, he's been given 30 days to get off some sort of property or something like that. So it's like, you got to be a real strong man or woman in this truth to really be able to recover after stuff like this. Because stuff like this is supposed to um, make you leave the faith. It's supposed to make it's supposed to break you to the point where it's like, you know what? I don't want to have nothing to do with nobody. I'm I'm done with this madness. You know. But this is what's going on in today's day. Anyway, let's get back to an elder. To a chief elder, Pastor Dow started calling me that in front of all y'all. And then Pastor Dow and Elder uh, Becker said, y'all told them I was a pastor. How would y'all make me a pastor? Well, I'm in the midst of stealing from the saints. Because I got a shoe collection that I had since 2011. Because I got a gun collection that actually turned into like a business. It benefited Israel, let's put it that way. Not a business, it didn't turn into a business. Because I can't say that on camera. I can't do that. But it benefited all of Israel, not just me. Not just me. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm eating steak and the saints are eating Raymond noodles. First off, they're unclean, y'all. They would never be on this land. Secondly, there's no low-based food on this community. We grow our own meat. We get our chickens that we grow. We get the beef from Elder Brent that he grows. 100% organic. What's, what are we talking about? What are we trying to project when Brother Vernon makes a statement to an elder saying he eating steak and we eat Raymond noodles. What is he trying to say? Y'all know where the steak comment comes from? Because my family, y'all saw the weight we lost at the last, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, feast. The whole family lost weight. We on a carnivore diet that we saw Elder Becker do well, that we saw Brother Emiliano do well, and that's why we went on it. Ain't Pastor Dial on the fat folk? We was trying to do something about it. So you eat meat. What he don't get is that Emiliano was still on the carnivore, Brother Tim was still on the carnivore. They were on a special diet that his wife been on since the day she got here. His second wife been on a special diet ever since she got here. And we make provisions for them to be able to accommodate that diet. But the perception in his mind after this stuff been infused by Pastor Dow is he getting more and we getting less. Now, I could flip this and show y'all who is actually that. Because I tell the people all the time, if there's someone throwing a bunch of accusations at you, that's what they're actually doing. So what y'all need to do is go back and look at what Pastor Dow is actually doing. You need to go back and look at them. All these things he's saying I'm doing, look at him carefully and make sure he's not doing them. Because guess what? I don't, I'm not riding around here in $80,000 brand new cars that's got $10,000 rims and $7,000 sound systems in them. I'm not. I got a 2013 Audi over here, y'all. It's 11 years old. I got a 2006 uh, Lincoln truck sitting here. 2006. 2006, y'all. Just bought a 2015, a couple months ago, Nissan Vanna. 2015. That's almost a 10-year-old vehicle. That's what I'm driving, y'all. That's what I'm driving in my family. I'm not driving brand new Ram trucks that cost $100,000 and put $20,000 lift kits on them. That's not what I'm doing. That's not what I'm doing. You understand what I'm saying? That's not what I'm doing. My gun collection was for all of Israel to pick through. Y'all brothers know I'm telling the truth. How many of y'all have come here, called me, whatever, and been able to pillage it any way you want? Get exactly what you're looking for because I had it in that collection and I thought the collection was yours as well as mine. It was never just mine. I treated it like it was yours as well. And, I, and contrary to popular belief, guess what? I did not build that gun collection off of community money. Listen, man. He's making a lot of key points because, remember, he's being accused of things. He's like, look, you know, the cars that I drive are not no brand, brand new, new. I'm using old model cars. So if, if I'm doing some dirt with money, you know, you would see it. And, man, this is just not looking good, man. This is why you got to listen to testimonies and hear what's going on, man. You know? This is crazy, man. I didn't know about no trucks and $100,000 trucks and all this other stuff. I mean... I mean, if you... I mean, if you earn the money and you're able to buy what you want to buy, that's that's your personal business, but... 
the man is being accused of, I guess, taking money or a legend. I, I don't know, man. He's what he's trying to prove here is look, if I'm if that if I'm that guy, where's my luxury trucks? Where's my luxury cars? Why am I still driving a, a late model car if I'm, you know, I guess fleecing the flock? I hope I hope that's not what I hope nobody is fleecing the flock, man, because then I'm I'm gonna definitely have to start to expose that because, you know, the last thing any fleecing of the flock should be is in Israel. Like Y'all going to give me content. You know? This is crazy, man. You know? I mean, in the process of him proving or sharing his testimony, you know, he... he a few jabs here and there, but that's normal. You know, you you, you got to do that in, in this... You got to do that. Because if you're being accused... You're going to you're going to eventually say some stuff like, look, well, what about your truck? You know, your truck costs one hundred thousand. I don't know if it costs one hundred thousand. I'm just listening to what he's saying. You know, he's making points. In other words, if I'm robbing everybody, if I'm do taking advantage. How come I don't have the latest model car? And you do. So it's like. You know. And if you listen to what he said, when people normally do these things, it's because they're really speaking about themselves. So it's like, oh, man. It's crazy, man. People need answers, y'all. People definitely need answers. They need to find out what's going on. We need to hear from Pastor Dow regarding this issue. My thing is I just hope that these guys can restore. And um and even if even if you don't like let's say for example, let's say they reconcile, everything is good. Right? Me personally, even if y'all are able to reconcile and everything is good to Pastor Rufus, I wouldn't switch back my name. Like how you had your name straightway, um, so and so and so, I wouldn't switch back my name. I'll leave it as I put it. Because restoration or reconciliation needs to happen. But after that, um, I wouldn't switch my name back. I'll keep it as it is for various reasons, right? And, um, if the parties restore and reconcile, there got to be some some real honor and conversations about how to move. Like, this, it, this should never happen. Never happen. All of this should be talked about and dealt with privately where it's out of the public eye. The only time it becomes a public affair is when two men try to talk privately and for whatever reason... There no, there's no agreement. So now you got to bring that into the public because now when you bring it into the public, it's going to get messy. That's why I'm trying to make a video as, as clean as I can, you know, so that we can get both sides of what's going on. You know? Let's go. Back to the tapes. It built itself. It really did. And I can break it down. It built itself. And I got blessed by a lot of men. Five different men. And I can give you their names and you can call them and ask them. Gave me over 50 guns between those five men. And I flipped and turned those into what you saw today was my gun collection. Now, guess what? I done sold 60% of it. Because when Pastor Dow took the money away from the community, we need to have money coming in. Because Brother Tim wasn't making the money. And the debt community, the debt business wasn't making the money the way it should. So the money had to come in somewhere. Emiliano was the only brother that was actually bringing in real money. He was. So it still went to Israel. That thing went from, from, from maybe 70 guns. I got less than 20 now, y'all. But it's always been Israel's. And it's never been built off of community money. Never. Oh, I got the receipts too. I got the receipts, y'all. <laughs> I got the receipts. If they manipulated you when it comes to the law of presumptuousness, 
What else have they manipulated you on? Because this is clear. When you read verses 22 to verses 36, it's extremely clear. I don't qualify for that. I didn't shun the law of Yah. I didn't act presumptuously, willingly. If I was presumptuous, because there's some people out there say, you weren't even presumptuous, Pastor. If I was, it was through ignorance. And there's a sin offering for that forgiveness. Just like today. I heard it. I heard it, y'all. I heard it. I listened to that part. I didn't listen to it about 15 minutes of today. But I did hear that part when Pastor Dow was reading this today. And he went through his little soliloquy about being cut off, being cut off. And he said, oh, if it's your best friend, Teacher Shane said, cut him off. He said, if it's this and this, cut him off. He's a leader. Cut him off. Pastor Dow got to the part. He said, if he repents, Teacher Shane didn't say nothing. You're supposed to say cut him off. Book don't say that. Book don't say that. Book don't say that. Because for one, a presumptuous man that's willingly doing it, he ain't going to repent. You don't hear nothing in this story about that man picking up sticks, try to save his life by repenting. You don't hear it. But a man do something in ignorance and then it's brought to the light. He repents. He repents. <laughs> Y'all heard how many times I repented past that. I repented the next day. It happened on a Thursday evening. I repented Friday afternoon. Then we go a full week later to the first day, that Sunday, I repented again in front of all the leaders that was there. I'll tell you the leaders, Pastor Dow, Elder, Be uh, Elder Mitchell, uh, uh, Pastor Corey, Elder McGill, Elder Becker, myself, Elder Brent, Pastor Mir, and Elder Rob. Now y'all go to those men and ask them. When Pastor Dow said at the end of that meeting, I want to hear what all y'all got to say before I give my final word. And that's exactly the same way I feel too at uh, Limited Tag Live. It says, seeing stuff like this just makes me want to stick to myself. That's exactly how I am. Same thing. When I see stuff like this, I just want to just be by myself. I don't want to be a part of nothing. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to know nobody. I just want to just stay to myself. Because when you stay to yourself, you stay out of trouble. You know what I mean? Like, you don't got to deal with stuff like this when you rock, like, roll solo and you're not a part of nothing. Because you don't have no time to... To get into no problems, you just with yourself, you know. That that's I feel the same way, man. Every single one of those leaders said that what they heard that day, they believe. Elder Mitchell started. He said, "I believe everything past uh, past Rufus saying is sincere. I believe he's sincere in his repentance and everything." Every other leader agreed. Even the wicked ones and Pastor Corey and Pastor Mir, they agreed that what they heard from me that day was sincere. Guess what Pastor Dow did, y'all? He pulled out a list. He had fifteen, twenty scriptures. He said, "I don't believe it." It's still in his heart. And he started reading all these messages, these scriptures that he had printed out well before coming to the meeting and said, this is how I'm moving forward with him. So y'all tell me this, did I have any chance in that meeting then? If Pastor Dow had 15, 20 scriptures already printed out and then he heard every single leader say, this man's sincere. And he says, nope, this is what I believe. So either we got a problem with the leadership and all of them are dumb and can't understand scripture or, or, or don't have the Holy Spirit or we got a problem with Pastor Dow. Which one is it, y'all? Ask those leaders. Let's see if they lie now. Ask everyone of my name. Elder Mitchell, Pastor Corey, and Elder McGill. Ask Elder Becker. Ask Pastor Mir and Elder Rob. Ask them. They're there with y'all at the feast. And see, all of this could have been avoided if this could have been resolved and he could have been brought before the congregation and, and literally speak these things in front of the public, you know? That way, people can hear what is going on. But see, like, by these videos being produced, you're going to have people talking crap. But what else, is, what else is the man to do? If his name is getting dragged out there and people are making up stories and lies, it becomes a forest fire. And now it's like if you become overwhelmed with trying to prove yourself to everybody. And it's like, we shouldn't even have to be dealing with this type of stuff, man. We should be more mature in handling these issues. Ask them. Did not at the end of that meeting, all of them agreed that what they heard from me that day in that meeting, they thought I was sincere. And I repented in that meeting publicly to Pastor Dollar again in front of all of them. Saying my intent was not to usurp your authority, to degrade you or make you feel bad, Pastor Dow. You're my friend. I actually did to you what you did to me. It just didn't go out the same way. I'm actually following your leadership because he did it for me in 2014, y'all. He saw a spirit on me. And guess what? He followed the book. He came to me and said, uh, Elder, I see a spirit on you. I'm like, huh, what? Yeah, man, we're going to get it. I'm like, Pastor, uh, really? He's like, yeah. 
I'm going home. We leaving from fellowship. We used to come once a month. I go all the way home for weeks, y'all. I'm like, what? I don't see it. What's going on? I'm trying to find out what the spirit is. He calls me out of the blue. Be here tomorrow. At this time, bring your whole family. And I did. Showed up the next day. We didn't have all the leaders then, y'all. So it was my whole family, Pastor Dow's whole family, and Elder Becker's whole family. Ask those people. And the pastor's family at that time was Nellie and uh, 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 um, uh, Mother Carol. Nellie and Mother Carol. Ask them. Ask uh, Elder Becker and Sister Diane. Ask them. They were all in that meeting. Ask anybody in my family. Mother Jennifer, ask them. Pastor Dow provoked me until that spirit came out. And when it came out, he said, everybody see it? And everybody like, yep. And then he said, did y'all see that too? And they were like, yes. He said, good, meeting over. That second thing they saw was as soon as I recognized that spirit, when it came out, I did, I, I recognized it instantly. I instantly repented, y'all, without saying a word. He could see it. And that's why he said, you see that too? And they were like, yep. He said, oh, meeting over. Everybody got up and left. We didn't discuss it no more. It's never been brought up again. And if you want to know my heart behind it, go back to 2014. I did a, a message called Repent. He made me get up in the pulpit and preach it. He didn't tell me to preach repentance. He just said, it's time for you to preach. But he knew what I was going to preach on. And y'all put on me to show the saints how to truly repent by coming with an offering. Go back and look at the message. That was done by the book. I tried to do the same thing to him that he did to me. But I guess since he's king thou, I can't do that. I'm being presumptuous and getting out of line. See, when I read this book, y'all, the only person that is unapproachable in this book is a king. And this is why I'm saying this. Y'all think I'm throwing shots at Pastor Dow. I'm not. The moves and the decisions that he's making, the decrees that he's putting out, they're king moves. And we're at fault because we made him this as a people. We've put him in this position. But he's making king moves. And to me, when I y'all show me, show me somebody else in this book that cannot be approached. I've seen Moshe. I've seen Abraham. I've seen all these men, all the disciples, even the Messiah himself. Look how the Sadducees and Pharisees talk to him. He is the king. He's the creator. Look how they talk to him. Which one of them got put away? Which one of them died instantly? Which one? The only person you cannot do this with that I read in this book is a king. You do it to a king, your head off. And that's why I'm using that language. Not to slight Pastor Dow. He's moving and operating like a king. And y'all are allowing him to. I love him enough to tell him the truth. I even wore that hat that day and he got offended by that. I had a hat that said Galatians 4.16 on it. I just threw it down on the table. At the end, he looked, look, look at it. Look at the spirit on it. And he pointed to the hat. Nobody even paid attention to the damn hat but him. And they had, it was a hat that they gave us in Wisconsin. Brother Galen gave us hats in Wisconsin. I just wore it. It was black. All I had on was black. I just wore it. Look at that. Look at it. Look at the spirit on him. But I do love you enough, Pastor Dow, to tell you the truth. And you know I was on point when I called you December 9th at 9.09 a.m. that morning. That's why you thanked me. He said... He said December 9th. We in March. So this issue, this issue been going on for a minute. So while everybody's praising the Lord, having meetings and services, this been going on behind the scenes. That means strife been building up. Strife on strife. And it's just been building up and brewing. And the whole time, the people thinking everybody just loved the most high and we're just all together. Now, what has happened since then is the King Saul spirit. And you've trumped up all these charges against me. I'm not that sinner that you present me to be. And I'm not that liar, deceiver, misappropriating the funds guy, oppressor of the people that you present me to be. These saints here, these two brothers here that didn't bit that shit hook, line, and sinker, because I'm not blaming all the Georgia saints. It's two brothers. It's two brothers here that really bit that well. And even Brother Tim, I got to say this. From every, all the feedback I'm getting, they told me that in that meeting, even after all that Pastor Corey going up and down the aisles, rah-rah, firing everybody up and all this kind of stuff, you still was standing on business. They said, no, no, Pastor, I think he was still with you. This is Sunday, last Sunday. And I said, you know what? They got him then. Afterwards, somebody must have talked to him. And while he was in his tent, somebody must talk to him. Why? Because they said, Tim said in that meeting, I got to go back and talk to pastor. They didn't want him to go back and talk to me, y'all. You know how I know that? Tim never came back and talked to me. I was gone, though. I ended up leaving Sunday to go to Texas to handle business down there. But guess what? He could call. He could text anything. Tim didn't reach out to me Sunday. He didn't reach out to me Monday. I sent him a text on Monday telling him that I still had a, a card that his wife had that I would get it back to him. He said, yes, sir. Then Tuesday morning, I got the text. Y'all want to see it. Tuesday morning, like 830. He texted me with a whole bunch of demands, y'all. Now, does that sound like a man that want to hear my side? Or he done already made his decision? 
got stuff in your heart, man. I can't do nothing about that. I can't do nothing about that if you don't come to me. Brother Vernon was repenting to me, saying that I held things in and I never came to you, Pastor. Even though the door was always open, you've always been a friend to me, I just didn't come to you. That's my fault. That's my fault. Brother Vernon, I'm going to do this for you because I love you. I love you. I do. I love you too, Tim, but I'm doing this for Brother Vernon right now. Right now for Brother Vernon. Pastor Dow's own words is that a man that's 50 something years old shouldn't even think about starting a new community. He's got you all gassed up that this, what we did here was nothing. And that's just a damn lie, Brother Vernon. This is incredible work we've done. Ask Elder Mitchell what he thinks about this work we've done in Georgia. You don't think it's nothing. We got nothing. You said that to me. We ain't got no inheritance. What we got? So now you got you gassed up to go out here and buy 10, 15, 20 acres of land and start a new community. You're 56, 57 years old. When he clearly says, that's too old for a man to be doing it. Now, Brother Vernon, I know this about you. You got two wives now. I know you're working on the third one. You ain't fooled me. You got three babies, young daughters, and one on the way, Brother Vernon. So you want to take on another wife and another small infant child and start a community? It'll be the death of you, brother. It'll be the death of you. Now, I'm not speaking curses on my brother at all. Bump all you religious BSers that think I'm trying to speak a curse on Brother Vernon. There is no curse going on Brother Vernon, nor his family, because I love the Matthews. I've always told them the truth face to face. Even when he took such Denise at 60 years old, he took a 60-year-old woman to wife, y'all. I set him, Denise, and Damaris down and told them the truth, because I love them. I'm loving you enough to tell you the truth now, brother. You take on this community, you take on that extra wife, and you take on that extra child, what you can't do nothing about that child, it's coming. It'll be the death of you, brother. It'll be the death of you. And guess what? King Dow don't give a shit. He don't care. He don't care two bits about you. And I've been telling you that. That driving him towards me, he wants to see me destroyed. He will be happy if I died today. He would. Problem is, y'all don't feel the way Pastor Dow feels. And we good. He's made sure of it. Man, he's made sure of it. He's made sure of it even sent blessings among and I ain't talking about financial stuff I'm talking about blessings to just encourage me to let me know I'm with you still son I'm with you yeah you're gonna tweak some things as you move forward because you 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 kind of too honest with the people you tell them too much they little spirits can't handle it and that's what Paul experienced that's what made him say what Galatians 4 16 is am I your enemy because I'm telling you the truth I'm experiencing the same thing that Paul was experiencing I didn't expect this video to be this long but it is it's y'all's will go back over this video several times Find out where I lied. Someone else make a video coming against this showing where I misappropriated these, these, these scriptures. Show it to me. Remember, follow the instructions you've been given. Don't just listen to what you hear. Go back a little before and a little after. The Bible interprets itself. I don't need a man to interpret it for me. I don't need a man to read verse 30 and then tell me what that means. Verse 31 says, because it's been explained to you. Keep reading. And it, it, it not only explains it, it gives you an example. <laughs> I don't fit that example. I wasn't trying to start my own ministry. I wasn't trying to be greater than any of these men. Look at my face when they told me I was a pastor, y'all. Let's just deal with facts. Go back at the video and look at my face when they told me I was a pastor. Look at what has happened to me from being a pastor. You think I want to be a damn pastor? You if you look back at the video where we was talking and Pastor Dow said what he said, he was literally almost shocked, like, 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 like I didn't even want this. You know what I mean? Like, like, come on, me? That's how it was. You know? This stuff is crazy, man. He also said something here. Let me see. He don't care two bits about you. And I've been telling you that. That driving him towards me, he wants to see me destroyed. He will be happy if I died today. He would. Problem is, y'all don't feel the way Pastor Dow feels. And we good. He's made sure of it. Man, he's made sure of it. He's made sure of it. He even sent blessings among. And I ain't talking about financial stuff. I'm talking about blessings to just encourage me, to let me know I'm with you still, son. I'm with you. But the thing is, he have to defend himself, even if it's tough to listen to, even if, you know, even if it even even if it makes Pastor Dow even more upset or more mad and more offended, he still got to speak his, he got to, he got to share what he got to share, man. At the end of the day, you can't stay quiet, man. 
not when your name is being thrown around and people looking at you as a monster. Nah, man, you got to you got to speak your piece. You know, you got to speak your mind and you got to put things out there. Remember, this could have been handled behind the scenes now. He tried to handle it behind the scenes. That's you can't say that Rufus didn't try to handle this behind the scenes. He tried to handle this behind the scenes. You know, because a lot of times people keep throwing scriptures around like, well, why don't he just handle it behind the scenes? Nobody's listening to him. You get what I'm saying? Nobody's listening. Let's go. Yeah, you're going to tweak some things as you move forward because you you, you, you kind of too honest with the people. You tell them too much. They little spirits can't handle it. And that's what Paul experienced. That's what made him say what Galatians 4, 16 is. Am I your enemy because I'm telling you the truth? I'm experiencing the same thing that Paul was experiencing. We I didn't expect this do. video to be this long, but it is. It's y'all's will. Go back over this video several times. Find out where I lied. Someone else make a video coming against this showing where I misappropriated these, these, these scriptures. Show it to me. Remember, follow the instructions you've been given. Don't just listen to what you hear. Go back a little before and a little after. The Bible interprets itself. That's exactly how when I do my scripture reading, if you notice, anytime I'm reading scripture, anytime I open the Bible, I'm always telling you, let's read a little bit before and a little bit after. You never just read one Bible verse. You don't, don't ever do that. You got to get the context of what's going on. That's why it says to rightly divide the word of truth. You got you get what I mean? Um, you have to um, preach the word. Um uh, rightly divided, um, here a little, there a little, um, you know, precept upon precept. You can't just take one Bible verse and then preach on that. Well, I'm going to preach on chapter such and such verse so-and-so. No, you got to look at the context of how and what is being said. Because one verse, you can take everything out of context. If you just, you can literally pull a Bible verse out of context and mislead everybody. That's why when you read the Bible, you have to look at it from um, a little bit before, a little bit after. You know? That's what you have to do, man. Uh, why are you telling us about Baltimore Bridge and all this other stuff? I don't care. Like, pack that person up, please. Just, just get that person up out of here. Just... Like, what, what the hell do I care about a ship colliding with a damn bridge? I don't care. What are you telling me for? Like, what's the matter with everybody? Everybody crazy? Like, what's the matter with these people? People over here are sick, man. Like, y'all just come in the streams, like, telling us stuff about some damn bridge. Like, I don't care what collapsed, man. I don't need a man to interpret it for me. I don't need a man to read verse 30 and then tell me what that means. Verse 31 says, because it's been explained to you. Keep reading. And it, it, it not only explains it, it gives you an example. <laughs> I don't fit that example. I wasn't trying to start my own ministry. I wasn't trying to be greater than any of these men. He said he wasn't trying to start his own ministry. He wasn't trying to be greater than any of these men. He wasn't here for none of that stuff. You know, yeah, it's a lot of distractions, man. That's why with this whole P. Diddy thing, you have a bunch of trolls People coming into the chat posting stupid stuff that have nothing to do with the topic. Like, who comes over here to tell me about some damn, uh, 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 some boat or ship crashing? I don't care. I don't care about none of that stuff. Right now, I'm doing the most highest work. You know what I mean? The only ones that are supposed to be caring about some damn boat crashing and some damn bridge is the police and the emergency services. I don't care about that. It has nothing to do with me. Some dumb stuff that people be doing, man. Look at my face when they told me I was a pastor, y'all. Let's just deal with facts. Go back at the video and look at my face when they told me I was a pastor. Look at what has happened to me from being a pastor. You think I want to be a damn pastor? You think I desire to be a pastor at all? Brother Vernon, with his deceived ass, would tell you also, because he was in the house when I became an elder. I literally hid behind a piano, y'all. I literally hid. Pastor said, get your ass up. I pity anybody that wants these positions. I do. You a fool to me. I know what it said about that bishop stuff and all that. I don't find nothing in the Torah matching that, though. I don't. Somebody may help me. Somebody may help me. But I don't find anything in the Torah that matches that. So I don't necessarily go with it. 
there's something in the New Testament alone and I can't match it to the Torah, mm -mm, I don't roll with it. I don't think it's good for you to Because guess what? Look in the Torah. Look how many people ran from their callings. That don't match. Being a bishop didn't do it. And they never call them bishops. Y'all y'all getting what I'm saying? This is a fearful thing, man. And guess what I'm fearful of now? All of y'all losing your faith. Because once this truth come out and you get it and you see what the leadership did willingly, presumptuously, <laughs> when you see what Pastor Dow, Pastor Corey, and Pastor Muir did, what's straightway then? What is straightway? What is it? See what they're going to tell you. Don't go listen to him. Don't go listen to him. Why? I ain't telling y'all not to listen to them. I'm just telling y'all what they're lying about. I'm not trying to. Um, to everybody that's in the chat, um, Pastor Rufus is actually in the chat right there. Now, again, here we have another situation. He's in the chat, right? Now, what I've always been taught is that if a man, if a man is guilty of something, if a man has something to hide, he won't be here. He wouldn't be, he wouldn't even show no face. He's in the chat. He said, Really appreciate you doing this video, my brother. Blessings. The reason why I'm doing this video here is, again, I want the truth to go out. I would like to see these men uh, clear the air, you know, do this behind closed doors, um, reconcile, say what needs to be said, and, 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 there needs to be witnesses around so we so y'all could capture the moment and be like, look, this is to never happen again. You know, because the people need to see unity amongst leaders and and whatnot. Like I said, I played the video tapes. I saw the, the, the brother being ordained as a pastor. I heard Pastor Dow speak highly of him, said this is a good Israelite man. Love this man. So with those words, you can't take those words back. It's on video. So how does a man get ordained as a pastor if he's a horrible person? If Yah sanctioned this, how all of a sudden now he's a horrible person now? Go unsubscribe. No. No, I don't believe that. And I'm glad, um, I believe it's Elder Brent, I believe his name is. My apologies if I'm pronouncing it wrong. But I'm glad that he also have integrity. Because like I said, man, doing this video is not easy, man. <laughs> Those of y'all that's on the outside looking in, this, is, this video is not entertainment. This is not entertainment. I, I highly respect the likes of a pastor Dow, and um, I would never want to be making videos like this. And I'm sure the other men, they don't want to be making these kind of videos, man. It's the last thing they gotta want to make, but you gotta make these videos because if something is being done unjustly, it needs to be addressed. So. Throughout this entire stream, listen, first of all, I'm tired right now. I want to go get some rest. I'm, I'm tired. You could probably see it on my face. You could see it in my eyes. I'm tired. You know what I mean? But the Most High said, go make the video. What am I to do? Say no? Fam, I've been streaming now going on six hours. Six hours. At around the three hour mark, I literally was going to tell y'all, we'll continue this tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm hearing the most high saying, no, you ain't. You're going, you're going to go through the whole stream. Then you could go get some rest. <laughs> so it's like, this has to be done because... There's a possibility that through this live stream, these men would reconcile and the Most High may say something from 
from my voice that will hit and make a change. Because if 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 this video stream don't make these men reconcile. And we already know Pastor Rufus want to clear the air and do what needs to be done. It's clear. It's very, very clear. I, I didn't see nothing. Listen, I'm using all of my ability to find the mess by reading people. And I'm looking at the videos. I'm examining the tapes. I'm watching body language. This man is being truthful. There was a misunderstanding. There was some things done, some things said. You probably have some other men in Pastor Dow's ears gossiping, which is another problem. People slandering, bearing false witness, sharing things they have no business saying. I've already had all of this type of stuff done to me. I know what this is like, man. I know what this is like, man. Oh, so it's Elder, Elder Brent. Elder Brent. Um, Krago, he left too. I, see, the thing is, I'm glad that he... Um, I'm glad that he made that decision. And the reason why I'm glad he made the decision is because what it shows is that there are still men of integrity because if he didn't do that, if he didn't make that decision and it was just past the roof is by himself, it'll look one way to the people. The people would judge, uh, they would, they would judge wrongfully because they'll look at it like, wait a minute. Pastor Rufus is standing by himself. All the other elders and everybody is with straightway. Yeah, he must be guilty. But for Elder Brent to say, you know what? I don't like what I'm seeing. This is unjust. Something ain't right. I'm stepping down. That was a chess move right there. Because now what it does, it tells the, the, the followers of the Most High, the saints, that, hey, if he made this decision, we got to really keep our eyes open. Because, again, nobody's perfect. We strive towards perfection. The Bible says, be ye therefore perfect, as your heavenly Father is in heaven is perfect. So, we're going to do things that's going to be out of pocket. All I'm saying is this, man. If Pastor Dowell is wrong, repent. Repent. There's nothing wrong with that. Repent, come clean, acknowledge things. No man is above reproach. No man is above criticism. You know, because Pastor Rufus, is he, he said it a thousand times. If, if, if I'm guilty and the men in the church agree the elders agree, all the leaders agree that I'm a monster, then, hey, I'll leave if they all agree. But if there's no agreement, how can y'all pass judgment? It's not being handled based on the scriptures. He's made his point. That's like going to court today in the real world and you know, you were treated unfairly and you, you had poor representation, you know, certain information was omitted from the, the, the proceedings. And it's like, look, we, what about the evidence from the file? Oh, we don't care about that. But that, that's what's going to help me to go free. That's my life is, in, is on the line here. Nah, we don't need to hear that evidence. Imagine being on trial like that. You know? Oh, you fell asleep? Shoot, I was nearly falling asleep just now. Y'all probably caught it, too. Y'all, I was like this, and I said like this. And I caught myself, got back up quick, because I don't want to be on nobody's show, you know? <laughs> I don't want to be on nobody's show falling asleep. But, um, 
this right here, man, I, I really hope that um, Pastor Rufus, I mean, pa yeah, Pastor Rufus and uh, Pastor Dow is able to go behind the scenes with uh, Elder Brent, all the other uh, elders and leaders, and just have a private a private meeting, no bochinche, no gossiping, no none of that mess. And to listen, y'all, listen, man. See, here's the thing, man. Yesterday, I believe Pastor Dow went live, and um, they had service. And I think around the beginning of it, I kind of clicked on it, see what's what's being said. And he said something about we got to forgive, you know, the people that offended us and X, Y, and Z. And and when I heard that part, man, I, I, started, I started to shake my head because I'm like, you got this cloud over the church right now. And none of that stuff was resolved. Like, it's almost like, why are we even trying to praise the most high? And we're down here doing evil, man. Like, like this is just not, this is evil. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, hey, I, hey, I, I get it. You know, I'm just, I'm just doing my part. You know, if, even if you have to move on and do your thing, you know, at least we can see that y'all are able to reconcile. In other words, because we hear a lot about forgive. We hear a lot about stuff like that. And people say it. And, and they, you know, people, people will say those things. And I'm not saying you personally, but a lot of times we hear people say those things and people, everybody say it. Everybody say the same thing. You know, I forgive them. I forget them. But then we're not cool no more. You know what I mean? But if you have to move on, then it is what it is. But at the same time, the people really need to see that this issue got resolved. And yes, the damage the, the damage can be very severe. That's the thing. That's the thing about these things that I don't like is that the damage be so bad. And, and all y'all that are on the outside looking in, listening in, it sounds easy to say reconcile and all of that stuff, even though that's what I'm saying too. But when the damage has been done, <sighs> stuff is not easy, man. Stuff is not easy, man. It's like, reputations you have to understand men's livelihoods reputations family name all of that stuff it's embarrassing people getting put on the spot nobody want to be there man nobody want to be like nobody want to be in that position man that's why i don't like stuff like this and the reason why i gotta address it because i know this is a painful thing to have to be dealing with man this is not nothing, nothing that's easy to talk about. It takes men of integrity to actually talk about these things. That's why I tried. I Listen, I think I've been very good with the way I presented this particular stream. And um, put the case out there. Because, again, I didn't watch all the other videos, but based on the testimony from Pastor Rufus, you know, and I'm sure there's other videos that probably went into details where maybe Pastor Dow might have said some things. And um, I don't got time to look at all of those different videos. All I'm focusing on is what I've seen, which is talking about property, land, who name is on what, and who's taking funds and all this other stuff. And go to his page and unsubscribe. That right there is wrong because the man, the man went out there, went out of his way to help when the, when Pastor Dollar Channel got demonetized, man. 
said, hey, everybody, go join the Patreon. That's a good look right there. So to see Pastor Dow say, hey, unsubscribe from the man channel. Why? Why should everybody? Why? Why should anybody unsubscribe? That's wrong. Because if you got an issue, that's between you and him. It has nothing to do with us. Has nothing. This man didn't murder nobody. This man didn't kill nobody, kids. It's a disagreement. I have not, imagine, imagine I have a disagreement with New Breed. So because I'm pissed, I come on my channel. Hey, everybody, go unsubscribe. Go unsubscribe. Go unsubscribe from them. And if you don't, we enemies now. Can't do that. That's wrong. You know? Look at there. He lost 200 subscribers. 200. Now, think about this, y'all. I believe he have under, um, I think he have under 10,000 subs or like 8,000 or something like that, I believe. To lose 200 subscribers. That's a lot. That's a lot. Now, what if I said, hey, everybody that supported Pastor Dow's paint Patreon because I raised my hand and said, go support. You know, go pull your support. Everybody that subscribed to his channel. Hey, you know what? Go unsubscribe. What if I did that? That would be that would be wicked. That's evil. Why, why would I do that? And I'm not saying go do that. I'm not saying go do that. What I'm trying to show you is the power of doing that. That's misusing power. Because Pastor Dow has influence. So his words carry weight. So when he say stuff like that, you got some people that are so weak weak that they just go with it rather than saying hold up wait a minute now why i gotta go unsubscribe from him for i like watching this video well what, what did he do to me that i gotta go unsubscribe that's controlling that's when you're being controlling that means people don't have no way of thinking for themselves that's what i escaped when i left the christian church i escaped that Because I remember hearing Creflo Dollar. And if those who want to know when I left the Christian church, what pastor was I uh, following was Creflo Dollar. From the year 1995 on up to about 2005. Right? When it hit 2006, I registered on YouTube but I was in the process of transitioning, leaving the Christian church. But I used to defend Creflo Dollar even while on YouTube in 2006. I was defending him. I had the Christian community roasting me because of my association with Creflo Dollar and the prosperity gospel, all of that stuff. I used to push that mess. So you could say between 2006 and 2007, I was in transition and leaving the Christian uh, religion or whatever that Christianity stuff. I was literally in transition. You know what I mean? Because I'm getting the truth about being a biblical Israelite. I'm starting to read the Bible by myself, but I started transitioning out of them churches. And eventually, by the time it hit like around 2008, I mean, even even around 2007, 2008, I was already talking about I'm an Israelite. So I left because of a lot of that that controlling mechanism. And again, I'm not dissing past the dial. All I'm saying is if you wrong, own it. If you wrong, own it. You know? Own what it is, man. Own what it is. Because the public and the people are out here crying. They're hurting. It can't, this can't be about names and titles and and um can't be about that, man. So he said he have under 5,000 subs. 
if he have under 5,000 subs and lost 200 subs, that's a lot of subscribers to lose, man. And that just goes to show that the 200 who actually unsubscribed from you, they're wicked. They're wicked. Because nobody could tell me to unsubscribe from somebody and I'm going to go do that. <laughs> I'm going to laugh at you if you tell me to unsubscribe. I'm like, who do you, who, who, what? How are you going to tell an adult, go unsubscribe from so-and-so? I'm upset with them. I got a problem with them. So therefore, you got to have a problem with them too. No, that's not biblical. That's not biblical right there. You know? Makes no sense. Nobody should have unsubscribed from you. Because those folks who unsubscribe, I hope you're watching this stream. And I hope you get convicted by the most high. Because he's going to judge you. Matter of fact, listen. Listen to this very carefully. And when I say things, they come to pass. When I say things, they come to pass. Listen to this very carefully. If you're a subscriber and you actually left, right, the most high going to judge you where it hurts. He's going to do that. You know why? Because Pastor Rufus have seed in the ground. He made a video telling everyone of his subscribers to go and subscribe to Pastor Dow's Patreon. So for you to pull your support, pull your subscription from him, it's going to affect Pastor Dow. That's right. This is why this is a dangerous game. It's a very dangerous game to play. Because he promoted Pastor Dow's Patreon. So for you folks to leave and unsubscribe, you're wicked. You're evil. There's no other way to put it. You're evil. And this is going to bring a bad name upon Straightway. The public is going to find this out. Other people are going to be making content. And judgment is going to come. And judgment must begin at the house of the Lord. This is going to be a very, very tough time. And I'm doing my part to sound the alarm. I don't care who's offended. I don't care who's mad. Nobody controls me. Nobody can tell me what to do. Nobody can tell me nothing. I do what the most high say to do. And nobody's above criticism. All I'm saying is men of the Lord need to be men of truth. And they need to repent. They need to reconcile. Damage was done, so there's going to be a lot of healing that's needed. Um, disappointment happened. Reputations have been tarnished. And that's not something that is easy to just wipe away. This is why when people talk about forgiveness, like me personally, I'm just telling you, like from me personally, me, this is just me. I'm not forgiving shit. Do you understand me? That's me. I'm saying me. Because when you do something to me, you need to repent. Ain't going to be all of this forgiving this and that and that. We're going to hash this thing out like men. And we're going to make people see it. Because ain't none of us can go to the most high acting all spiritual. Like we got all of this faith. And we can't even come together as men and break bread. I'm not going to be sitting around trying to preach to nobody and we got drama going on. We look crazy out here. You got a whole world out here that is sick, people dying and going to hell. And we out here having all these disagreements and we supposed to be the chosen people? We got the whole world system out here is evil. They hate the biblical Israelites. And here we are, the chosen ones. And we doing this evil? Forgiveness? No, no, no. Ain't nobody forgiving nothing. We breaking bread. You wronged me apologize, repent, do what you need to do, and make it public. Because we can't move on. We can't move on. Yeah, but the Bible says you got to forgive them and do all of this stuff. The Most High knows my heart. Even if I say I forgive you, my fucking heart still hurts, which means I didn't forgive you. Let's stop being fake. I'm not fake. Because here's the thing. I can say I forgive you, but the most high know my heart is still troubled, which means I didn't forgive you. 
how I forgave you if my heart is still troubled. I uttered it with my mouth. Yeah, I forgive you. I forgive you. I repent. I repent. But my heart is still vexed. That means I'm not good. That means I, I really didn't release. I didn't release. I'm still holding on. You can't fool the most high. Nobody can fool the most high, man. That's why I don't play none of those games about, oh, you know, I forgive you and this and that. No, I don't. I'm not being fake. See, this is the, this is the, this is the difference between me and everybody else. I'm not going to say I forgive you when there's issues. This needs to be resolved. This needs to be resolved. You know? And you got to keep it 100%. You know? I don't like playing, man. I, I, When it comes to stuff like this, because see, here's the thing with me, man. I don't know how it is where everybody else is, man, but here in New York, man, we don't play this game of we in your face talking to you in your face and you got a problem with me. We I, we don't do that, man. We we I can't talk, I I cannot I cannot stand in your face as a man and got a problem with you. You going to see it. You going to feel the energy on me. You going to know I don't like you. You going to be like, "Bro, we got you, you got a problem with me or something? Like you good?" And I'm going to tell you, "Nah, I'm not good, bro." Remember the other day when you did so and so? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, I didn't like it, bro. You didn't even hold yourself accountable for what you did. Like, you disrespected me in front of so-and-so-and-so. You forgot? You mad about that? Yeah, I'm mad about that, man. You never resolved it, bro. We're going to tell you. We're not going to be in your face if we have unresolved issues. We don't do that. That is, we can't even... We can't stand around you. I would feel stupid. I cannot stand around somebody if I got a problem with them. I can't. I can't be fake. I can't do that. I don't feel right. You ever see somebody y'all beefing or y'all got some sort of disagreement? Hey, yo, what up, bro? You don't know what up nothing to me, man. What do you, what do you mean, what up, bro? We bros now? What about what you did, man? See, the reason why we got to get rid of this is because it's called strife. And strife is a cancer. Strife is a cancer. And it affects us in the heart. And it, it eats us alive, man. That's what the devil wants. That's why I roll solo. Because I try my best to stay away from that type of energy, man. Because it's a cancer. Once strife get a hold of you, man, man, it messes you up, man. The most high stop blessing the works of your hands. Things stop going your way. You're wondering, like, dag, man, when the world happened, man, the windows close on me or something? Yeah. That strife, man, that strife is, is messing you up. You know? So, <clears throat> the way I see this thing now, um, 200 people unsubscribed from the man. That's wrong. All of you that unsubscribe, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Oh, my goodness, man. Y'all don't know what y'all did, man. And then everybody having church services, man. Come on, man. Stop. The most high not please, man. No amount of church services and lifting up hands can resolve this issue here. If this issue here is not resolved, the most high is not pleased with none of that. You know? What the Bible says. If you if you don't have charity, then you're a, a, a tinkling, sounding brass symbol or whatever the case is. Because it's like even if you bestowed all your wealth on the poor— you're a great orator, a great speaker. If you don't have charity, you're nothing. And these are the things that I remember from the scriptures that is 
It's just real, man. This is just sad, man. This stuff got to be resolved, man. And there can't be no hidden strife or hidden ill will. But see, now, there's too many issues with this. That's, it's, a, it's a little more complicated because it's not just between Pastor Dow and Pastor Rufus. It involves other people that are probably tail bearers and backbiters and gossipers that put batteries in uh, people's backs. You have people like that, instigators, people that are jealous of other men. And because they're close to different people, they can, yo, you know, so-and-so. Yeah, 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 man. I do, man. I don't trust him one bit, man. And they start doing that type of bochinche, man, it turned into a problem. So that needs to be dealt with, too. If there's any other men that been adding in other dirt, those people need to be rebuked sharply. You know? And punished, too, for their involvement of instigating situations. Because, it, and, and then again, if somebody was in Pastor Dow's air feeding him lies, then come on, man. How you going to listen to somebody feeding you a lie, man? Like, I'm not listening to nobody. I'm going to the source. Did you say this? Man to man, look me in my eye, bro. Look me in my eye. And let's just break bread, man. You got... Explain to me all your problems, all the problems you got with me. Let's hash this out right here like men. We got the, the, the elders are in the room. Y'all here, y'all mediate. We're going to literally have this little argument right here real quick. You know, no, 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 uh, you know, we ain't throwing hands or nothing. We're just going to, we're just going to, you know, have civil discourse. And, and if we have to yell and scream, use some profanity, whatever the case is, we're going to do that. But we're going to get this thing out going to hash it all out all the mess all the dirt all this all the mess you can't stand about me let's let's put it all out there on the table that way we could clear the air because i don't got time to be around people and we're being fake i don't got that kind of time i've been there done all of that mess i don't like it it always ends with a mess you know This type of situation has divided the people and it caused 200 people to unsubscribe. That's bad, man, because Pastor Dow have over 200,000 subs. Pastor Rufus have under 5,000. Why would you tell your following, hey, guys, go unsubscribe from him? That's sad, man. That's sad. That Yeah, that means for them to unsubscribe that easy, they were never really rocking with him. That means that they were zombies. And this is what I mean by control. If, another, if a man can have that much control over you, that he could tell you, go unsubscribe from them, and you do it, you're not even in control of your life. Somebody else's. That means you're AI. You're a robot. Because nobody could tell me to unsubscribe from a man. I'm going to go obey that. I'm not doing that. That don't make no sense. Why would I do that? That man never did nothing to me. It doesn't matter what kind of argument, what kind of issue he had with uh, Pastor Dow. That's between them two men. They got to resolve that issue. You get what I'm saying? That has nothing to do with the congregation. It has nothing to do with the people. So telling them to unsubscribe is wickedness. That's wickedness, fam. And if I did the same thing, I would be wicked. Because how are you going to tell people one minute, go subscribe to his channel, go support his Patreon, and then now you're saying, hey, unsubscribe, don't support his Patreon. That means you really never had no love for the brother to begin with. <sighs> That's sad. You know? Let's get back to the tapes. We almost done. We got about six more minutes. To impede you or hinder you from listening to them. I know they're telling lies. I heard that they were ordered on the land of straightway not to watch that video that me and uh, Elder Elder Brent made. They were so he they see. Here's the thing: if they if people were 
ordered not to watch a video. That's sad, man. Nobody should be controlling nobody like that, man. Nobody should be telling people what not to watch. And Like, come on, man. Ordered. At somebody from Straightway come up here and prove it differently. And if you say he didn't order you, tell me if you watched it or not then. Because why would you not watch it? I've been your friend. I've been your pastor. I've been your elder. Why would you not want to hear what I got to say? Tell me why. That would mean you got uh, respect to a man and you believe everything Pastor Dow tells you. Again, it goes back to people having respect of persons. You know, it, it's like, it's crazy, man. It is not good to have respect of persons. If you're partial in judgment, you're not even worthy to be in leadership. Because that means you're going to make bad decisions all the time. You're going to have people that are unjust. You're going to side with them. And the people that are just, you're going to have them condemn. What is it going to be? Were you ordered by Pastor Dow, King Dow, not to listen to that video? And if he didn't order you, did you listen to it? And when you listened to it, what'd you think? Did you think me and Elder Craig were just making up lies? That our Show me where our stories don't match up. Show me where there's inconsistencies in our timelines. You can do that with everything Pastor I'm saying, if you have the information. Man, I ain't, make this, I ain't want this to be an hour, but it is. But to y'all be the glory. Anybody that cares, the law of presumptuousness, I just broke it down for you. Go to Numbers 15, read verse 22, read all the way down to verse 36. To all the people asking me <laughs> what happened with Pastor Dow, do you not realize that we've been streaming for six hours and 24 minutes? What kind of fucking dumb question is that? Why are you pissing me off? Why? If you just walked in the building and you just started tuning in, why ask a dumb question like that? When the stream been going for six hours and 24 minutes. Common sense would tell you, start the video from the beginning and watch it so you can learn what's going on. Do you understand me? And if you're upset, if you're angry, you can leave. Because I'm not losing no sleep. Do you understand me? I don't got no time to be playing games. I'm straight. I believe that when you're, when you're an adult, act like an adult and don't ask stupid questions. Do you understand? My job is not to keep repeating myself every single time somebody come back in. Do teachers do that in school? No. You come in the classroom late, that's on you. You're still going to have to do what you need to do to make up for this test exam. So you better get the work from one of your classmates. But in your situation, all you got to do is rewind the video, hear the context, hear what's going on, and you'll find out what everything is about. Because what I find is most people really don't care what it's about. You just want to be entertained. What you want to hear is drama, juice, and dirt. So it can validate the things you always felt in your heart. Most people are not really concerned with the truth. They just like drama. That's it. And you tell me is what I did matches what they're talking about in that account. Anybody that, that, that presumes they're saying should be cut off. How many of you have presumed in the last week, two weeks, month, year? Think about what they're saying. Any of you that have presumed you should be cut off. What happened to the law of forgiveness? It makes no sense, y'all. And again, if I'm in front of you, I can easily debunk this with the book. I don't have to go to a college course to show you what the law says. It's in my heart and it's been there for decades, y'all. So peace and, peace and glory to the Most High, y'all. I bid all y'all shalom. It's still a Shabbat, so Shabbat shalom. Enjoy your Shabbat. I'm rested. I'm feeling good. Um, that wicked uh, spirit and pastor gave me 30 days to move. And guess what? We ain't going to take that. That in itself is unrighteousness. Been here for 14 years. I built this up. I helped build this up with the brethren. He don't care. He told them flat out, I hope. I didn't care. He told El Brent, I don't care if he becomes a vagabond. So that argument we had, y'all, was so vicious that now Pastor Dow don't care about me. He don't care about Mother Jennifer. He don't care about Mother Shandre. He don't care about Bonnie. He don't care about Lola Haba. He don't care about Mama T. He don't care nothing about Mariah. Vagabonds, you know, that's somebody that don't even have a home, y'all. They don't have a home. That's what he cares. That's, that's, that's how he feels. From one 
Tell them to play it. Tell Pastor Dow to play that whole entire thing. Not just the part where, where he feels like he was offended at. Tell them to play the whole thing. There's a reason they didn't play it for y'all. Guess why? They knew it would incriminate Pastor Dow. You would hear him lying. You would hear that spirit on Pastor Dow that all those leaders got to see there that day. Now, were they all shocked to hear me talking to him that way? Oh, yeah. But again, I didn't get vulgar. I didn't curse him. I didn't uh, call him any names. I didn't. I just got loud. Trying to provoke that spirit to tell us the truth because it was lying. Pastor Dow started the meeting off by lying. Him and Pastor Mir. I asked him directly, are you talking about me? Calling me a bitter root? Nope. I was talking about a brother in Indiana. Well, we proved that was a lie. He wasn't talking about a brother in Indiana. Then when we get to the meeting on that Sunday, after that, when he already then took the fellowship and all that away, Elder asked him again. Oh, no, I was talking about Jermaine. Elder Becker and Elder, Elder uh, Brett said, hold on a second. They didn't say this in front of him. They figured it out like, that don't line up. How could you have been talking about Jermaine before the leadership meeting when Jermaine's so-called offense didn't happen till the leadership meeting? It happened at the leadership meeting. Timeline don't match up. You couldn't have been talking about Jermaine. He hadn't done anything at that time. Two lies right there on one story. Two lies to the leadership. But guess what? When you're a king, you ain't obligated to tell us nothing. You don't have to tell us no truth. Why would I tell you the truth? You're going to use it against me. It's the truth. Quit lying. Quit lying. He says, I tell his secrets. Pastor Dow knows y'all. I've never told his secrets. When he tries to get me to agree publicly with something he told me privately, and it ain't true, that's when I reveal it. You can't tell me your brother's a piece of shit privately. Right? Because in me, I'm like, hey, that's between you and that brother. Go figure it out. But then when it comes publicly, you want to tell him, oh, this brother's great. He's this, he's that. And I do this. Mm -mm, see, I can't agree with that because I know how you told me privately. Now, if I agree with what you say there, now I'm the liar too. That's not telling secrets. I'm just not going to get into your games. I'm not. You said a lot of stuff about folk privately. I expected you to go get that right with them. But when you say something opposite of that publicly and expect me to vouch for it, no, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing it. And that's what he means when he says I'm telling his secrets, y'all. I ain't telling his secrets. He know I'm not telling his secrets. He know this. Now, I'll say this for the record. I've never hid or a secret, a, 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 a sin for Pastor Dow. I have not, y'all. There's nothing that he has ever done that I've come in and covered up that's a sin. Nothing. Nothing. But there are definitely things that are his secrets that need to stay his secrets. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, y'all, I'm done. I don't even want to get into that part. I'm, I'm done. Please, those of you that love the law of y'all, those of you that really love y'all, want to get your heart right for this Passover, go back and read Numbers 15. Start at verse 22, though. Don't start at verse 30. Read verse 22 so you can get an idea of what y'all is talking about, about somebody doing something in ignorance and somebody willingly, presumingly doing something. And then read the rest of that to show you the example of what should take place and how it should take place. Yeah, those people should go to leadership and the congregation, especially if they're going to get cut off. It's going to be a full thing where the whole congregation agrees it needs to take place. See, this man didn't care about the law of Yah. He didn't care about the commandment. He broke the fourth commandment, y'all, and everybody agreed he should be cut off. Do all of y'all agree I should be cut off? Hmm? Do all y'all, all of y'all ready to grab the stone like they did here and stone me? Because guess what? If you are, I invite you to show up. We're going to be here at 375 Cemetery Road in Lyle, Georgia. We're going to be here. Google Straightway, Georgia. It'll pop up. Any of you think you that one and you want to throw that stone, just show up here then. I'm going to be here at least to Wednesday or Thursday this week. Just show up. If you've heard what you need to hear and you think you're ready to sit in that seat of judgment and throw that stone at me, I'd love to meet you. Just gave you an open invite to show up anytime. Anytime. I don't think it's going to go the way you think it's going to go, though. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> Shabbat Shalom. Bless y'all. Love y'all. Always have. Always will. This ain't the last you're going to hear from Pastor Rufus. I promise. This ain't the last. Shabbat Shalom. So, that's Pastor Rufus' testimony of what went going on, what's going on, what's happening. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more videos out there that have a lot of other pieces to this mess. I just wanted to focus on these particular videos because everything seems to be one-sided. And... All I'm hearing is accusations and rumors and hearsay. And I, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. But he shared the story. We shared clips with you to show you testimony from 
uh, Pastor Rufus and Pastor Dow. He was a uh, ordained pastor in October. We see video footage of Pastor Dow praising him, speaking very highly of him, said he's a great Israelite man. And now we have this. You can't, there's no way somebody could go from a, being a great Israelite man to, you know, he's just a horrible person now. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. So, again, my hope is that these brothers can reconcile uh, behind the scenes, squash the nonsense, and, you know, if it's... Uh, if things are too far gone for reconciliation, then, man, we're doomed. We're doomed. It's like nobody's going to take nobody serious no more, man. It's like, I mean, how does a, you know, how, 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 how could men of truth teach like a man and woman how to overcome issues in a relationship? or how to reconcile in a marriage. And <laughs> you can't teach that no more because that means that everybody's a hypocrite because if, if, if we can't reconcile in our own relationships with, with brethren, then we can't teach nobody to reconcile in a marriage. <laughs> you know, we can't tell them nothing. If, they, if you see one belief because... It's like we're not practicing coming together. It's like it's just bad all around, man. It's crazy, man. Imagine that. I've been streaming six hours and 35 minutes. You know how tired I am right now? Sleepy, tired. Thirsty, hungry. And I had to do this stream. Had to do this stream because the Most High says somebody got to speak on this issue. It got to be put out there because it's messy. And a man is being judged. in a bad way. Nobody should have to go through stuff like this. Nobody should be telling their viewers to pull their support, especially after one faces demonetization and somebody's helping by saying, hey, go, go subscribe to their patron. Like I said, all of these video clips that I showed in this particular broadcast I found them without even trying to find them. They were just they were just given to me. The algorithm just gave me the videos and I'm like, "Wow." Anyway, uh we're going to get up on out of here. Hope everybody enjoyed the stream. Again, I have much respect for Pastor Dow. At the same time, we have to be... We have to be honorable men and address issues when it needs to be addressed. And don't be partial, at, don't be partial in judgment, but judge righteous judgment. Okay, I want to get a few shout-outs on this Cash App. Uh... Mikey J, Mikey J, salute to Mikey J, Kenneth, Vern, Sean, uh, Panther De, Panther De, Joe, salute to Joe Anthony, Knock. 
I believe that's how you pronounce the name. N-O-C-H. Revolutionary loss for the support. Oh, boy, man. I don't know um, how this is going to um, turn out because, like I said, man, one of them type of videos you just didn't want to do but it was needed and I know throughout this video something had to be said that can reach the people of the most high so let me let me talk to the people to all the people to all the people that had to watch all of this stuff that may not be as knowledgeable in the scriptures and you got love for Pastor Dow. You got love for Pastor Rufus. Um, stop all of this taking sides. We're supposed to be one body. We're supposed to rep the most high. You think y'all going to do this in the kingdom? That stuff is not going to be allowed in the kingdom. We ain't going to be able to be taking sides in the kingdom. So we need to start practicing unity and Stop allowing the devil to come in because the devil is always slipping through cracks and different doors to enter in and, and cause division. And it's something that we have to really be guard, guarded. We have to guard our minds and our spirit from the devil. You know, he seeketh whom he may devour and he's forever trying to separate us. You know, who shall separate me from the love of God? Tribulation, this, that, no. So we have to be honorable people. We have to learn how to do what the Bible says, not what man says. What does the Bible say? If the Bible says one thing and a pastor says to do something and it's not in the Bible, you don't follow that. Even the Messiah made that very clear. Like a voice of a stranger, you shall not follow. Like, what are you doing? If, if a pastor says, go throw yourself off the cliff, and you good, did the Bible tell you to do that? No. So what are you doing it for? You know, again, I'm not here to tell people go unsubscribe from this person or stop supporting this one. Nah, I, I, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not doing that. If, if I say to people go support this and that, I'm, I'm sticking with what I said. The people make their own decisions. I, I cannot make nobody make decisions because that would be wicked. Um, Pastor Dow, he had faced demonetization on YouTube. Pastor Rufus told everybody, go subscribe to his patron. That, that was a blessing. Because I could just imagine how many people probably subscribed because of that one comment. So it's like, to the people, man, to the saints, to the people of the Most High. Always stand on the truth, no matter what. Never be a respecter of persons. Don't have respect of persons. Don't judge partiality. Know what the Bible says and stand on it. And question everything. Even if you have to question your pastor, you have to question them. If the congregation have issues, that needs to be addressed. Because if the majority of people address the issue or call out the issue, leadership have no choice but to deal with it. Because if it's one person, it's easy to shun that person, avoid that person, blacklist that person. It's easy to do that. But when you have a lot of people in the congregation that are standing on business and they're like, look, hold on now, wait a minute. This is a brother right here and based on trial, there was, a, there was no real agreement, so we can't really execute judgment the way we would want to. You know? So, again, keep the most high first. Um, let's reconcile, let's restore, and if the damage is too severe, um, 
the public still need to see some form of reconciliation. Can't be this, well, you know, we good, and no, man, that, that's not good. It's not good because people going to look at it as fake. People going to look at it as fake. But I understand that when damage is done, it can be really bad, man. I know how that feeling is, man. I know how that is. I know myself. I know myself enough to know that when things happen with me and people, man, it's like we don't even talk no more, man. We don't even talk no more. But there's a way of moving on, but you can still kind of, the door is still open to communicate. Even if there's a real rough, transparent issue that's out there, it's like, it's, it's just, it's just out of this world, man. You know? I just hope that the people will make good decisions. That's all I'm asking, man, is for the people it, to stop turning your back on brothers in this truth. None of y'all should have never unsubscribed from that, man. Y'all should have said, look, if you want to unsubscribe, you go unsubscribe, but we're not unsubscribing because you said unsubscribe. That's not in the Bible. Bible don't tell you to do that. Bible don't tell you to do that, y'all. The Bible didn't say if a pastor's in disagreement with somebody that y'all all follow suit and have disagreements too. That's evil. If I got an issue with somebody, that's between me and that person. It has nothing to do with you. You know? And people used to do that back in the day too. I remember used to have one friend and y'all yeah, yeah, have issues and you didn't want none of your other friends hanging around that person because if they did, you want to give people alternatives. Well, if you're going to hang with them, you can't be friends with me no more. That's evil. I could be friends with whoever I want to be friends with. I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> so that's about it. I'm going to get up on out of here, do what we need to do. Um, and shout out to Pastor Rufus for the support. Appreciate you for the support. You know? One of the things about doing videos like this that I don't like is that everybody start taking sides. Everybody start doing their own thing, and it's just so discouraging. But then again, um, the most high will is going to be done regardless. That is true. Based on the tapes, based on the videos, you did give every effort to reconcile and was rejected. Can't can't argue against that. That's the thing. That that's what makes it that's where the the damage comes in because it's like when you offer your hand out and you 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 try to reach out with an olive branch and nobody's reaching back. It's almost like, what am I wasting my time for? You know? And all, listen, those of you who's doing the right thing, you're able to go to sleep at night and, 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 and know that your heart is not heavy because you did everything necessary to resolve the issues. You know? But if... If one didn't do what they needed to do, I don't know how could they sleep. I would feel bad. I would literally feel bad to know that I have videotapes of me speaking highly of a man and then people using those videos to show me that it's almost like I'm being fake. 
I would feel bad. I would have to come into the public and talk about this and be like, look, um, I couldn't get no rest. I had to go live to talk about this and, and kind of break it down for people to see where you at. Because people are going to have a lot to say. They're going to have a lot of things to say. And I'm trying to keep everything positive. I'm trying to be as positive as possible, man. But it's like, it's difficult to be super positive when you're disappointed, man. Like, see yeah so that's about it guys i gotta get me some rest um i'll catch y'all in the morning with more shows more live streams i might even talk about the diddy situation you know it is what it is <laughs> but uh let me see If anyone had any involvement in this situation between Pastor Dow and Pastor Rufus, and you were an instrument used by the devil to put batteries in people back, spread lies, slander, spread misinformation about anything that can cause people to have batteries in their back to amplify a situation in negativity. The most high going to deal with you. You're not going to be able to run. Not from that one. And if I said it, it's going to come to pass. You know the scriptures. Six things does the Lord hate. Seven is an abomination. He talks about a list of things that he don't like. Well, if any of you had any involvement in doing those things that can put batteries in people's backs, the Most High going to deal with you. He's going to deal with you because you're responsible for this mess. If your hands are dirty, then you got blood on them. So... Good luck with that. So hopefully something get done in all of this. But uh, what this situation is going to eventually do is going to cause a lot of people that had issues with straightway. They're going to come out of the woodworks with videos. They're going to do it. Because this is ammo for them. This is major ammo. And they're going to have a lot to say. You're going to have a lot of live streams, a lot of people talking behind the scenes, and there's <sighs> nothing you can do about it, man. So I'm going to get on out of here, man. Y'all take care. Ringo TV Reactions, it is what it is. Appreciate everybody rocking with the platform, you know. Man, six hours and 51 minutes live. Peace and blessings to everybody on the Ringo TV Raw channel. Everybody on the Ringo TV Reactions channel. It is what it is. Y'all take care. Peace and blessings to the mobs in the chat. Rebel for Almighty, Tracy, Sean the Navigator. Appreciate everybody coming through. Salute to V-Dub, man. Probably out on the road doing your thing. And also shout out to Show Shao in the building as well. And Sherelle. You know. I hope this video set the record straight. I hope this video adds some sort of clarity where men can resolve their issues. I hope that throughout this, other brothers in the truth will take heed to how things can get misconstrued and problems can happen and separate people. 
hope nothing like this happened with us. Because that would be a bad look. So, again, to the people on Ringo TV Raw, um, I'm going to sign out on this particular one here. So I'm going to close this one out. And we're going to then close out the Ringo TV reaction. So peace and blessings to everybody on the Ringo TV Raw channel. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And that's about that, man. So y'all take care over here. Let me close this out. Take care.